Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Montu's Multiplayer Madness. This evening, this morning, this afternoon, any time of the day you happen to be watching this, we're now going to be seeing 20 players face off for a prize. It's a tournament, the first tournament I've ever organized and hosted simultaneously. Mainly the organizational part of this is new to me, but welcome chat, welcome. Let's see who's here today. And yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, there's a full list of the rules down below if you want to check that out. We are going to be going through the rules before we start, probably in about four or five minutes, not just with myself, but also with uh, you lovely people at home and the people uh, who are competing today in the tournament. Now, the rule set is a little bit different to some of the other tournaments you've seen. We are trying to get uh, Stellaris to show off the best aspects of itself, and we believe that includes not just uh, not just very good play, but also play around the game, diplomacy, uh, the galactic community. We have a scoring mod, shout out here to Zephnar, who's done some fantastic work, but we have a scoring mod that is going to be how we're basing the outcome of this game. We have a score that will be broken down. I'll explain a little bit about that when we get into the game itself. But for now, basically, let me tell you that it will reward different aspects of play, giving people scores that will be accumulated throughout the game. So, uh, so yeah, we also haven't banned a lot of things either. So we haven't banned uh, we haven't banned the, the crazy dragon strat. So getting a hundred k dragon, we've 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 put some small modifications in so that it's not massively overpowered but otherwise you know ascended clones that's fine uh, uh what else have we got in here uh rogue servitor prosperous unification that's legal you know we want the we want the gameplay between the players to be balanced by not just the game itself we're not here to create a balance mod for stellaris but also by the players themselves that's why there's no team limits we have uh, all the gloves are off for diplomacy Multiplay is where can show the builds. I found some very good build to play, pretty OP. So I'm going to be, I'll probably be going through the builds once we're live and having a look at what's going on in the game, but I haven't got any specific builds to show off to you now because I don't know what the players are bringing. That's something we're going to have to look at as the game goes on. Welcome, Speckledorf. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to have you here. Um, and yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how well this tournament goes. Uh, if it if it if it goes well, if people enjoy it, if you'd like to see another tournament like this, let me know. Let me know in the comments. If you're watching this and you're not watching this live, hello to you lovely live people. But if you're a deader, or if you are just one of the people who are not watching this immediately when it's live, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the tournament and you'd like to see another one. I mean, I, if it's fun, I'm hoping it'll be fun. I've I've really enjoyed hosting the preliminary sessions because we. We're now at the final. We've had a whole bunch of prelims that have come up and those prelims have gone on for the last week. And now we've got the 20 best players we could get out of those prelims to fight for the big prizes. Now those prizes are listed in the prize pool, but in essence, we've got a whole bunch of different things. Uh, the total value of which is $850, but it's a mixture of Steam gift vouchers. So not cash outright, uh, Stellaris DLC keys, uh, as well as some fantastic t-shirts are on offer, are up for grabs in the prize pool. Uh, so so stick around to, till the end to find out who wins and who claims which prizes because we've got a, a bit of an interesting system for the prize, uh, the prize pool and how people will claim those. But for now, um, let me just briefly say a big thank you to Paradox for donating some Stellaris DLC keys to this event. We've got some Overlord and Toxoy keys up for grabs as well as lots of other things too. But that's been donated by Paradox, so a massive thank you to them for, for their support. Also a big thank you to Comrade, uh, who's going to be hosting with me in a moment, and Sinus TV, who's going to be jumping in for the second half. We will take a little bit of a break for the players around the year 50, and, uh, and, and Sinus will be here for the second half with me. On top of that, a massive thank you to Yernsax, who's both hosting today and has been a fantastic mod um, and, and been a fantastic uh, organizer for this tournament. And Kiva as well, who's one of our custodians, one of our patrons, he's done a great job as well. He's been hosting and a massive thank you to, to him. Without these people, the tournament would not be happening. So a big thank you to them. Now I'm going to jump in and go through the rules with, uh, with 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 all of the tournament members. Uh, if I just find the right channel, bear with me very briefly, ladies and gentle prawns. All right, let's jump in. F you hello, right, hello, Evan. Montu here. Please do not swear. Um, Evan, unless I've interrupted anything vastly important. 
The NSAX, have I interrupted anything vastly important? Uh, you interrupted me telling people not to swear. Oh, good. Well, well, you're live on the Big Brother house. Please do not swear. So I'm just going to go through the rules, uh, basically, and then we are going to get going on the hour. That's the plan here, folks. So um, not going to go through the prize pool stuff. We'll, we'll talk about that at the end. But basically, if you are in the top five places at the end of this, you'll be getting some points that you can then use to uh, choose things from the prize pool. The Galaxy Tab, I won't go through either. Everyone can see that in a moment um, before we start. But the war rules. So from year zero to year 20, we're only going to be having pre-contact wars allowed. Pre-contact pre invasions are banned all game, so don't do those. From year 20 onwards, humiliation wars and conquest wars for systems without populated planets or habitats are allowed. No system with a player-controlled populated planet or habitat can be claimed before year 50. From year 40 onwards, subjugation wars are allowed. That's your tribute wars and your vassal wars. From year 50 plus, all wars are allowed of all war types. Note that we don't have claim in line at any point, ladies and gentlemen, and also that this is different to the normal rules where at year 30, you go out and kill people. Expropriation wars can be fought against criminal syndicates all game long. So, um, so, so, so if they set up a branch office on your world, you can still kick them out. But the rest of the rules about claims are still in effect. You can't outright kill a criminal syndicate. When it comes to player tribute and vassals, we have some rules there. Diplomatic vassalization between players is outright banned. By that we mean if you're on the diplomacy screen and you click through, uh, you click through from diplomacy to create the vassal, that's banned. You have to go to war. Vassal and tribute terms can't be changed except by changing the uh, type from vassal to tribute. That's on the right hand side at the top from that drop down menu. Basic terms must be used. Those terms, the basic terms of whatever is set by your subjugation policy, whether that is uh, oppressive all the way down to benevolent. If both the overlord and the subject agree, however, a contract can be changed to a specialist vassal type, that's prospectorium, scholarium, or bulwark, but both have to agree, and the basic terms, whatever the default is on screen, must be used and you can't change those. Players with vassals cannot form federations or join a federation unless that federation can have the subjects join set to no. Note that new federations can't do this for 10 years and hegemonies can never do this. So if you have a vassal, you can't be in a hegemony. Other rules, total war civics are banned or AI spawning origins are banned. Become the crisis is not banned, but it will set your score to zero. However, if you finish the ethrophasic engine, you win the game and you can't take the Crisis uh, perk after year 50 and can also not be in a federation as the Crisis if you've taken the perk. Crisis also cannot use a Total War War goal before year 50. From year 50 you can, but before that point you have to use one of the regular War goals that aren't Total War, so a player still has the option to surrender without outright dying or having their worlds bombarded to nothing. Players can only subjugate AI through war or by releasing a sector. Again, demand subjugation is banned. Any diplomatic vassalization is banned. No AI abuse people. That means uh, unfair trade deals or accepting free resources from the AI. Players with the Here Be Dragons origin cannot complete a reanimation project on a, Le on a Leviathan before year 40. Because our scoring rounds are going to be every 20 years, that means you can't complete your Leviathan reanimation after the, until after the first two scoring rounds have been done. And that gives a chance for people to go to basically uh, annex you fully if you decide to throw out a dragon. If anyone breaks the rules today, and that'll be Jern Sachs and myself having a look through this um, for, for rule breaks, but any of these rules we've mentioned, if you break them, we'll start with a warning. If the impact of the rule break gives an advantage or hurts another player and can't be reversed, you'll also get a point penalty at the end of the game from a minimum value of 10% up to 30% at the discretion of the GMs. And this is going to be basically per rule break or per, um, per discretionary uh, thing that happened. Repeated rule breaking will lead to disqualification at the discretion of the GMs and the players will be banned from any future tournaments that, that I'm hosting. Additionally, players that leave the session prematurely, if you uh, don't complete the session, and that is uh, as long as you have planets, if you aren't kicked out of the game by the game itself, you'll be banned from future tournaments. So don't, don't, don't leave because... Um with the, the way the, the rules work, the way the points work, you could still end up with a podium position even if you're reduced down to one system. Boris knows this. Many There are people here who thought they'd completely lost, but they'd played well early game and they got one planet left, but they still managed to, to stick around. 
There's a bunch of fair play rules as well. I'm not going to go through those, but those are rather generic and fair reaching, uh, far reaching in terms of what they allow us as GMs to do, but keep those in mind. In essence, don't hit the rules here are generally don't be a kingmaker. What we mean by that is you should be playing to win for yourself. If an action you're doing is not benefiting you and you can't explain how it helps you, if it just helps someone else only, we're going to ask you to not do it. And if you ignore us, we'll probably start hitting you with some point deductions and finally, you know, ban you in the end if you if you continue to ignore the GM's requests. However, if you can explain how, for example, um, supporting a more powerful player who's offered things to you will assist you in, you know, doing better and getting to a podium position, that's absolutely fine. Backstabbing is fine. Knive conniving is fine. Just know uh, you, you need to be playing to win, not just for other people, but you need to play for, to win for yourself, all right? Also, obviously, no scorched earth, no griefing, all of that sort of stuff. All right, that's the rules gone through. Um, anyone got any questions, direct them to Yearn Sachs. I'm now going to jump in and bring Comrade on board, and we're going to have a, a little chitty chat, I suppose. Uh, sorry, but... Montu, um, my uh, internet connection just bent out. Can you give me, like, one, uh, sorry, two minutes to... Um, yes, yeah, we're not going to start you for another... Minutes. You've got four or five minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then, uh, do we have any alternates on standby, Yernsax, left or not? Uh, I could get one in here. If, yeah, I mean, so at the, at, at the on the hour, if we're at 19, uh, and you've not managed to rejoin Acorn then we'll offer the spot to an alternate and whoever gets in there first, we'll, we'll get it, basically. I think that's uh, yes, the, I understand. fair enough. And we, we uh, start. if everyone here want to give a thank you for David, David's a cool guy. Thanks, David. Thanks. Thank you, David. <laughs> my God, David, thank you so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> Alrighty, oh my folks. God. Um, until, David? until later. Uh, David's the best. Yes. All right, until, until next time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's drag Comrade in and we'll say hello. I think Comrade might be here now. Let me just... He is here. All right. Hello, Comrade. You're now on my screen as well uh, for the lovely people at home to see and say hello to. Hello, oh, everyone. Oh, David's just made a lovely, fantastic donation. Thank you very much, David. Wow, that's that's probably going to basically go towards paying for the prize pool. I can't lie. Um, but uh, yeah, so thank you very much. It does does help very much, uh, any super chats and stuff. But welcome, welcome, comrade. Say hello to everybody. Hey, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Monto, for having me today. And I'm super, super excited for what is coming. Yeah, it's so the rule set, um, it is quite different to the ISL or ISS games that you've usually kind of hosted and, and shown off, um, isn't it? Uh, Oh, absolutely. What do you but, think about this? Is the, the the I don't know. What do you think is the the most different or the feature that's kind of the, the weirdest to you as a regular ISS or ISL player? Most interesting parts. I mean, that, that is different. Is obviously how not strict the rule set is. I actually like it. It's kind of funny that I have taken a little bit a break of Stellaris, and now I see that actually the rule set that you have forged that that's actually it's really hard to break the rules because there is not a lot of them. Yes, yeah, that's um, kind of that was so we don't want to be over policing people, and we yeah, also yeah, exactly. don't want to try to balance the game because we could spend months going, oh, we think this is too powerful, so we're going to balance this, that, and and that oh, that, know, that is what ISS is, do, yeah. you know. And it's great, and ISS, I, I I enjoy both playing in and casting ISS games, but um, uh, a little bit, a, a little, it's a part of random and then like trying to balance the game by balancing the game is a little bit too hard with Stellaris. And I think that your approach of trying to balance the game by making people with the help of diplomacy to balance it is maybe the better one, actually. And I'm pretty sure that it will, it will be more enjoyable to cast it and to watch it because it feels like it's like, you know, after, after playing so many tournaments with the same rule sets, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air to see a different rule set. I can, yeah, I can imagine it's quite interesting to have a rule set that is, because this is very different really to kind of the, the, the the normal um rule set that that, that that you're used to at least uh, as far as i know and i'm double excited because i see a lot of uh, regular players uh all the like people we play together a lot uh in Let's, the I've actually, different i'll show setup. off that quickly so who have we got in the game so far here's the settings on the right hand side this is in the rules document but basically the game's gonna end after 300 years um and we have we've got uh pax who's a regular on my server silas pt um r uh, obviously, your your uh, Momongas here, Molza, Giltanus, Kizzy, uh, Leasefire, Boris, quite a few, uh, Lifeus, quite a few names that are kind of regulars on ISS. And then we've got some people that we've not really heard of before. Um, Carlson uh, is kind of an unknown to me, the amazing Space Jesus. I, I don't know much about him. Um, 
uh the real humanoid do you know the real humanoid at all no that's not he's not an ISS no, not writer, really. no exactly i kind of i kind of remember bugs but i have not played a lot with him i guess uh fabianski is also one of the regulars oh we're starting right oh we're away we go oh uh, just to answer a question hi lachland um thank you very much for your donation so is there a 100k here be dragons build banned no it's not banned but basically you can't create the dragon until year 40. now you can't be killed until year 50 so it's still i think powerful um but it's not you know it's not as overwhelmingly powerful as some of the other as some of the other builds it should be more balanced because we have clone ascended is legal in this Undead to Hacker has just donated a massive amount. Gee, goodness me, thank you very much for your donation. That, um, you know, one day we'll get to, to to breaking even on that prize pool. It looks like maybe maybe one day I'll actually make some money from this tournament. Um, but otherwise, let's have a look at who the who's who's in here as well. So I shouldn't click around yet until we're going. Now, the main thing I'll be showing you through is that the if you go to when we when we select an empire in a moment we should be able to do that yeah we should be able to do that now if you go to the situation log you'll see the victory screen is entirely different um so the score breakdown we've got economic power i'll just go so this is how the score works every 20 years we rank all of the empires based on these seven categories whoever has the most power or is the highest place in that rank will get five points Second place gets four, then three, then two, then one. Anyone who's in sixth place, place or below gets nothing. And in the case of tie, they get whichever rank they're tied with. So let's say two players are in second, they'll both get four points. Economic power is the same as the base game. So that's just, you know, minerals plus energy plus food production plus consumer goods times two plus alloy production times four plus um, rare resources times 10. So that's, the, the, that's basically exactly the same. Now... Uh, fleet power, that is the exact fleet power they have in the game. Um, and we had a bit of a bug early on that that included star base, not the star bases themselves, but the, the defense platforms. I actually wanted to keep that in, um, but it was argued very fairly that it's so much cheaper to build up star bases and get lots of uh, fleet power that, that you can artificially inflate your score, and which I had to kind of agree with there, to, to, to be honest. Um, Tech power is different to how tech weight is usually scored in the game. This is just your tech income. So it doesn't matter how much research you've been doing, you have to keep doing lots of research in order to get this high tech power score. Diplo weight is diplo weight. Controlled space is simply the number of systems. And that basically, we put this one in. So I know that you've noticed, I, th I think you've noticed this, in ISS games, comrade, have you noticed how most of the galaxy ends up with lots of systems that no one owns? You know, oh, lots yeah, of absolutely. systems where yeah, yeah. there is True. nobody... Um, who bothers taking them because it's like, well, it's going to cost me alloys and influence and I'm busy. So the galaxy yeah, looks true. like this kind of holy cheese with all of these empty systems and it looks bad. I wanted to stop that. So now you get points if you take all those empty systems. Um, uh, yeah, also, also, it yes. puts a lot of emphasis on fighting. Like mm. um, starting from year 20, you can fight for... For those systems. systems. And yeah, actually, yeah. we've had players that came in like third and fourth who just did lots of early wars. They took a lot of systems. And then once they'd taken those systems, they simply, um, they, they basically didn't, you know, they, they, they got high score there. But otherwise, it didn't matter. I've got no music on. Let me just fix that, ladies and gentlemen. Oops, sorry about that. That should be better. Um, <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's really smart to put an emphasis on actually taking systems and... It and then we stole can... an idea from the ISS. So we stole your controlled former Homeworlds idea. And now that one is um, basically, that one is, that one's different. You don't get a ranking for that. For every homeworld you have, you get one point every 20 years, except your own. Oh, so basically it's not like top five. It's just for controlling. Exactly, everything. exactly. Because oh, if we did top five, you end up like at year, thir year, f at year 60, maybe one player has two homeworlds. They'll get five points. So, and then everyone else will get zero. If, if like, if oh, yeah, five true. players have one home world, they'll all get zero because they'll be all joint sixth. And that that's not quite what we wanted to do. Um, controlled mega structures, as long as it's past the, uh, the frame, you're going to get points for that, basically. So as long as it's, like, stage one, that counts towards your number of controlled megas. That generally doesn't start coming until, until year 80, but people do start to get quite a few points if you build just one or, you know, you start building one or two megas. And we wanted to reward them. Something else you can't see here is milestones. So basically, every time you do something notable, you'll also get some points immediately. So every war you win, you get two points. Every time you pass a law in the galactic community, you get two points. If you are voted as the galactic council member, you get five. The, if you are get the custodian, you get 10. If you unseat the custodian, you also get 10. So like we've also given lots of points for galactic politics because we wanted that to be interesting too. In ISS, it doesn't tend to matter. 
but you know i wanted the galactic community to mean something and you have to actually um do something about it now interestingly i want to you haven't heard about this comrade but in one of the games we did in the prelims somebody became the custodian uh, at year 85 and they jumped ahead on points because they got lots of points for like proposing a bill and getting points for custodian the galaxy was upset with that and then they completely killed them so <laughs> You know, otherwise they were kind of a backwater player that were kind of doing okay, but then they they managed to finesse the galactic community, and then they got stamped on. And it was really, it was really awesome and funny to see. Uh, you know, <laughs> I also love the way you phrased it. Like the galaxy got upset and absolutely destroyed them. And killed them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have just uh, checked the players, what the builds they have taken. So maybe, yeah, let's take a look maybe, through. So yeah, right. I'm seeing we've got Giltan, uh, we've got Giltanas here with Void Dwellers. Uh, Merchant Guild Parliamentary System. Pax coming with Rogue Server, Rogue Server the Prosperous Unification. That's his normal build. Real Humanoid again. Oh, this is Rogue Server to Remnant. Interesting. Yeah, that's bold. That's a bold. Yeah, it is bold. Rogue Server to Prosperous Unification again. Another but, one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pardon me, just check the oh. check check the spawn of uh, the Real Humanoid. It's like the, the perfect start for the, for the build he has taken. Literally, oh wow, he's got he's got yeah. three planets around him Lovely in a little little cluster, only one way yeah. in. Oh, but he'll be trapped in by Amazing Space Jesus. If he can get out of there, though, there's lots of worlds, only a few jumps away. Um, I can see quite. A, I can see. I'm definitely seeing some. Uh, what are they called again? Um, uh, Necroids in. Okay, what else have we got? Void dwellers. That's two void dwellers. I've already seen Giltanus. Silas PT. Okay, clone army of anglers. This is a hilarious build. I've seen this in a few times. It works, but I find it hilarious that it does work. That anglers can be in there. Uh, oh yeah, anglers produce provide a lot of early power, and yeah, response. Uh, clone army death cult. Though I would think is better. We've got we've got um, we've got Boris here saying Uwu notice me senpai Montu is his <laughs> is his empire name. Goodness gracious me. Corporate death cult, so you can sacrifice your clones when they come through. Oh yeah, and also clones will be using militaries. Oh, that will be spicy. Mm. And and they and they are using militarists. Spiritualist mir militarists is what I'm seeing here. We've got an ocean paradise corporate mastercrafted yeah, that, start. That's, that's, that's I'm not sure about that one. That's 013. He's that's interesting. Uh I'm seeing remnant, a regular kind of bio remnant start, but lots of nice planets around them though. That might be pretty good. We got a necrophage, a uh, uh, hive mind. We've got a couple of hive minds actually. Oh, uh, we've got somebody here playing uh, criminal heritage clone army. Beautiful. That's beautiful. That's hilarious and the, beautiful. The, the better part is Momonga playing like he yeah. loves this type of builds. Let's doesn't he? he doesn't he build there. habitats and throw them off to get lots of crazy energy generation? Right from them or yeah, something? Yeah, like he, he had a build like this uh, where he was. Uh, I guess he had three pops. And he was yep. getting around 5.5k of energy per month. It was the most efficient three pops in like in the entirety of the time he played <laughs> yeah, the game. Basically, that's amazing. Um, so I'm also seeing we've got Progenitor Hive with Molza, and I swear I just saw Overtuned somewhere. Yeah, somewhere here is playing over. Someone's playing Overtuned Death Cult. That's the Amazing Space Jesus. Interesting. Hmm. Not sure about that one. Hmm. Well, I mean. We have a lot of rock servitors. We have a lot of clone armies. Uh, we have a like a little, like, a little amount of hivements, and we have some questionable builds. But maybe these players have some different plan in their minds. That is not basically yes. like aimed and, at year thirty. The big yeah, the whole point of this is like even if you don't need to be big at year thirty. You know, you need to be big at year fifty, but you also kind of need to be big at year forty so that your neighbors can't make you into a tribute. You need to be big enough that they can't use the tribute war goal uh, against you. Oh, my viewers are saying I've lost my bouncing personality. Bear with me. I think I can fix that, actually. Just need a little bit of caffeine from coffee, and that's it. Oh, oh there, there is already some Cold War going in the galaxy. Uh, Arch is already doing it. And I guess it's I also have noticed that Kizzy. Oh, wait, Kizzy is doing the Doomsday Rock Savior. Uh huh. Just a moment. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to figure out if I can get you and me together on the same screen and me moving. Just a moment. Oh, I might be able to manage it. Here we go. 
Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment I will be wobbling again as ever. Just as just as just the way just the way nature intended. Uh -huh. oh, perfect. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we go. Alright, back to the wobble. There we go, I'm wobbling, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome. For those of you in chat that were complaining about the lack of bouncing personality, here we go. And I also need to say another big thank you to um, David Woodmancy for your lovely donation. That was a massive. An undead uh, de hacker. A massive donation as well. We do have some hive minds in. You said hive mind for the win. We do. Who are our hive minds today? So, uh, hives are. I have seen them. Molzer. The, the hive Molzer. Themselves. Yes, yeah. Molzer, the, 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 the preeminent hive. Let's see. Quite a few megacorps, actually, because megacorps are kind of because we have lots of diplomacy in this game. Megacorps can be a little more important and valuable, uh, I would say, uh, to the to the galaxy and the balance in general. Or have we only got one hive? Is it just Molzer as a hive today? I've like uh -oh. the memories of Molzer playing hive mind when no one played it. Yeah, and I guess so we're back there again. Time. Yeah, we're back back there. What's Ki oh Kizzy? We need to. Oh, I, I don't want to. So, um, we're gonna have to have a look at Kizzy uh, later on. Kizzy's a fantastic player, and she can be very aggressive, and it's absolutely hilarious when it happens. Though she claims to be very, very neutral. Earlier she has on, 12, 12 nil capacity already. Year, oh, year wait, three. where's she at? Well, she uh, she builds up ships, and she's got. Oh, okay, she's doing the same strat again. This is beautiful. She's gonna go and find someone and basically try to stop them getting their guaranteed worlds. I think. She continues with the production of, uh, of uh, corvettes, like military ships, not even going for colony ships. There are a lot of planets, like, like more than that. She's got so many planets around yeah, her. Oh yeah. my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. And Kizzy's rogue servitor, so she can build on any planet. That's going to be wild. Goodness gracious. It looks like she doesn't care. Like, <laughs> when there is a chance to bully someone in the Cold War, just keep, uh, to be as annoying as possible and slow everyone around. Slow down everyone around here. I guess it's the way. So at the moment, who's up at the top for economic? I'm guessing it's all the... Wait, oh, it's the Void. It'll be the Void Dwellers, actually, won't it? The Void Dwellers. And we do have... We do have the Rogue Servitors at the top economically as well at the moment. That's interesting. Geltanos uh, is really far ahead of anyone else. Like, by, he's, by he's a big very margin. Good with his, he's very good with his... Um, his uh, his uh, uh, Void Dweller build, though, I've noticed. What's he? He's already at... His science, I would say, might be a little behind for him. He's only at 140 at the moment, so that that could be higher. But he's still probably ahead of most other players. So it's you know it's not the end of the world for him. He's also going to be transitioning over into a merchant-based economy very quickly. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, he's already got three or five on mercantile, so he's got commercial enterprise out, and he's taken domination to reduce alloy upkeep straight away, so he can try and push out a second habitat as soon as possible. This build is so like so weird to to look at. Xenophile. Merchant guilds, parliamentary system as void dwellers. Damn, this is this is beautiful. Uh, Momonga's not a hive. Yeah, Momonga's clone army. No, Singularity, Momonga's clone army. Also, Singularity, I did explain the victory screen. I will explain it again at year 20. But for now, if you've if you've just watched, I think jump back about nine or ten minutes, and I go through exactly what um, all of these the score breakdown, where it comes from and what it means. At year 20, when we get our first scores rolling in, we'll start knowing what the ranks are of the players. And, uh, and then, you know, we'll know more. Now, what I think interesting about this is that if you have contact with another player, at that point, you can see what's going on with their score. But if you don't, you can't. And therefore, you know, um, intel is important. Also, there's no way of knowing, unless you have intel on other players, how well they're going to score at, you know, at the score intervals. So we've made it in the game that now having intel, having espionage is important to know who's going to be winning, basically. I, th I think that's that's something we've tried you know we've tried to make it so that all aspects of Stellaris are important kind of that's that's what we're aiming for and again big thank you to Zephnar for the mod I'm trying to well actually I guess Kizzy is the only oh no not only Kizzy but also Mr. Listfire is running with uh, ships I see how many ships does he, he has one, only only he's got four. an extra ship just one more ship yeah it looks like the fleet power is kind of it's very high isn't it why is it so high oh he's got a clone army he's clone got a clone army. admiral on them with ship weapons range plus 20 percent ship fire rate plus 25 percent that's really boosting up their uh 
the, the additional fire rate. Plus, he's militarist. What policy has gone what for is first? System? Prosperity. What is system he has next to him? 10 trade value, 9 minerals, 5 energy, 2 allies, and 1 system. That's hell of a system. Which system is that? Sorry, what's it called? Um, it's uh, Ad Domino. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, 5, 9, and 2. That's really good. Oh, wow. That's lovely. He's also got a, a ruined mega structure next to him. Oh, it's a ruined mega art installation, so it's not the best, but that'll be that'll be really cheap. He'll get lots of points. He'll get points for restoring it, and he'll also be able to score points um, for having mega structures if he completes it. I mean, that's still kind of mega structure. Yeah, it's it's not the best one, but it's still the mega structure. So why not? I mean, that's also his. Uh, I guess that his neighbor is also trying to get aggressive, or it was just. Uh, let me check who is the neighbor of Mr. Listfire. Oh, it's Fabianski, also one of the stronger players we have here. Oh, he's also playing the Cologne army. There are so many. Oh, wait. Uh, so, I guess that everyone is going to basically ascend with clones, right? Everyone's going to ascend with clones? Or are there some variations? Yes, no, no. no I, I'm, I'm not... So, at the moment, we've not banned anything like uh, ascended or... Uh, you know, we've not forced it so people have to do different things. You can go... Ascended if you want to. If you don't want to go Ascended, you cannot. But basically, if you can get a commercial pact, or not commercial pact, a migration pact, you don't really need to go Ascended. For the second uh, version of this tournament, um, for the next, if, if we do another round, which I'd like to, you know, if, if people enjoy this and they and, and it works, so shout to me if you're, if you're enjoying it and you like you know you like you you like it if, if it works for you um then wait a minute how do i i want to invite someone to, into this uh ooh. just a moment how did i oh that's the wrong oh, the wrong thing sorry i'm just trying to bring something in the right place bear with me just a moment ah oh, there it is there it is there it is meanwhile huge kizzy's fit is Moving. What's Kaz has Kizzy found anybody yet? Let's have a look at her position. Oh yeah, she has some contacts, but uh, she has already quite. A, she's not. Quite has she actually found going. any worlds? Oh, she's found some worlds. She she'll be going for these worlds now. She's just going to try and be a pain in their butt. But they've already got three planets, so it's not. Okay, here it comes. <laughs> oh. Oh, she's All seven. Right. Oh, that's one scientist out. Uh, I think she's going to jump over here and try to block this system with a continental world. That's <gasps> there's a construction ship. She's going to kill the construction ship almost certainly. Do you yeah. have any idea why why is she going for the like kind of further? Oh wait, there is no uh, there is no actual connection between the hyperlanes from Kizzy to the yes to the person to ah, her south yeah. to Acorn. Yeah, okay, I see that. And also the real humanoid also has no connection to her. Oh wait, this is such an interesting uh, like distribution of hyperlanes. That is why she's going aggressive to the like, to the top quite far away from the capital. Sorry, I just wanted to say, Matthias, thank you very much for your donation. Yay, this will be fun. Good luck and everyone enjoy. Um, yeah, that helps. Uh, donations help a lot to make this thing work. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, basically, if people enjoy it and, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't end up costing me too much money, I'd like to host another one and offer prizes again. So, um, so yeah, keep, keep, keep the donations rolling in. Lines are open. Cough. So I think Kizzy's plan is to try and block people in a bit and then win some early wars. She is running this origin. Have you seen her origin? I'm not going to say it out loud, but... Um... The funniest part is that her current target, the the amazing space Jesus, is also targeted by Ubi Hater. So basically, oh, no. it's year 7. And the oh no, year 7, we've already got is... fighting happening, basically. Let's, yeah, take, let's take a look at Space Jesus' point of view. Uh, uh, so he's got people in both of his systems. He's screwed. Like he, I, I, think he... <laughs> to, I, I think it's better to move children and women away from the monitor. Yeah, yeah. get the women and children this. out. Yeah. Like so, yeah. his both of his both of his systems have lost their star bases. He's he's just completely stopped. He needs to complete those special projects as soon as possible. Otherwise, oh look, he took he took one of oh, I know what's going on. So he took one of Ubi Hater's um, observation world, guaranteed habitable yeah, primitives. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, that's such a kick in the teeth. Um, but he, he, so he kind of deserves this attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, <laughs> he, he's kind of receiving it back. Karma is not the perfect. 
This is absolutely beautiful. So part of the rule system that I'm hoping that we see from the rules is that we get fighting happening at all points in the game because it's always worthwhile to beat your neighbor up. Wait, who's is this? Who's this? Uh, Epsilon. Who, who owns this system? Ah, why has R got a system all the way out there? Oh, it's just one jump away. Okay, okay. Interesting. He's, he's, R has skipped a system. I'm not quite sure why. I wouldn't usually say that's a helpful behavior. We also have as well, of course, not just the players, but we also have a fallen empire in the game. So that in this case, that's the Hidarian Guardians here. And we also have uh, Marauders. So we've got the Hidarian Guardians here who look like they are spiritualist. Okay, we've got the spiritualist fallen empire as well as the Marauders in the game. Wait, is there a player who is blocked by the Marauders? Oh, wait, no. Never mind. No, no, the Marauders aren't blocking anybody. They do have right next to them, though. Oh, my goodness. There's a primitive world with 26 primitives on right next to the Marauders. That'd be such... It's quite far away from all the players. No, it's not. No, it's not. Carlson is one, yeah, two, Carlson three is... jumps from it. Oh, my goodness. How's Carlson doing? What's but, he playing oh, as? He, he's Remnants. A, he's, he's already moving his six to seven army. I mean, six to seven power he's, army. He's taking it. He's yeah. found it. He's found it, and he's going to take it. That's going to be the such a boost is, for him. Yeah, he needs more armies. <laughs> there is like uh, one hundred power of army, on, like garrison on the planet. So he doesn't know that yet, though. He can't. He hasn't seen that yet. And I don't think he's taken on a size twenty-six world before. It looks like. Someone's asking: Is Kizzy allowed to land armies and conquer the whole empire before formal discovery and before the forced peacetime ends? No. No one is allowed to land on any worlds while you're still in pre-contact because that basically eliminates the world. So it's just completely banned. Oh, she started colonizing. So basically it's not like the all in and try to end everyone around. It's more of a- She's just trying to, trying to annoy to one or space. two players. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then what she'll try and do, I think, is she'll try and after, at year 20, use her big fleet to win lots of wars. I think that's what her plan is here and then get build up quite a few points. It has such a tremendous territory next to her. Like, if, if we check the territory to the right, like, to the east. Oh, yeah. And all She's the got up, so much free no space. One, like, actually, no one there. Yeah. So, basically, if, if she guarantees her, like, neighboring systems, what she is doing with her fleets, it's, like, that tremendous amount of systems to take. The and only to problem points. she has, look at her science income. Oh, yeah. She's got, she's I mean, got, she's got one research lab and nothing else. As a player who loves science, it's kind of... I mean, her fleet power is way greater. Wait, I mean, she has 40 pops and uh, the science income is 74. Yeah, she's uh, got very low science, but she's churning out 70 alloys a month right now. Yeah, at year, to... at year eight, 70 alloys a month at year eight. This is like a monkey build. This is a everyone massive is monkey build. <laughs> everyone is welcome to fight against us with their microscopes while we mm. are making like spaceships. Yeah, exactly. Fine. We'll bombard you from orbit while you look down your little microscopes. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. Uh. How many cordyceptic drone builds do we get for this? Says O O O or Ooh. Um, so actually none. That's partly because we 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 added a little rule in where the cordyceptic drone, so the the cordyceptic drones and uh, dragon build couldn't reanimate their dragon before year forty, and that does make them rather weak. People could come in and kill them. Plus, the dragon is something. Of, honestly, it's something of a gimmick. Um, it's 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 got the, all the reasons that make it easy to kill as a player. Also, make it rubbish to use in offensive wars. It's really good in single player because you can force the AI to become your vassal because they think you're massively powerful. But if you actually try to use only the dragon in the wars, it, it's really not very good because it sits at such long range. It only uses the one X slot weapon every 20 days. So, you know, 10 armies and you've got five, 10 years it will take to kill 10 armies. I've also found a healer's uh, kind of way uh, the dragon behaves. I had a ship that was actually sitting in the center of the root of the radius of the dragon, and dragon yeah. never was, was never able to actually fire the, the no. main weapon because exactly. if you arc. go fast enough, yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. Also, so if you have the dragon versus a void spawn, the dragon can never shoot because it's always trying to back away, and so it's always got the as, uh, the same situation here. It's got the ra radius wrong. Uh, oh, the range, the range is wrong, and it, uh, the the arcs. That's what's called the arcs. Something's happening in the chat.
We're going to be taking an in-game break um, at year 50. The players will have 15, 20 minutes. Um, Comrade, you're going to go off and I believe go to bed then because it'll be very late for you. You're, you're a couple yeah, of hours okay. ahead of, of me. For me, it's already 6.30 now, but by that point, if you were to stay till the end, it would be like 2 a.m. for you, I think, something like yeah, that, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Because uh, basically, this game will last until the year 2300, and we're year, currently at year 2209, or after six hours of, of, of time has passed while we're playing, whichever comes first, basically. Funnily enough, we have a different set of leaders in the, at least in the observer scores right now. Yeah. Oh, so we've oh. got we've got we've got a technocracy functional architecture. Wow. Vo oh, void dweller. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the most interesting that's, part. And also, that's, yeah. What's he gone for in terms of he's gone for mercantile first, then prosperity, and then he's gonna spec he's gonna make a Fed. He's specced into diplomacy. I think he's trying to make an agreement with Pax. He's trapped in. Look. Oh so that's really interesting. Fun Fun is trapped in by Pax here. So that would be bad, except Fun Fun is a void dweller player. So if he gets six or seven systems, he can just scale for the whole game. He can sit back, build massive fleets, have a massive economy. If he has an alliance with Pax, He'll be safe, trapped in that corner, and can just scale economically, which will get him lots of points throughout the game. Notice that actually Giltanos is executing this quite an interesting build. He opened his domination to decrease the LA upkeep from habitats and also to get an additional 0 0.5 influence. Influence, yeah. Yeah, for, and for he's already alloy. building. He has almost finished the habitat already. It's, it's 80, 86 percent basically, and he already has the colony ship ready. And he's almost got enough for a second habitat. And because because we're not... Oh wait, sorry, no, no. Look, he's he's got another habitat. Oh, no, he's colonized the planet. Hold up. Has he got any oh. treaties? No, he's met players, but he doesn't seem to have any treaties. Okay. I guess he's, he'll be using it as a breeder planet and maybe put some merchants on it. He's going to have it. such low happiness, though. Oh, neural symbionts. He's found neural symbionts. That's why he's done it. Because he wants the um the, the neural symbiont, which gives you a massive bonus to research and fire rate and all of those things. Oh, and also he's xenophile, right? Mm. So wait, as far as I remember, xenophiles do not get such a uh, debuff from neural symbiont, right? They, I think they like it more. I think they're yeah, happier. Like, xenophobes get like minus forty percent or something like this, or maybe stability or happiness. And yeah, xenophiles must be okay with it. I guess this is the reason why he did it so fast. He's also a pacifist. Oh, this is such an interesting build. So Gil the Giltanus' build, you would never... I don't think you'd ever see this in an ISS lobby, right? Oh, uh, Xenophile, pacifist, void dweller, you'd be like, you'd be laughed out of the room. And he's also not a mega core. But in this game, you don't need to conquer other players. You just want to get lots of... You, you know, you want to dominate the galaxy militarily or diplomatically or economically or, you know... All together, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or all together. Um... We Wait, shouldn't see too many player eliminations. I mean, we might. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of prizes on the line here. First place basically could get could get anywhere from you know three four hundred dollars worth of prizes, depending on what they pick, down to a few hundred dollars less because the, we've got a point system for the prizes. We'll go through that at the very end, but but yeah. I have noticed an interesting like an interesting event going on. Uh, a lot of players have chosen parliamentary system. And chosen what? Sorry, say again. Uh, Parliamentary system. Oh yeah. Faction, into game plus 40. And also Momonga even going for fanatic egalitarian. So factions are going to produce well, it's not actually that much. It's like Wait, Momonga? Uh, Momonga's yeah, fanatic militarist. Oh, pardon me, it, it's Mr. Carlson. Uh, yeah. Carlson, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Heaven Shard. Yeah, Fanatic. He's also he's the one that's he's he's taken the um Wait, what? Oh no! That planet nuked itself into oblivion! The 26 pops killed themselves! There was a nuclear war and they all died. That primitive world died before he could save them. Imagine oh, that is going to be didn't... such a pit. Oh, he must be so upset. Imagine if it happened in the period of time while he was waiting for additional armies. He, it was. Like, it must oh. have done. No, it happened because he didn't invade and they killed themselves. This is this is like a lesson for Stellaris. If you want to and, save someone, land on their planet. As yeah, exactly. Possible. I mean, this is why planetary invasion is definitely makes you the good guys, right? You know, the Bell Boss were the goodies. They saved the Earth from nuclear annihilation. But that must be so gutting. 26 pops he could have had and a size 18 world. And instead, he just gets a two world because he was a couple of months too late to save them.
No one just I would be what. kicking my computer at that point. I would be like, this is, oh, he's also found Prophet's Retreat, size 25 world, but look, it's an Ascension world, so you can't land on it without the Fallen Empire killing you. This, for, so for, for, uh, for, for Carlson, this is just a one kick in the face after another. That's hilarious. Uh, I have noticed that Kizzy has only 800 fleet power right now, I guess. The she's disbanded some base? ships. She's dropped oh. five ships. Or oh, she's lost them in combat, one or the other. Yeah, looks like. Well, yeah. But she's there's she's zooming north. Look at look at how fast she's going north here. She's gonna like there's this Trin's promise is a triple triple planet system. She's grabbing up all of these planets. She's I think she's now gone. Okay, I'm gonna double down into economy because I you know I've attacked these people as much as I can. How's it going for uh, the Voodoo Mormon Cat, the Amazing Space Jesus? Let's check that out because he was getting ganked. It looks like Kizzy pulled back. He's in zero. He's in last place. And he's only got one colony. Oh my goodness. He hasn't got his second colony. But his neighbor, Ubi Hater, has, he's managed to steal that primitive world. But he's not taken it. He's got nine pops on it and he hasn't taken it. That's really interesting. I, I wonder why not. Oh, wait. Is he pacifist? Oh, no. He is pacifist, so he can't take it. Oh my gosh. Oh, this that is, is such, such an waste. annoying. Oh my such God. <laughs> so oh he's my. taken this planet from. But no, you know what this means, though? Uber Hater at year 20 can go to war and take it back because you can take oh, yeah. any planets yeah, without yeah. a colonized. Uh, any systems without a colonized planet on there. And you have to have finished the colony. It has to have actual pops. It, it's so funny that <laughs> Ubi Hater has a really nice sneak for this situation. I guess he hates this guy right next to him right now. Yeah, I'd want to kill him. Seeing it. Uh. Wait, has he built the observation post on it? Oh, not yet. He hasn't done <laughs> anything. He's, no, he's, he's just has, leaving. He's queued it up. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to observe it. That's yes. amazing. An observation post in multiplayer. I don't think you'd ever see that in an ISS lobby. Goodness gracious. I mean, that's all I'm going to be saying all day. You're never going to see this in ISS, ladies and gentlemen. Um. <laughs> oh, it will be bloody. I guess, like, at, at the first moment when we had a will be allowed to do some harm he's, he's going to do some harm for one 100 percent there is nothing more irritating when seeing someone who has stolen your primitives and not even using it and then the yeah, it's just like it's like, like it's like a mate. slap in the face that it's a, yeah, such yeah. a slap in the face oh i've got someone sorry, bear with me ladies and gentlemen i've got somebody knocking at my uh i'll be right back i'll be right back sorry someone's oh yeah i'll try to Number one, number one. Wait, uh, if we check, if we check the victory score, Supreme Liberators is number one at the moment. I wonder. Wait, it's just the real humanoids. Oh, actually, that's that's the rock seven. That's interesting. The amount of rock seven we have here kind of speaks volumes about how strong rock seven actually are, especially when it comes down to economy parts. And since economy is a big factor here in terms of getting additional points to receive to propel yourself to the victory that's i mean i can understand that uh, players are using it however i wonder how uh, i'm watching i'm watching r right now uh usually when there is a machine player and there are other machine players around usually it leads to the it leads to the situation when there is like a mega machine forming however like in the rule sets we have right now, it will be a little bit postponed. I wonder if it will change the behavior of uh, players a little bit. Because when there is like only 30 years of peace and you're allowed to claim planets and uh, planets and take basically planets and pops and economy from other players, it's way more profitable to actually go and kill. However, okay, let's check it. Oh, Mr. Lifeus, yes. So Lifeus, R, and... What did I miss? I'm back now. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to spot uh, places in the galaxy where uh, there is a possibility of the mega machine happening, like uh, multiple machine players next to each other. But I was thinking about maybe generally that doesn't difference. happen because because yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. as in, if if, people, if players start to do that, other players will join the war to stop it happening, to kill whoever seems to be winning and going to turn into a mega. But obviously, it could happen. It's just. You know the players are the balancing element here in this game today. Um, they're, they're the they're the driving force. So the rules aren't meant to balance it. It's the players. Look at the border gore in the south between R and uh, Lifeus. This is just disgusting. Yeah, yeah, that's basically There's, where I was oh watching my right now. Goodness, that is awful to see. Oh, 
I hate it. And there's also Pux, so basically there are like three three machine players next to each other. Yeah, so Yernsax in the chat is just mentioning that in the first qualifier, R tried to eat two other robots, and he ended up in a war with 12 players at the same time. He survived, <laughs> but we thought, no, we thought he was going to die. We were like, yeah, yeah, almost all his systems were gone. He had about 50 or 60k of fleet, and combined he was facing like 140k. And we were like, yeah, yeah he's done, doesn't matter. Then about three or four years later, we came back after writing him off and somehow he pushed one of the alliances out of his space. I assume because they'd not coordinated right, so he'd managed to fight some of their fleets like independently. Um, and he survived and he's in today. That's R, This is R here who's playing as 0000000. It's a great empire name. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess one of the reasons uh, that this can be possible is that it's really hard to coordinate 12 players and also to, co to coordinate, like, uh, to have all of these players in the same war against you. If there are multiple different wars, I guess it's... It, it, uh, it was, sorry, it was it, two it different is... wars, I think. I think it was two different oh, wars at the same time. It was like five players and six players, something like that, or six and six. I, I don't remember exactly. Um, uh, have you noticed some uh, federations, like groups of players who were grouping not because it was... Uh, profitable for them, but from the standpoint of being machines, like having the like pure machine federation or pure block so federation. So what's been interesting this. is I've noticed that, so this has happened a few times, machines have joined federations that were trade leagues because they wanted uh -huh. to be in the federation for protection. Then the trade league players died and the machines were stuck in a trade league. So there was one point where I saw three machines in a trade league with no bios, which is the stupidest thing you can imagine because of course they're getting no benefit from being in a trade league but they're at war, so they can't change the pol like they can't change the federation type. And oh yeah, I see. So they were just stuck in a trade league for years, kind of going, "Oh yeah, we like trading." Beep boop beep, and it was just so funny. I wonder what is uh, the okay. So basically, there are multiple ways, or uh, I guess there are multiple viable ways to ascend now. But what is the most? Uh... I guess successful one. The In most... terms of ascension paths. Yeah, yeah. So I have made a video on it, but my opinion here, and some people do disagree, is that um, basically synthetic has been nerfed into the ground, not necessarily because they've made it worse. The, the bonuses are still the same, basically, roughly. Um, you can't get as many as much pop assembly now, so that's a bit crap. Oh, yeah, you can absolutely. get two roboticist jobs from the building. You can get one from your capital, plus, and then you, your 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 empire leader, if they're synthetic, gives you plus one machine uh, assembly as well. So you get more assembly than cybernetics, and you've got good bonuses. You know, you can get up to 25% uh, basic resource output, or maybe it's even, I think it's 25% uh, resource, sorry, all resource output. You can get a minimum of 25% extra, which is, that's good, it's something. But you have to have the synthetic technology, which can take you 40, 50, 60 years to get. Whereas um, Psionics, you can complete Psionic Ascension year 10 if you take you teach you the Shroud. Yes, it's not economically viable. I wouldn't recommend you do it economically, but like as a, a thought exercise, you can complete it in 10 years. If you're overtuned, you can complete Bio Ascension in like 15 years or so. You just need to um, complete the traditions to get to that point. So you just need some unity production. Cybernetic, you just need the technology and then you can get there. So that's not too difficult either. So most of the ascensions, you can do them around year 20 to 30, except synthetic, basically. Are you, are you uh, thinking that the players that uh, are playing today are going to prefer some over the other? Like, I mean, with machines, it's quite obvious. You cannot be cybernetic or cybernetic with machines, but with our clone army players, is it, is it more like spirits? Is it more like the Sionic? spiritualist? Yeah, usually Konami will go spiritualist, not basically because they have a fixed number of pops anyway. So going genetic doesn't really make sense. Going cybernetic doesn't really make sense because you can't edit your species template. So the only build that makes sense is to try to roll for psionic, but you might be unlucky and not get it. There is a federation formed already. Year 16, oh we have our first federation. It is between 013 and Fun Fun. Fun Fun is stuck in behind Pax. 013 is kind of stuck between Silas, PT, and Lifeus, and they form the Uwu Federation. All right, apparently it's named after me, according to Jern Sachs. Goodness gracious. All right. Um, <clears throat> they are Trade League. That makes sense. That makes sense. Fun Fun is, Fun Fun is Void Dweller, and 013 is Ocean Paradise Mega Core. So it does make sense they've gone for a Trade League. Hmm. Oh, Mabonga is now number one 
in terms of uh, player counters in the server. I wonder how many... Wait, uh, he must be planting his nasty branch offices all over the He place, has a right? branch office. He has a branch office on the Saturn habitat, which is... Uh, that's Giltanus' habitat. Giltanus must be losing his mind. 100% crime, which which means he's going to get some criminal jobs. He has criminal jobs, but because he's... he's So he's been clever here. He's he's made sure that all of his pops become merchants, roboticists, or clerks he's prioritized, so they'll never become criminals. This is basically, you know, this is... It's not quite an exploit, but it's a way the game is a bit stupid. You know, this you can so prioritize a job to prevent the criminal. So basically, it's a win-win. Giltanus gets uh, all of his trade value, and at the same time, um, uh, Momonga's getting 270 energy. That is so much energy. Oh my I goodness. I can feel man. that there is some... <laughs> like, if, if you watch it from the perspective of Momonga, there is like literally one... Momonga's also goes. taken a system right next to his... Right next to him. Look, Procyon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness me. Planting. Where is Momonga? How did he get up there? He's oh, not a, like, there's okay. like a route to, to him. I guess there is some sort of... Uh, What's ha I think what's happened here is they've discussed this yeah. outside the game, and so something we've not something we've not um, said no to is pre-teaming. If you want a pre-team, you can. It's not. It may help you. It may not help you. It, it. You know, we can't control it as long as the teams follow the kingmaker rules and they don't try to kingmake. So as long as you know, as long as what they're doing currently doesn't count as kingmaking, it's it's fine. Um, and we may. Uh, we may look into to that if it starts getting, you know, if it starts getting a bit silly. Now, um... It kind of makes sense why Mamon is at the top of the list, because... Yeah, he's making all that extra energy. Yeah, and also yeah, he has exactly. matter to compress the next to him, like two systems away from where he currently is. Does he? Oh yeah, yeah Temporal that's, that's Decay, oh my goodness, that's a nice one to have. And a guy world. Oh, it's a shrouded world, okay. So basically, his, his start, his uh, spawn is... Well, I mean, it's quite rich. He also has a 15 mineral planets uh, system next to him, not not so far away from the capital. Funnily enough, top three players are two clone armies and Doomsday Rock Savitar. Is has jumped to 2.5k of ships, I mean fleet power. Basically, it means that she's going to fight for some systems once the fighting is allowed. We are 20, it's like three years. Who's 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 uh, who's at war? Oh, we've got another we've got another federation, the Pangalactic Information Coalition, research federation between who are the members? The Ildar Guardians by Fabianski and the Neverborn Enclaves by Ubi Hater. Ildar Guardians are a clone army, and Ubi Hater is a necrophage. And they're right next to each other. Interesting. Oregon wants to join as well. That's what Obi Hater said in the chat. Okay. Makes Who sense. wants to join? Who wants to join? Obi Hater. So that will be like a triad of players. Yeah. So sorry to jump back to this Momonga situation over here with the, with the branch offices. Basically, um, what would be king making would be if Momonga put these branch offices on Giltanus's worlds, and Giltanus got nothing from it. As long as there's some sort of trade agreement going on, or this is benefiting Giltanus as well, then it's absolutely fine. Because they're both playing to win and trying to, you know, join together as a team and both make each other better. And what needs to happen in the game, basically, is other players need to attempt to react to this and make federations to beat powerful players. It's all about powerful players. I also absolutely love the name of the Giltanus uh, Empire. Gangster's what? Paradise. Gangster, yeah. Uh, Giltanus <laughs> is called Gangster's Paradise. Oh, they've been clear. Human pacifies and gang... He, they've been trying to do this from the beginning, clearly. I like that. I like that a lot. I also have noticed uh, there is almost no one who is running Isolationist. Maybe one of the reasons we have so many... Um, We're about to get that is... score coming in soon, oh, yes. aren't we? Um, because yeah. with, our, with Isolationist, you lose Diplo weight. And if you've got low Diplo weight, well, that's going to mean your score is quite low. Oh my goodness, a lot of people have met almost everybody now. We should be getting the Galactic Community very soon. Oh my goodness. We've got quite a few players with fleets now. Least Fire has 1k. Uber Hate has 1.7k. Where's Kizzy now? Has Kizzy got many? Kizzy's got 3.5k. So in a couple of years, people can start declaring war. And Kizzy, I think, is going to be one of the first people to start trying to fight some wars. 
she has a lot of ships. And 62 signs per month, but that's fine. But, well, I mean, the thing wait, is, though, wait. she's got she so 62. many planets. She has 62 science and 64 she's gone down. metal capacity. Mm -hmm. I have never seen it, <laughs> basically. Yeah, exactly. This is, you'd never see this kind of thing, would you? But her territory is absolutely humongous. It's, oh, she also found a primitive world. Actually, oh, wait, two primitive worlds, right. Oh, thank you, Uma. Uh, I assume it's uh, you, Uma, who I've known for. Welcome back. To, welcome to Priest. Wait, is this a different Uma? Uma, which Uma are you, sir? Um, let me check. Because now I, there must be two people called Uma, which which I... Fair enough. Welcome to welcome to Priest Level. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, let me check something. Boop, 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 boop. No, no, I must have a second Uma. Cool. I don't know, it's a different Uma. Uma's not the other Uma. Uma is Uma. I'm the Uma. Oh my goodness me. Uma. Alright. What one, one more year till war. One more year until war, ladies and gentlemen. And these wars at the beginning, don't forget, they're not you're there people are only gonna be fighting over unclaimed uh unclaimed systems. So they're not going to be fighting over everything. Just, just, oh, sorry, not, uh, not unclaimed system, sorry, yeah. uncolonized. Yeah, my, my bad, sorry, wrong thing. And also, no wars for tribute or vassalization, so only systems without planets, colonized planets. And uh, yeah, I guess, wait, uh, players are allowed to claim systems right now, right? As far as I can tell. Uh, you No, from, from year 20. Ah, oh, one from year, okay, I see. Why, if somebody claims systems, if they have, tell me and we'll uh, arbitrate. No, no, I, I, I was just, I was just uh, kind of extrapolating that if I wore. Mr. Obi Hader, I would be claiming all over, all over that system. I'd be claiming and claiming and claiming again, just to send a message that this system is mine. Obi Hader, Obi Hader, Obi Hader, let me find. Oh yeah, <laughs> Claim, like, he hasn't got enough influence though. He's look how he's spending 1.5 on the Federation. He's got a migration pact. <gasps> he's given a migration pact to the clone army, to Fabian. That's why he's been allowed into the Federation. Because now Oregana's in the Federation, but he gave a migration pact to the clone army, which is going to allow Fabian to scale, but also provide him with a lot of support. Oops, I just closed something down. Let me hope I didn't kill the stream. Uh, I just closed down. Oh no, please tell me I didn't kill the stream. Uh oh, is the stream still live? I just closed down my Chrome window. Uh, oh, it's alive. Tell me it's alive. Streams are dead, says chat. Fantastic. Thank you, Matt Bass. Thank you, Jern Sachs. Thank you, Bunny Boots Inc. And thank you, Drizzle. And Joey. And Michael Alexander. And Kisuno. And Drizzle again. Yep, yep. Okay. So did anyone do Hide My Necrophage with Void Dragon? No, no one's actually done that one. We haven't seen that build at all. We have a new leader in the Fleet Power Department. It's List Fire. It's <gasps> he's managed to get 6k out. Ooh, he's going to start hitting the Federation, I think. And he's going to hit, basically, he's going to... Problem is, yeah, problem is, he's got so few people around him. He can attack. He can attack Kizzy. Because he's probably quite a strong defender here. He can also attack Fabianski. And he's going to be trying to take that triple system. The Oz, oh, Ozagamun. Uh, yeah. He is going to attack uh, Fabianski. Absolutely right now. Because We've Fabianski also got has first scorers well. come in. Let's take a look at the score. So, currently in first place is the Ildar Clone Armada with 14 points. That's the least fire. So he, has, he had the highest fleet power. That makes sense. Oh, well, he, also was, he also had the second highest economic power. And he had the highest Diplo weight in the galaxy, probably from that fleet power, to, to be honest. After that, there's the Ildar Guardians, which is Fabianski. He had high, the highest tech power. He's making 511. Yeah, he's making a lot. Let's check out Fabian. No, he's making 800. Oh my goodness, sorry. Fabianski's making 800 research a month. That is that is quite a lot. We've got wars going. Kizzy's at war. Who's Kizzy declared war on? Kizzy has declared war on the real humanoid. What for? She's claiming... One system. She's also claimed a system from Amazing Space Jesus. She just basically wants to fight a war and knock knock out the real humanoid from the war, I think. All right. So basically, yeah, this is... I wonder what's... Uh, Listfire has 8k now. I wonder what is he waiting for. Uh, maybe it's just the fleet to get the points and that is it. Well, I think Kizzy wants the war for the points, I, I would suspect. This, this, there is a great target on Fabianski's head right now on his system. There is a system with endless expanse right next to Listfire. 
that's why I'm a little bit surprised that there is no war going on. No, but right I think now. they're gonna. I think Least Fire will fight him for that system soon. I mean, you need to get the Endless Expanse, don't you? You don't want to let that go. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, chat, if you're asking, wondering, that's this archaeology site here. It's a very good one. Actually, there are so many archaeological sites around Least Fire. There are at least four. Yeah, it's like four. And right now, it feels like Fabianski is taking. Oh, Fabianski's at war with somebody. He's at war with uh, the Amazing Space Jesus. They're attacking Amazing Space Jesus for those planets, oh, yeah, and they've yeah. taken they've taken it, and now they're moving through. Here we go. Yeah, they're they're coming to the capital. We've got what is this? This is three two point five k. Yeah, Space Jesus has no allies right now. He he's he's very Would much alone here. Claimed claimed every single system that does not contain a planet. A planet. In it. Oh, wait, that's except legal. For one that he doesn't see. <laughs> I guess it's the only reason it's not claimed right now. That's legal. That is. Oh no, he's also not. There we go. And there's a there's a surrender. There's the surrender. Oh my goodness me. So, uh, amazing space users has just lost a massive chunk of empire. And if we check out Uberhater's score, you'll see that Uberhater, uh, Uber, newborn enclaves, neverborn enclaves, they've just gained two points from has warm walls. All right. So let's go through how the points work then. So, basically, well, at year twenty, uh, every twenty years, the game will rank you based on these categories here. Economic power, fleet power, tech power, tech power being your research, diplo weight, controlled space for the number of systems you have, uh, controlled former homeworlds, and controlled megastructures. It ranks you from first to last. The first, the top five people get five points, four points, three points, two points, one point, and then if everything from sixth and below gets nothing. And that's how you get score every 20 years. Uh, so at the moment, we've got uh, Least Fire in first place, Fabianski in second, Kizzy third, Monga fourth, Pax fifth, but then we've got a see. There's a lot of balance here. We've got a couple of leaders, and if if I were the rest of the galaxy, I'd be trying to kill Least Fire, probably Kizzy too, because he's doing quite well here. A lot of controlled space and a lot of fleet power. That's that's good for her, and she's also won a war as well. Kizzy's pushed into second here, and this is all done thanks to a mod. It's a scoring mod called Montu's multiplayer scoring mod or multiplayer it's in the description of this video it's also linked in the rules massive thank you to Zephnar, who's been the main driving force behind writing the darn thing he's done a fantastic job he's also written mods for the gpo he's got a fantastic stellaris france mod go check out his mods his other mods is at the library he's got some great work as well just want to say that yeah so he's one of the best mod developers i know and like uh the especially the custom map mod from him it's like the mod that we had the 1v1 tournament on. And maybe there is a chance that the 1v1 tournament will be held on the French server in the nearest future. Who knows? We've got peace now. Everyone's declared their peace. So let's see if Kizzy, because Kizzy has a claim on one of Uber Hater's worlds. Let's see if she makes the peace with, makes attacks or makes peace. Because Uber Hater and their, they can't actually stand against her. They've only got, you know, about 4k between them. And Kizzy, Kizzy has a solid 5, 6k in total. Yeah, there, if there is not a, there are no strongholds anywhere near. Uh, if there was a big like let's say stronghold with uh, hangars and some platforms, it would be maybe plausible to defend against. But there is nothing like this. Least fire now has eight k, but I want to mention something here that is bloated by the fact he's built lots of auto cannons. Somebody just embraced cybernetics. Celestial throne. Who's that? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Must be Fabianski, you know. Oh, no, he no, did. No, no who was it? Yeah, he's Cyborg, yes, it's Fabianski. It is Fabianski. Yeah, he's making 900 tech points per month and 250 units. That's impressive. Oh, he's 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 Necrophage Cybernetic. Oh, Necrophage Cybernetic really works now, doesn't it? Oh, no, Goodness he's Clone. Oh, that's Clone Army. Wait, are we oh, about... so, 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 uh -huh. so he gets the Cybernetic trait, but he still won't be able to modify his species. You cannot, you cannot modify Clone, clone Army species. What the hell is that? Primogenitus. One second. Just want to check something out. 31 Primogenitus living on four planets. Oh, that's the that's the non oh, okay. Sorry, I understand now. So um so Primogenitus is the is the pre-patent version of pre-patent pre-patent? Uh, whatever it's called the previous version of neverborn it's a pre-necrophage version of uber haters build i think let me just check that though yes primogenitus is the pre-patent version of his 
his things. Uh, Eldred 33 thank you for your support. Welcome to Researcher. And thank you to everyone else who super chatted. It's been, it's a massive help. If you are watching this not live and you want to super thank as well, that'd be lovely. Thank you. Um, happy sports, says Michael Alexander. Thanks, you too, says Drizzle. Oh, how do you all have a wonderful evening? That's what I'm saying thank you to you. Oh, I see. No, I take it back. <laughs> all right, anyone else fighting? Any other federations? No, so far there's... Uwu, the Uwu Federation is getting bigger. Whoa, goodness me. Uwu now contains one, two, three people. Four. And Boris. Where's Boris? Boris is Boris is on the east over here. Boris has again joined a federation where he's not very close to any of them. That's interesting. Actually it's I find it kind of quite funny that there is one player who flew under the radar completely. That's uh Akron with the with the Empire Akron's Kingdom. He, he received five points for the control of systems. Actually he's he, he's pushing. He's put he he was pushing for control systems. So if you get that a couple of times, you know, you, you're doing quite well, especially because later on, it's actually if people don't attack him now, he'll probably keep hold of most of those systems. So he'll be able to get controlled space maybe three or four times. And that's a solid twenty points there. You know, you can podium with thirty points is enough for a podium. So you do you get that, you win a war or two. You get, you pass a, a legislation in the galactic community, which, by the way, is now formed. We're currently voting on form the galactic market. So anyone that passes a, any law that passes, if you, if someone passes your law, you get two points. So that's pretty cool. If if one if someone has tried the diplomacy tradition tree just for this, just for the control of the Acorn just joined the Uwu Federation. Okay, uh -huh. so Acorn's also safe now. Uwu has become quite a big kind of block there. That's five players. A lot of them, though, they're doing this for the, the the support. They want to defend themselves. And least fire is also in this federation, even though he's so far away from everyone else. Yeah, that's least fire. fire well, no, least fire. Wait a minute, least fire. What? Yes. Oh, uh, well, least fire's joined it too. Yeah, oh my yeah. goodness me! So wait, that's going to be six players. There's six players in that federation. Then that's a big fed. That's I about a third of the players. <laughs> we can say federation that literally goes well, over the entire map. What we might see, though, is the Federation will splinter and they'll kick out any of the members that get too far ahead. Oh, if you get too far ahead on score, they'll kick you out and kill you. Because oh, so like, it's worth it's it. It's not kicking weaklings, it's kicking the stronger members. Yeah, and because then... if you want to kick the strongest member and kill them so that their score no longer counts and you can get a podium position. That, that's it's like the reverse diplomacy of what usually happens. And <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Being like the strongest strategy. isn't the best thing always. Because you're yeah. in the highest position, you could be screwed. Like literally really badly screwed. So basically it's better to mimic weakness for some time. <gasps> and because he's now in first place. Because he is now in first place. She's won two wars. Who did who was the second war? Oh, she actually managed to take one star from Amazing Space Jesus. That one little star in the middle of Amazing Space Jesus' systems. Poor Space Poor Jesus, guy. look at that. He's been reduced and to just three planets. And, she, and she, she's fighting against the Federation. She's fighting against two behaviors. And she's she's in Z here. She might be winning. Yeah. Let's take a look. She's winning. She's winning that her missiles are gonna annihilate them, I think. Yeah, her missile build is just gonna sm smash them. Absolutely. She's barely lost anything. Oh, and they just had the bug. Their ships just retreated back to where they were. That's so annoying. That is so annoying. The funniest part is that Fabianski has no fleet as for now. And Uberhader just lost his fleet, I bet. Let's check. Oh. Uberhader now has 2k. So not all of his fleet, but kind of most of it. Yeah, he has under 25 now capacity. Meanwhile, Kizzy is sitting at comfortable... How much is that? 89. Like 90. In the level cap right now. Oh. Actually, Federation is in trouble. Even though the Federation is kind of big and it feels like... Well, if they, they... These three players, they don't have... I mean, they can't lose out, right? They can only lose one system. Or two systems. So, it's not the end of the world for them. But, if they now get attacked by Least Fire's federa new Federation... Because Least Fire probably wants these planets. I don't know why it's not attacked yet. But if they get attacked by least fire, they're going to be losing quite a few systems. Um, and that that's not good for them, you know? But well, the Federation has now... Hick, because he's coming. She's on the aggressive. She's now in Kaz, which is amazing space, Jesus space. And she's still pushing through. The Federation has to make it... Oh, wait, Kizzy has claimed... Oh, Kizzy just claimed more systems. So it's not the fight, uh, the war for one system. It's the war for multiple two. systems right she's now. She's only taken two, though. She's taken Elnath. 
Oh wait, no. Oh wait, no. I'm looking. Sorry, I'm Mexico. looking at Uber Hater. I'm looking at Uber oh, Hater. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I also, I also, I also oh, Kizzy's only taken one. Yeah, Kizzy's taken one. But, uh, so Uber basically, Hater's the position can now two. surrender without losing too much of it, right? So instead of pouring alloys and resources into the fleets that they do not own right now, they can just surrender. They could just surrender if they don't want to lose stuff, but they're not surrendering, and that's probably a breakdown in communication here. Unless they just talked to Kizzy. Kizzy just pulled her fleets back. What's going on here? Oh, she's showing off her power. Look at this. She's she's dancing around the system to kind of flex and show her muscle. That's hilarious. Look at this. She's she's running around the system to go like, look at me. I'm scary. Oh, there, there is no Surrender. FTL. Oh, no, no. There is no FTL in, in Oh, she's going around them. Yes, she, she can actually. Oh, they oh, just wait, engaged. One, one no, just, just one fleet. No, that goodness. Is, that is a tragedy. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. But her and other fleets came in. She should be okay. Uh, no, Stronghold is actually fighting right now. They're in the range and... Her but she, she has be. more ships. She has double the she has double the naval capacity, I think. Is Uber Hater actually losing a lot of his? Yes, Uber Hater's losing. Plan? He's losing ships and he's losing systems. That's uh, stuff. And that that starbase is going to go down pretty quick. The shields are up, but the armor and the the regular stuff is going down. Yeah, Kizzy's won oh, that. Kizzy's Kizzy's on no retreat. Remember that. She's any on no retreat. Lose. Yes. Oh. Any, any ship she loses. Oh no. Forever. She still has four K though. She still has more stuff. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, and they just one. retreated back to where they, they were. They oh, no. Oh, oh no. okay. that is this so is... bad. But yeah, it's... Kizzy won. That's just, they need to surrender. Wait, they need to it, surrender. Is it, is it better to use no retreat right now? Because <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think it is. No I really don't I mean, think it is better to use no retreat. No way. No, no, I'm, I'm just bear with for a second. Mm -hmm. The ships just got back and got killed anyway. Oh. <laughs> so it might be safer to actually, at least in this. If, course, if the bug happens, then yes. I think if the bug happens, yes. But otherwise, no. Oh. The thing is, next thing Kizzy should start doing, though, is going to the planets and bombarding them. Because there's no rule against bombarding. So basically, at this point, what you do is you go to maximum bombardment stance and you kind of go, if you won't surrender, I'll kill your economy forever. And that's, you know, so you can still ma you can still massively hurt a player without taking their planets if you just bombard them into nothing. Oh, she's bringing up armies now. She's going to knock out their economy. She has 40 but ships in transit. She has a massive fleet of reinforcements right now. I think that the Federation is in trouble. Yeah, it's well, to... they, sh they should surrender. I don't know yeah. why they're not surrendering. I guess they're just stubborn. You know, like surrendering as a big Federation against one she player. She also has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She's got seven colonies and two more. Uh, sorry, eight colonies and one more on the way. She's doing really well economically. Her capital, though, is going to explode soon. That's because she is Doomsday Origin. So that's something, you know, that's not, you know, it's not the best time for her. Oh no, she's just got like, trapped in another battle. I'm not sure she can pull through this one. I mean, maybe the Starbase won't actually attack her that well. Uh, I guess she's, she's fine, more but she's going to lose in. some ships. Yeah, she's she's going to lose a lot of ships. I'm not sure she can actually take this one. She'll knock their ships out, but like she's blunting her own attack. Oh no, she's knocked it. No, she has knocked it out. I take it back. Yeah, she's knocked out another Starbase. There goes. Once, there is one sleeping giant in this version. That's Fabianski. He was making a lot of uh, consumer goods. I wonder if he has. He's got no ships though. He's yeah. making the consumer goods for research. He's almost at 1k research before oh, year he, 30. He swapped. He swapped. He's making 200 Ls right now. I guess it's just a matter of time. No, he's still doing the research though. Look, he's doing uh, what, two, 200 alloys and 1k research. Yep. Holy he's running deficit crap, of minus 100, minus 100 consumer goods, but he oh will be able goodness. to stay on those for quite some time. He's got 29, he's got 29 metallurgists. Check out Sirius Prime. He has so many metallurgists. He has a bunch of colonies from the migration packs too. Like That's going to scale up quite in a quite a scary way, I think. Momonga's now topped the charts though with that, with that energy stuff. Giltanus is also doing well as well. Let's see. It would be the best, like the best possible moment to actually attack Fabianski as Listfire, but Listfire is not actually doing it. I guess the fleet that he has built was just to get some points, year twenty, and that is it. The question we have to ask is, what is Giltanus getting? Um... What is Giltanus getting? from this arrangement. So Giltanus is allowing these things to exist and not declaring war on his habitats, mainly because he's basically pushing the crime down, I have to assume. Maybe? Let's see, Saturn oh, habitat? Oh wait, he, he, he gets merchant jobs, right? He gets merchant jobs from the- He gets one merchant or... job. Yeah. He gets one it. merchant job 
but he's giving away hundreds of energy. Wait, he has no criminals, right? He has no criminals because he's not. So, he's not. Yeah, so like, he's not losing any trade weight on his habitats, and he's getting merchants. Uh, he's get, well, he gets one extra merchant. It's not a massive amount. Yeah, but I mean, it's something. It is something. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's something, but it's not like it's not. It's not that much. Um, I mean, it's not as much as getting two. It's not as much as getting seven hundred energy. No, getting he, probably six hundred energy. Gets some resources from a monk, I guess. Maybe he sends it in the trade deals or some energy back to Giltanus. Probably. Oh, there is another war. Ark is now fighting with someone. Oh, that's that's a war against Pax. So okay. So basically, this is this could be the mega machine, but it's not actually the case. Ah, uh, is independent. Ark is not in a federation. He is he is alone, and he's fighting against Pax, who's also alone. Yes. And there's yes. a fight going on right now. Oh, it looks like it looks like Pax just lost. Pax just lost the fight. What is actually claimed though? Only four Ooh. systems. Oh wait, no, four no, systems. Those are six, some six. good systems. And there are some six. systems to the to the north, yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be nasty to lose those, I think. It also makes it so much easier to claim and uh, take the systems in the next war. I guess once the claiming is allowed, because when there is such a border war, uh, it's it's actually possible to put your fleet somewhere deep in the territory of your enemy and attack from the angle. You Pax cannot... only has 500, 500 heat. Pax should surrender, or at least... Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you don't want to surrender too easily because then you give away points. Because if you surrender, you just get like, Kizzy now on 16 points because she's got... She's won three wars. Oh, they surrendered. They surrendered to Kizzy. She got her stuff. One she got one easy. system. Easy. And that system actually had a planet, a continental world. Kizzy has so many planets. She's in such a strong position here. <gasps> Least fire. I think Kizzy might go after Least fire now, but Least fire has such a big fleet compared to her. Having said that, though, Least Fire's ships, if you look at his ship designs, they are mostly auto cannons. Oh, he's got destroyers and cruisers now with plasma. That might balance it out, actually. Yeah, he's, he's a, like, his empire is quite tough to fight against right now, especially for kids after the, after the resources loss. And also, uh, she must be quite concerned about the whole world right now, because it's about time to start putting some resources or just gathering some resources oh wait she, she just she just she just joined the I'll federation i'll be right back you keep everyone entertained and talk about what's going right. on I, I i've left uh, the screen on my map mode so everyone can see the galaxy as well for you oh kizzy so, joined the fed oh i yeah. see oh yeah. oh oh that's interesting oh that's a really big fed now that's very powerful i think so they're going to go around and kill a couple of players that looks it, like it crosses yeah. out the, the possibility of fighting against least fair it However, does it does yeah there, there is one, like, actually this federation of three players is now a federation that is getting tremendously overwhelmed by the amount of plausible possible enemies in the other federation. I'm quite, I'm quite surprised that we are not seeing any other action on the map. Maybe players are now waiting till the next time the scores will be calculated and we'll see the uh, increased amount of fighting on the map right next to this time. Yeah, as well as just R, but he's dominating. There is no way that Pax will be able to withstand against it. Let me check the resources of Mr. Pax. Wait, he has a lot of allies stored, but he does not have any uh, shipyards. <gasps> okay, this is a mistake. I see. So actually, he could have uh, he could have created a fleet to fight against, but there are no shipyards. And also, uh, since his space basically space production was conquered, he's now running a lot of deficits. And even though he's producing close to 170 elves per month, it's not that, um, it's not helpful when you don't have shippers to, bo to build your ships. And also it's not helpful since uh, there is there is a real possibility of getting defaulted if you are sitting in the negative resources for quite some time. And this is like another reason why I guess it's better to just process loss and go for it, go for the surrender button and try to plan for the next war, maybe join something. Is this, sorry, who are we talking about? Is this, uh, um, Pax, Pax. actually, Pax, Pax uh, okay. has 8.6k allies, but he didn't have shipyards. Basically, oh. Arrow has caught him off guard with his pants mm. down and he could have... Why isn't he surrendering? I think he's being prideful, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, because uh, the problem is that he's also running some negatives, right? So he's in mm -hmm. negative minerals right now, as far as I remember. He's, yes, his he's economy... Only... 
He, oh, he's rebalancing though. Look, he's he's rebalancing a bit. He's got plenty of time with food. He's rebalanced his consumer goods. He's still making 130, um, 130 alloys. As long as he can defend his planets, he might actually not be worth surrendering. Like he yes, might as well just because like R has to continue staying in the systems. And as long as he can build armies on his planets, oh, he's building up. He's building up. Somebody just clone ascended the Ildar. I think that was. I think that might have been Fabianski just clone ascended. No, we already saw that he went cybernetics, and he's full cybernetic. He's gone five or five. Somebody who's somebody else called Ildar just ascended. Who's that? Um, I don't know. Who's that? Maybe Life is. Is he called the Ildar? Oh no! A yes, bunch of people sonically yeah, ascending. Oh, meanwhile, no, it's not Life Oh, uh, at least fire, least fire. That's least fire. Oh, least fire, least fire, just sonic. Yeah. He has sixteen point three k of fleets right now. He has destroy a focus and fleet expansion. Okay, oh, it could be better wow. if it if it happened in the previous patch, but I guess with 30% discount, it's also, still Also, don't worth forget it. a lot of, a lot of that I think is inflated. Let's check out his ships. I want to see his I want to see his ships. His ships are there. Okay, no, he yes. does have some destroyers, but he yeah, also has he a has lot of corvettes. Destroyers. The corvettes with the auto cannons, that's bloated. Auto cannons are bloated in terms of how much fleet power they say they are because they have massive reductions to armor output, and armor is now so thick and so strong. Like, if you look at these corvettes, he has three armor plates on them. That is 300 uh, hit points compared to just 200 hit points for regular hull. So armor gives you so much more now than it used to. He's, uh, the other interesting thing is that he's sitting at 140 naval capacity out of 100, so he's way above his naval capacity uh, that his empire has right now. Oh, there is no way he's building those ships just to have those. He's planning an attack. I guess that the Federation of Uvu is going to attack the Federation of... Wait. Yeah, of the Federation of Fabianski, Obi Hader, and Oregano. Uh, we're about to see some intergalactic... I, I guess the first war federations. We might be. We might be about to see that coming up. And we're only at year 30, so, you know... Um, like we just need to... We also need to check... Uh... This fire is definitely preparing for some war. It's like 23.3k of, of uh, fleet power, but obviously it's bloated, but still. Oh, I just want to say, PC, welcome, Priest. Thank you very much for your support. Um, people's support is basically why we're going to do this tournament. It, so also as well, if you're watching this tournament and you think, I'd like to sponsor it, um, the next one, send me an email. Email is, uh, if you go to my uh, channel page, um and go to my about page on the channel you can see my email address there send me an email if you want to sponsor the next one and uh we should chat um this is a fun event lots of people will enjoy it and watch it hopefully and cough cough help um <laughs> all righty let's see so ha any no war started yet least five's got 23k kizzy's kind of fallen behind a bit with only 5k here she does have 6k of alloys in the bank so to speak but she's not like a head I guess she is preparing for the evacuation of the capital. I'm still running 97 attack. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh my actually. goodness. How is her capital doing? Uh, not Poggy Woggy Oo Woo. Is it doing... Oh, somebody just joined... Somebody else just joined the Fed, did they? No, no, sorry. No, I didn't. Sorry. No. I thought I saw something like that, but I was wrong. This is as wide as possible as you can get at this point. Like, literally. No signs. A lot of planets. Like, how many planets does she have right now? Kizzy. Kizzy yes. has one, two, three, four, five, 11, six, seven, eight, colonies. nine, ten, plus one on the way. Yeah. Let me just turn the heater up in this room because it's absolutely gosh darn freezing. Oh my goodness. I guess she has she has more colonies than she has scientists, right? Yes. She has <laughs> plenty of pops. She's wait, got plenty of pops. Wait. She's got 148 pops at year 30. I mean, come I, on. Am I right that she does not have a single researcher job? She but it looks like, yeah. No researchers. Yes, she has no research. Re <laughs> I don't She's know what's going space. on. She's getting I mean, so much unity as well, though. She's making 150 oh, unity wait. a month. 37 physics from jobs. I guess she has the portal. She started supremacy. She started with supremacy. Well, yeah, makes sense when <laughs> she went so aggressive from the start. That's why she was able to withstand the fight against the Federation right early on. Each of those pops on a cap. She's got 12 fabricators, so 12 alloy jobs on a capital. Each one is making 10 alloys apiece. That is so ridiculous. <laughs> that's just that's just nuts. 
I'm surprised she doesn't have some uh, some. Uh, I'm surprised she doesn't have any um, mining or energy credit jobs in the capital. I would probably keep some of those around just for those massive extra bonuses to the economy. I suppose she's play. She is making men plenty of minerals. So uh, yeah. What makes me really interested and kind of thinking about it quite a lot is that Jotanas is a really strong player and he's known to be a really strong player. But as for now, he has zero score. So he must have a plan. However, I cannot even imagine what the plan is. Is he going to just scale up with the amount of habitats he has and that is it? I mean, he's making quite a lot of sense, but 700 kind of pales in comparison to what Fabianski is uh, producing right now. And the amount, the amount of plan, the amount of habitats, like the scaling with habitats, is quite limited anyway. How are we doing for Observer Squad then? So ours clearly in the front here, that's Rogue Server to Prosperous Unification, change over to OTA updates for uh, Wave All Unity Cost for Drone Resettlement, reduced Empire Size, increased Edict Fund, and he is using that Edict Fund for Capacity Subsidies and Fortify the Border. Synthetic Age, oh he's already taken Synthetic Age, oh my goodness me. That's going to really help. R's going to have... Oh my God, R's already going down the Synth Ascension. So as a machine empire, Synth Ascension is, is really easy. And they've changed it over. So Synthetic Age actually lets you take the Synthetic Ascension. That's really good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Momonga. Doing okay. Completed two traditions. Lots of clones. Also got 47 other pops that aren't clones. Wow, that's interesting. How has he managed to get a clone... A but how has he managed to get one pop, which is part of his species, but not, but not the same? Oh, I know. <laughs> it's it's the species from some different empire that is also named Blork, I guess. No, but it should be called a different thing. Wait a minute. Hold up. Uh, let's check the pops from the other Blorg looking like empires. I guess maybe, maybe they all may, maybe they've Carlson. changed it now so that if something's called Blorg, it all shows under the same empire. It's called yeah, the yeah, same yeah. name. Maybe yes, it is. It's, it's uh, this is the pop from Carlson's empire. Basically, that is it. A bunch of empires have Blorgs in them. Interesting. Okay, okay. There's somebody called Babies. What the heck? Twenty-eight of those. One hundred and twenty Lifeuses. Let's see, what's the, what's the most popular species in the galaxy? Oh, the, the, the most popular species in the galaxy is Blorgs. Everyone can be happy to hear. Followed by a bunch of robots, then spicy salads, um, Neo-Ildars, Acorns, Armonicans, Ildars, Liberators, more robots, some traders, Princep Humanis, some, some, some folks. Uh, the galaxy is in peace, actually. It's, it is interesting. No no, one is no one's currently fighting. I suppose that's because the Federation is formed, Big Fed. There's a lot of peacetimers will be in there. And then the other players aren't really looking to pick fights. <gasps> um, fun Fun, though, lost a lot of their... Oh, no, that's... Sorry. No, sorry. Pax took this space and R has taken it back. Okay. Okay. Fabianski is sitting at 1.5k of research per month, and he's making 300 alloys. There's a problem that he, he has a neg like deficit of 140 consuming goods per month, but if he manages to stabilize it, Jesus, I, ha I haven't seen the science income uh, over 900 in the whole galaxy, and he's like six 600 points ahead of that. Yeah, yeah, he's doing so well on science. He's he's churning out techs in basically no time. He's doing, he's currently doing tier four technologies in about 30 months, so three years. Um, that's insane. At year 30. That's really, really good. Wow. Um, yeah, wow. That's And he's going to be supported in that because of his federation. Like, that's partly why I like about the rules is you can go for a tech rush rule set. Oh, true. Absolutely. And Only also... five players have remembered to propose laws as well in the galactic community. So some people are not proposing laws. They've forgotten, it looks like. And some people are still on isolationist. They've forgotten to increase their diplo weight. Oh, interesting. Uh, Fabianski is finishing 1x Berlin, so the production of his capital that is full of science, I guess, is going to go even further ahead. All right, so yes, uh, he was not attacked uh, by Listfire. However, Listfire yeah. has a Listfire has a great fleet moving towards towards Fabianski. I guess the wait, maybe he's just trying to clear the spaceborne 
thingies like mineral drones. It looks like he's, he's clearing them. I mean, maybe I mean, they're moving up. It's a lot of fleet power. That's a lot of fleet power. No, look, they 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 keep they keep, uh no they moved away. Okay, they're moving away. Let's just see where they're headed. They're headed around. They're headed around. Look, look, look. If you click select the fleets, you can see where they're going. They're currently going to the Penost Star. Interesting. Fabianski has the like, design of his cruisers. Full uh -huh. medium iron disruptors. Oh, that's quite interesting. The oh my goodness. That... So those disruptors are going to absolutely shred other ships. They're going to be really bad against star bases. But this medium disruptor cruiser will. Th this could take on. Um, this could take on. If you had like a, sh a cruiser with a balance between kinetic and lasers, if you had a fleet of cruisers with laser kinetic mixed, and you had 40k fleet power, 25k of these disruptor cruisers could kill them. Easy. Easy. The, the only question I have is that he's running the combat computers line. Uh, like disruptors that's, has that's a mistake. Accuracy. Yeah. He also I, he also has two auxiliary fire controls. Yeah, this is a massive yeah. mistake. So the line computer and the auxiliary fire controls are giving him absolutely no bonus. Because he's already guess, at 100% accuracy. It can't get higher accuracy. That's, it must yeah. be the issue of, you know, like the habits. Because usually in the previous patch, everyone was, was running auxiliaries. And, well, actually, he should, no one was he running should line Yeah, He should yeah, switch to pick it. Yeah, he should switch to pick it. Must pick here. Or artillery. Because the thing is, artillery will give him extra weapons range. And that won't hurt him. Because he's, all of his weapons are the same range. So his computer means that all he'll sit at kind of 45 weapons range. Which is fine. Oh, maybe he just created uh, this ship design that he had like the, from the best... Wait, has he used his allies somewhere? Has he killed some ships? I think he must have done. Yes, look. He's building. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And quite a lot of... But I wonder... Oh, yeah. He, he's managing he's the building, queue. Yeah, he's managing the queue. He's building That's... around 30 cruisers. That's a lot. And also cruisers will be so good against the corvettes and destroyers of least fire. Least fire ships. So he's got lots of armor. Let's check them out. So he's got lots of armor on those cruisers as well. They've got 2,200 armor. The connect, the auto cannons are going to struggle against the armor. He also isn't skimping on shields. He's got level four armor, level three shields, disruptors. If he gets 10k of these cruisers, and he's going to end up with I think at least 15, he could completely destroy least fire ships easily. He will suffer if he comes up against a star base. Because star bases have so much armor and so much hull points, mainly the hull points here, that the disruptors are like that they're not that effective. Um, we have been we have been paying a lot of attention to least far and Fabianski, but this is like this federation, this outnumbered federation of uh, Oregano and Ubihater. I wonder what Ubihater is up to. Yeah, he has taken that uh, primitive world, right? How's Molza doing? We've kind of ignored Molza with the hive. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at that. Molza's kind of. Moles is he making has... good science, good alloys. He's making a lot of energy credits. Wow. He's got he six has planets. 26 pops. It's not the biggest amount, but he's... That's still a lot. That's still a good That's number. That's quite a decent amount of pops, hive. Yeah, yeah he's, he's going well. Um, He's got his edict going mining and capacity. And he's going cybernetic. Okay, okay so he's, he's actually... He's taken it. He's done transubstantiation synthesis. So now he can assimilate other empires if he attacks... So he could attack, for instance, uh, Dino Stands and assimilate those pops in. Unless Dino Stands is a machine. Who, uh, who's that? That's Popcorn Madness. Who's, let's... Mm, he has an interesting design of ships as well. Uh, Popcorn Madness is machine as well. Silas PT. Is Silas... Show me something that's uh... not machine, please. Oh, okay, good. Silas here is regular bio. Normie bio. Oh, but he's not next to Silas. Oh, darn it. Who can he attack? Lifeus? Is Lifeus machine as well? That's least Yeah, fire. he must be. Yeah, he must Life be. Life is a machine, and so is our... So, Molza actually can't attack any of his neighbors because they're all machines. Like, he can't eat them. He can attack Silas, but that's going to be really difficult because Silas is in the massive federation that spans the galaxy. Yes, it will be easier to attack the Fallen Empire than attack the Having said that, Silas, this, this Silas's federation, they've got no way of getting... There's no wormholes here to this left side, so they can't come and defend them. Hmm. If R closes borders, no one can come and attack Molza. Molza's safe. Well, Silas, is, Silas has a huge stockpile of 20k of alloys, and he's also the clone army, right? So clone army with the ascendant clone yeah. army admirals. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's really, really hard for Molza to... Make a lot even of to science Silas too, yeah. yeah. I guess it's Silas has a, the second highest uh, science income right now. After after Fabianski. And it's year 36, right? Uh, so it's basically like three years 
four years till the next calculation of points. Yes, four years until we get four years until we also we have a scoring round and um uh only two players have a decent amount I mean Kizzy is this thirty one, but basically it's at least for our hand that is it. Everyone else is just sitting at zero. With a comfortable zero, maybe like several hundred of fleet power and that is it. We're about to get the score. Let's just, what's the score at now? So at the moment, first place is Kizzy, followed by Least Fire, Fabianski third, Momonga fourth, and Pax fifth. If we were to stop, actually, sorry, that's not true. We've got Pax here, is it? Is it? We've got a lot of people at five points. The tiebreaker for points here is based on who is higher in the observer score. So, who's the highest? Um, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba, it, uh, ba -ba -ba, do I see any of them? Acorn's there. Is anyone above Acorn? Oh, R. R's in first place. Okay, so R is currently in fifth. Even though it says it's seventh, he is technically fifth because it's the tiebreaker is observer score. R's not making very much science, though. Only 600 science a month. Hmm. A lot of alloys. A lot of alloys. What I have seen, the, actually his technological level is quite decent. Uh, if, if we check the observer score, it's around 3.5k in the observer score. Oh, obviously, Fabianski is far ahead of everyone else. Kind of makes sense with the amount of science he's making. Also, Fabianski is not producing consumer goods, so he basically swapped away from the production of alloys. Oh, Blork making psionic abilities. Uh, the That's the second Blork the psionic ascension we've seen, yeah. though. There's so which many people playing as Blork. Which Blork is it? Oh, it's Momonga. Okay, it's Momonga. Uh, Wait, what is he going for? Hmm, Momonko is also producing a lot of consumer goods. It's quite interesting that there are waves that where players alternate between the production of consumer goods and allies, but... I mean, if the galaxy is this peaceful at this moment, I, I can't expect that it will change in the nearest three years. Well, there's but... a lot. There's a lot of independent players now. Let me ch let's check those federation laws. The federation laws are currently set to can subject join no. So in three years, those feds are going to be looking to make those independent players vassals. Oh, the other federation though has currently got subjects join set to yes. So only. So, so the, pa the Fabianski's Federation, they're about to start taking vassals. Okay, who can they target as a vassal, basically? Well, there is Giltanos, not so far away from... Also, there's there's um, the, the, the real humanoid. They can take the real humanoid. They can take uh, Amazing Space Jesus. They could take Giltanos. They could take... Um, and they could also attempt to take one of the people, like Least Fire, as a vassal from the other federation if they really wanted to try, you know? But part of the federation rules is that, so you have to have um, can subjects join set to no so that the subjects can be outside of the federation and therefore they have a chance of rebelling. Because if you're in a federation and you're a vassal, you cannot rebel. So, yeah. And Ildars, another, some other Ildars have woken scientific, uh, uh, psionic abilities. Quite a lot of Ildars. R has 20k now. And so oh, R's Boris, ship Boris designs... Has, wait, actually, Boris has the same amount of... He just uh, burst it. Looking at our ship designs, though. I'm looking through our ship designs, right? They're so old-fashioned. I don't know how else to put it. They're a laser kinetic balance. And it's just not the mix. He was running the same ships in one of the, the prelims. And he got annihilated by a disruptor fleet that was half the fleet power. Uh, which, yeah. Boris has got... Boris is running some disruptors where he can, some torpedoes and some lasers. I'm not sure about the laser, but I think the disruptor is a good good call. He wants to get a higher level disruptor though he can. Oh, he's about to get tier tier two plasma accelerators. That that might be worth swapping out for, and improve strikecraft. Strikecraft are much better now. So because of the way that retreats work, you only get a certain number of disengaged chances. Strikecraft are much much better than they used to be because it used to be that like every battleship, every ship would always run away and not die from a strikecraft. But now, Strikecraft will kill more than neutron launchers because you get lower, ch you get less and lower chances to run away. 
funnily enough, it's I guess it's only Molzor who has the ship de design, cruise design with the hangers right now, and he has tier two hangers, so I guess he will be the one he'll be utilizing this. I think also, that looks like a good design. It's very balanced. Plasma and Kinetics, who's going to take out the shields first. He's got Strikecraft to hit the armor down, and then Plasma to come in and, at the end and deal a lot of hull damage. He's running line, so they, the, these ships are going to fly straight into, straight into the combat. I think he should drop the Flak, flak Battery in exchange for Sentinel, because I've noticed that Flak are crap, basically. Um, they, they're still not very good against fighters. They just don't work. But the point defense do work, as far as I can tell. Basically, it's only two years till the next score calculation. So it kind of makes sense that the players are creating the fleets to get the top points. However, Listfire has been paying for this like, immense fleet. I guess he has 140-ish naval capacity for at least 10 years now. And, well, most likely he's going to get number one. I mean, top one in, the, in terms of fleet power and get additional five points to the 14 he has accumulated as for now. But everyone else... Well, yeah, I guess it makes sense that you either go for the top with the fleet power or, don't, or you do not build any ships because basically you will be wasting resources for the upkeep. Silas has 50k. Oh. Silas has 50k. Okay, I bet some... he's bloated with... Yeah, look, he's bloated with tier 2 auto cannons. So it says 50k. If someone were to attack him, it's more like 35 because the auto cannon fleet power is bloated. But that's going to give him... That's going to give Silas, yeah. So Silas is going to get first place on Diplo weight and first place on fleet power. And he's in a big federation, so no one's going to be able to come and kill him straight away. Yes, I think Silas is going to end up in number one now. After this scoring in 12 months' time, we'll see Silas at number one. Oh, how many points does he have? Oh, sorry. Oh, he has he's... only four right now. So Only four, yeah. So he's... he's... <sighs> 12 points behind first place. So even if he gets number one in fleet power and number one in diplo weight, he still won't overtake first place. Oh, he's he's sitting at minus 250 energy per month. Okay, that, that Oh wow. Costs. And this, he's costs. about to go he's at zero. He's just gone bankrupt. He needs to sell some minerals, sell some alloys, something. Oh, he's selling oh god, he's he, he was selling 30 alloys, 75 food. He's trying to he's, stabilize, I guess. He's yeah. buying he's buying in moats though and rare crystals and he doesn't need to. He could stop some of those those trade orders because they're Actually, expensive. The, like there are downsides and like upsides of being in the galactic community. The prices for Ellis and everything is kind of broken as for now. Because we That's have why, a we have yeah, galactic yeah. market. You, yeah. you have to you have to join the galactic community to get the chance to get some uh, points from Diplo. No, no, you don't. So no, sorry, no. So actually, in this one. Even if you're not in galactic community, in the rule, in the score, you can still oh, get Diplo point. weight points. But uh, if you're not in the community, you can't assign envoys to the community, so you can't boost your Diplo weight. Okay, thanks. You, sense, you, yeah. you with me? So, um, and also, you can't get any points for like becoming galactic council member or like passing any laws. Yeah, and you yeah, also yeah. can't stop people from passing laws. Yeah, the fleet power is so bloated right now. Uh, Sal well, I mean, for the for this uh, ship design that I have mentioned previously, uh, Salas has 16 cruisers, and that's almost 19k fleet power. Yeah, obviously he has unyielding and ascendant con uh, army admiral, but still, that's one cruiser more than 1k fleet power. That's insane. He also he also that. doesn't have no retreat. He has rapid deployment, oh, so he true. could boost it further if he wanted to. And I think I'm looking at Silas right now. Who can he see? He can see the galactic community, so he can see which other players have high fleet high fleets compared to him he can he's see he's also going for all the edicts so his fleet power is 67k at least fire had 51 and that's the thing you, so oh, and we've just gone over okay situation log least fire just got so currently first place is very close least fire is in first with 23 points fleet power is at nine diplo weight at nine so he scored that twice and he's done well on economic weight so least fire and fabianski are doing quite well. This is the northern corner of the galaxy up here. So Fabianski and Leafsfire right next to each other. They're number one and two. Fabianski has a high tech weight because uh, Ildar Guardians, let's just check them out. Fabianski has been getting quite a lot of... Oh, they're at war. There's a war going on. They're trying to vassalize. They're trying to tribute uh, Amazing Space Jesus, which makes sense, as we said they probably would. And okay. they just surrendered. But, but, Amazing Space uh, just surrendered. Uh, uh, I have a question. If the Federation yeah. wins the war, do all the members get their points from the victory? No, or the one only who... the member that proposed the war. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this case, 
Who's who's that? Va who's a vassal? Amazing space speed, protect out newborn enclaves. So that means that only Ubehater got the points. If you check, you should see Ubehater has two points from the war. Let me look. Yeah. He, oh, he's got yeah. two points from that yeah. war and two points from the other war that he won against um, Amazing Space Jesus earlier. But basically, we're seeing two massive federations form, or two big federations, one massive one, one medium-sized one, a bunch of independents, and there's the score in the chat there. So, Least Fire is in first, Fabianski and Kizzy in second. Let's go back to the score here. Uh, Fabianski, so Least Fire, Fabianski, and Kizzy. These are all very close to each other, first, second, and third. Oops, somebody else is fighting now. Make somebody a subsidiary. So Least Fire is proposing they make Popcorn Madness. Where's Popcorn Madness? Uh, is that down south? Wait, Popcorn Madness attacked Molzer. Oh. But they're also trying to make him in... No, no. Oh, yeah. But they're now they're going to knock Popcorn Madness out, though. They're going to try and turn him into a subsidiary. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Dino Stands. Popcorn okay, Madness and it's actually advancing the territory of Mosul right now. And but it doesn't matter. Like he's going to be stuck out because he's going to get vassalized first. Oh. He can't, so basically, Mosul just, just have to defend and stay back. Popcorn Madness is also... He's only taking... Um, he's only taking a couple of systems. It's not a tribute war. It's just a territorial invasion. So, like, he's just fighting him for a couple of systems. I'm not sure it's actually worth it. PC says, thanks for setting this up, Monrad, and glad to, great to hear from you again, comrade. It is nice to have you back, comrade. It has been too long. Um, and also, thank you for, su for your support, PC. It does really help. So, hats off. Yeah, it's heartwarming to hear that. Thank you. You should stream again, man. You should come back and stream. We've missed you in the community. Anyway, uh, let's see. Actually, Moser is now ramping up the fleet power. He has 30k now, so Popcorn Menace has literally zero chances. And Moser has the Hangar Cruisers. Silas so. got first for Fleet Power and first for Diplo Wait. So Silas is now in fourth. And Acorn, Acorn here, Acorn's Kingdom, again, massive controlled space points. He's got nine points from number of systems. So he's doing very well there with controlled space. Kizzy also is doing well from controlled space. So Kizzy and Acorn are kind of vying for first and second place in controlled space, it looks like. Meanwhile, Momonga went for... Wait, this is such a strange design. Momonga has full laser cruisers with L, M, and S slots. That's interesting. Like, literally full laser fleets. Cruisers. Wait, did oh, he wow. get any points? Did he get any points for fleet? Oh, he finished, I guess. I think he yeah. finished them too late. He got He's... three points from fleet power. He finished third, I guess? Yeah, he must have finished third. Unless he had some points from fleet power earlier, but I'm, I don't think so. Yeah, he, he was sitting so. at zero fleet power, as far as I can recall. And also, it's an important point. Yernsex Yern making a good note here. Why is Momonga going full laser? Well, full laser counters people going full armor, and full armor counters auto cannon spam. So, okay. you know, it's, 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 it's a bit of a tic tac. There's much more variety to the fleet combat now. You know, we don't have a massively established meta. It's still interesting. Um, I've done it some was... testing. I've got videos coming soon. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. But sorry, yeah, go on, come on. It was like rock, paper, skisser, but now it's like in 4D. So you're trying yeah, to counter yeah, exactly. what people are using to counter other people. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's sense. amazing. And uh, Least Fire is fighting somebody. Who are they fighting? Oh, he's he's fighting. Oh, he found a dragon. There's an Ether Drake in the Eurelion system, and he's there's also there's also a Stellarite Devourer. So Least Fire has two Le Leviathans next to him. Interesting. Uh, I'm a little confused. Pax is fighting the Federation. What by himself? He attacked the Federation. With 30k? Of... Oh, wait, that's the Fun Fun. The Fun Fun is oh, part of the... Yeah, he's attacking Fun Fun next to him. Is it a vassal war? Yeah, he's trying to make Fun Fun into a vassal who's next to him. And he's banking on the fact that R won't open borders to the Federation. He's probably made a deal with R. Let's wait, check it out. has just crashed. Oh, God. What? Oh, okay. Well, we're going to pause. We'll have a hot join. We're gonna have a hot joint or a rehost, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, that's we'll be paused for a moment. That gives us time to have a look around. Um, this and let's war, hope no one clicks anything. This war seems to be quite uh, disbalanced one when you're watching one player with 30k attacking the federation with the accumulated fleet power like 300k. 
That's but because of the diplomacy, no one yeah, is like he's was. actually only attacking one player. Fun fun in the corner. I'm a little bit uh, I, in his place. I would be a little bit concerned about R. It's uh, so well. He's not even dodging the tribute or vessel war, right? Because he's still you can still declare the war for tribute if the other party is in the war. But maybe. Well, the Federation can't tribute him. He can tribute them. He's just trying to tribute fun fun only. Yeah, he, right? he's trying to pick the, the fight with the weakest member who was sitting in the corner. Okay. Well, sense. also, he's trying to pick a fight with the member who's next to him. And I think it's fun fun is making a lot of money. Look, look at how much how much energy fun fun is making, I think. No. Oh, well, right now, no. But he used to be making a lot before he lost his star base. And that's the problem oh, with running yeah. a trade value empire. Look how much trade value he's losing. 1,267 trade value because he lost his star base. Oh, what? I guess that was the tribute war, right? This, and this is a tribute war, yeah. Yeah, so, tribute war, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So Pax is going to try and tribute Fun Fun, meaning he'll get 30% of that 1.2k energy. And also, Fun Fun will be knocked out the Federation. I assume that Federation is a trade fed. Yes, yeah, a trade fed. So Fun Fun will go back to the regular trade policy. So Fun Fun will be paying 30% trade value, 30% uh, energy, which will be, you know, somewhere in the region of four or 500 energy credits. That's enough for Pax's entire species to survive on just from one tribute. Yeah, he, he might be doing it to rush it in order to get the additional income for his economy in order to fight R afterwards, because I'm pretty sure yeah. that R will be going for him year 50. R's got a lot of fleets. R does have a lot of fleets. Unless, they're, unless they've got an agreement, you know, unless there's some sort of agreement there. R's currently upgrading his fleets as well. I wonder what into. Let's have a look. I was upgrading fleets into, oh, into more lasers. He's just got all these lasers. He does have proton launcher frigates. They're okay. There's, you know, the proton launchers aren't, the, like, they're still better than most regular weapons. They're just not as good as they used to be. Uh, some of the players are asking because Kissy Spraker dropped and she's trying to get it back online. Uh, do we want to take the 15 minute break now? No, we're going to wait till we're going to wait till um, 2250 because then we'll have a changeover of host. Fair enough. People can uh, take so five minutes while Kissy comes back. Absolutely. But we won't take the break yet. We'll still be taking the 15 minute break in uh, year 50. I'll tell them that. Okay, cool. And that was Jern Sachs, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Big thank you to him. Uh, uh, thank, say thank you in chat because he's been helping me to not only organize this, write the rule set, but also host a, host a bunch of games and uh, police things. So without Jern Sachs, this tournament would not be happening. So uh, let let uh, um, he's also in the actual chat as well. So he'll see your he'll see your messages. Uh, he's he's modding the chat too. I wonder if it's safe for us to actually click on anything, or is it better to just observe the galaxy? Uh, it's the probably better to observe. View? I mean, I think we can. I think is. I think we can click, and it won't do anything. It shouldn't, it's because we're not. We don't do anything to the game. Yeah, basically, we're observers. So exactly. Probably. So I think you can. You can. I mean, other players could still click around and look at things as well, and that's what that's what I'm doing. So uh, you should do it too if you want to. Um, one thing I've noticed, though, that does cause crashes as observer, if you click on the Unity button while you don't have any countries observed, that can cause you to crash. Oh, okay. So make sure that I generally click... If I want to look at the Unity screen, the tradition screen, I go to the left-hand side and click Society Management or press F8 rather than clicking on the Unity button. I, I just noticed as an observer when doing these uh, runs, in doing the um, these preliminary sessions, it sometimes has happened a little bit. I just noticed that Giltanos has two open Ascension perks, but he's not doing anything. I guess he's waiting for the technology. I wonder what technology is that. So he finished Domination, American he did Tower, Voice Prosperity. Born. Okay. I th do you think he might be taking um, Become the Crisis? He has only eight years to go for it. But you know, he has eight oh. years to start it. Oh, yeah, to start it, yes. And, and then... he's making quite a lot of allies. He's making 230 allies as a void. Well, that's quite impressive. He also, though, he also, if you notice, the thing is, though, he's not that high up in the score. He's only he's only at 10th at the moment. So he's going to have to really, like... He, oh, he's got no ships. He's not built any ships. That's the problem. He's lost a lot of score for two rounds from having no ships. David says, Hazar Yerntax, thank you very much for your support, David. Um, uh, super chats and help like that will be, you know, helping to actually 
pay for the prizes today so thank you everybody <laughs> it's very appreciated Alonso is indeed preparing for something he has two star bases star holds full of shipyards so that's like eight shipyard modules he's not and he's not building up. anything though he's just but he's not doing it yeah I think that he's building up star but he's still building up habitats he like he's just built one in Barnard star he's got one in howling vortex oh and he's called it fort so he's building forts look he's building defensive forts to protect his capital I reckon I reckon he might go I reckon he might go for crisis you know I reckon he might try it so in the rules if you pick become the crisis your score goes to zero and you only win if you press the button and destroy the galaxy so it's you know it's difficult to get it to happen but but it but it could work it could There's be good I see one problem though. Uh, if he's going to defend himself with the uh, border habitats, he needs some space to actually blow up stars to get that uh, dark matter in order in order to build the aerophysic engine. Oh, so he basically yes. needs some fleet. He needs to build to somebody expand. else's stars yeah. though. He can blow up some other people's stars. And, and also, as we said, look at how many stars are around him. There's so many stars near him that he's not using. Oh, he has Tianovac not so far away, so that's like a bank of energy and exotic gases. Oh. Right, with you, with you. I see. Oh, I, I just realized. I just realized. Galvanos has thirty-six robots already. Oh, he has been. Uh, he has turned on the assembly of those robots from the very start of the game to have this amount of pops. He's actually sitting at a comfortable one hundred fifty-four. Oh, and obviously he also has Blorok Pops from the Carlson's Empire that he used to colonize the planets around him, I guess. Somebody's asking how it's going with the um, with the Necrophage Empire. In terms of score, they're doing all right. The Neverborn Enclave's at eighth, so that's pretty good. But in terms of uh, e like how they're doing economically and diplomatically, they're, they're in the weaker of the two federations, which is not great. And they lost one of their worlds, that their guaranteed habitables there, um, primitive worlds at the start they've taken it back which is good but you know they should have had it earlier um, but there is a necrophage here in the game uh, the neverborn enclaves yeah that's quite a hit when you're not able to get the guaranteed worlds guaranteed worlds are guaranteed for a reason and that's why he's uh, falling quite hard behind also I just noticed that Lifeus is, is actually is it is it Lifeus? Yes, Lifeus is making close to one point one k of uh, science points per month as a machine oh, empire. Yeah. That's quite a lot actually. And he's running remnants. Oh, he wait, has he's... no minerals. Look at his mineral income. He's at minus one minerals, minus two hundred and thirty energy. He's he's in for a real problem if anyone decides to attack him. He does have twenty k in fleet power. And what are those fleets? They are missiles. Oh, he's got a missile fleet. That's interesting. So he's gone full swarm of missiles. And the thing is, a lot of I've not seen i I've not seen people put pickets on. Very few people, except I think we saw Giltanus, maybe? Or was it Mamot? Somebody had who was it that had the ships with the with the the carrier, the crew the carrier ships? I think I it was Giltanus. Or was it Molza? Yeah, it was Molza. Sorry, it was Molza, yeah. Molza had the carriers. Let's check. Yeah, Mo except except for Molza, no one, I've not seen anyone with Sentinel Point Defense. Oh, Kizzy. No, Kizzy had some thinking about it, didn't she? Let me well, Kizzy's currently AFK, but uh, let's check. The current She's... weapon meta is so interesting. Actually, Lifeus has uh, medium swarm of missiles. <laughs> That's what I was cruisers. saying. Lifeus has got a really interesting build here, and no one is trying to counter missiles, so this could be really powerful because no one's trying to counter it. Those missiles have a very long range, so they could be very good. And um, while we pause, uh, we had a disconnect from one player. They're currently attempting to uh, restart their thing and come back, and as soon as they do, we'll be coming in. I guess this is the, the, the part that I love, that the new meta has not been established yet, that's why players are trying out different stuff, and it's so wild. There's so many different builds we have seen already. Hangar builds, uh, disruptor builds, missile builds, and the good old fashioned. Sorry to interrupt again. Yeah, Kiss's internet is not coming back, unfortunately. Uh, oh, at all? have to go without it. Yeah, her power's oh, back, but her internet's not rebooting. Um... I'm assuming we go without her then. Well, I mean, um, let's give it another couple of minutes and then we, because we are ahead of time by quite a lot. We're ahead okay. of time by 10 minutes at the moment from our schedule. So we, we can give it another five minutes or so. While oh, we, Boris we said that internet is back. Okay, I'll tell her. Give me a second. 
We'll, we'll, we'll give her another five five minutes or so. Yeah, I guess Bo Boris received information that internet's coming back. He's coming back into Solaris. It looks like it's working. She's coming back? It seems like that. I'm just waiting for the hot join request. I'll go back to it. All right, okay, Norris. So, Comrade, just briefly, sorry. Um, the second host who's meant to be coming in, Simus, he's also having an internet outage at the moment. He's meant to be coming in eight years' time. Do you mind sticking around until he's able to join? Oh, is, that, is that all right? Yeah, okay, fine. Absolutely. Fine. We're ahead of the schedule. And it's we are. Like I mean, to be honest, though, we're, the aim is we're trying to get through every uh, every 10 years should be about 30 minutes. Anyone that makes that too slow, we kick for lagging, basically. And, and, and we've been quite merciless with that in the prelims. So we, that's why we're making such good time. So we actually probably should be finished in another roughly two and a half to three hours. Should, should be, the whole tournament should probably be done, we, we expect. Yeah, I have noticed that the game has been running super smooth without any lags or issues. Yeah, that, I guess it's the result of the policy of the kicking anyone who is not able to keep up with the pace of the game. In the prelims, yeah, exactly. So, like, we, we didn't let anyone with lag issues get through, which was both sad because we're missing out on some fun talent, but also, I think, somewhat reasonable. Now, everyone at home, let's hope that people remember to cancel their trade deals, otherwise it will destroy their economies. Um, oh, wait, no, we got Galactic Market. It might be okay. It could be okay. Let's hope that the, the gods of this thing decide to spare us today. Uh, Ban of months. Oh, that's fine. Nice. Wait, Kizzy said no. Huh? Mm. Kizzy forgot to move pops. Oh, Kizzy. she just lost her home world. Did she just lose her home world? Oh, that's a, that's such a derp. No. She, Wait, she... This, this crash was at such an unfortunate time and she crashed the moment when... Oh, okay, yeah. no. So her, pla her home world just exploded. Not Poggle Woggle Uwu just went kabloomy. But she forgot to move the pops. Oh. Yeah. In the end, it looks like not only her, not only her internet connection crashed, but her capital as well. That's She's back though, and it looks like it looks like. Okay, I'm not going to say the D word. No one say the D word. But it looks like the D word isn't the problem at the moment. We've also noticed. That as long as nobody, is, so we've we've noticed this, and 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 so have the devs at, with the Stellaris devs. If you run UI mods and you play multiplayer, UI mods tend to be the reason for a lot of the desyncs. Oh, okay. That's so, in this tournament, we banned UI mods. Basically, the only mod you're meant to run. Oh, I said the D word. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, chat. Yeah, sorry. I just said the D word. Um, the the UI. The UI mod, the only mod we're allowing people to run is the, the scoring mod, which doesn't really cause desyncs because it's a very small mod that doesn't really change any part of the game except for the scoring thing. Is this back to business and she's already moving her uh, fleet somewhere? Oh. She's is, got is she 15k. Going? They're not, I mean, she's got a bunch of late, small blue laser cruisers. This is just. It's just a bit. Sad. I don't know what oh, she's going to do with them. Max is about to fight uh, Fun Fun. They're fighting in the, in the capital system of Fun Fun. Actually, Fun Fun might be able to. Yes, he's actually fighting back. He's deflecting the attack of Pax. Oh, wow. Fun. Pa no, and Fun Fun's just pushed. Where are Pax's ships? Where are Pax's fleets? What is Fun Fun running? That's what I oh, want to know. He's going just curve. Wait, was it just Corvettes? Corvettes Some with disruptors. Ships. It was disruptor Corvettes. Disruptors shred bigger ships. And they have he has very high evasion. So Pax probably had a hard time hitting uh, Pax had a hard time hitting him. Pax was running Pax was running the, the uh, Pax was running the strike craft, but it probably just wasn't enough. The strike he's only got tier one strike craft, so it apparently just wasn't enough. I guess a lot of his ships survived, but maybe his they all survived. Was, yeah, yeah. Oh no, he's only sorry. He's only running corvettes with auto cannons and plasma throwers. Oh no. Well, actually, he has two fleets. He has one fleet of uh, 
cruisers, 15 cruisers, and another fleet of Oh, he of does, combat. sorry. The cruisers okay. just aren't back yet. I see, I see now. Yeah, the cruisers, I guess, the cruisers I guess are still in FTL. Yeah. If it's only for fun, fun against Pax, then fun fun is kind of doomed, but probably. Easy is moving her fleets to help one of the Federation members. Also, Pax is running a deficit of energy. Uh huh. Yeah, that's painful. He's got plenty of alloys, though. He could stop that pretty immediately just by selling some alloys or something. Oh. Follow me for a second. I'll just uh, get back in a couple of minutes. Alrighty, so how else are we doing in the galaxy at large? We have a number of wars at the moment. Silas, who's Silas fighting now? Silas is independent and fighting against Lyphius. And he has, Silas now has uh, Popcorn Madness as a tributary. Okay. Silas left the Federation. Silas left the Federation because uh, the Federation didn't change their subjects can join. They've only just changed can subjects join to no. Okay. Anyone suggest doing a Dwarf Fortress video? Um, well, you know, I wouldn't, I would be interested. I've just, I've just literally, thank you very much to Kiva. Just yesterday I received a key for Dwarf Fortress from Kiva. Um, he was very, very generous and I'm going to use that on Steam to, to have a go at Dwarf Fortress actually. And if it's interesting, I'll bring you, ladies and gentlemen, a video if I if I think of it. Oh my goodness, we just saw a big war go. Is that what? Is the feds. The feds are at war. No. The galaxy is actually on fire. On fire the yes. independents. All of the independents have joined in to fight the big federation. Real humanoid. Uh, Carlson, Molzer, R, and Momonga have all joined together in one big war against oh, the wow. federation. That's so well orchestrated and organized. That's... I think, I think it's a tribute war. Let's see Momonga. Momonga. Momonga has claims on not much. I mean, you can't really claim much yet. Silas has claims on not much. Funnily enough, Kiltanos is at number two in the Observer score. He has just jumped over everyone else. I wonder what is the reason. He doesn't take and become the crisis. He's making, he's making a lot of energy. He's making a lot of unity and a lot of science. He's making 1.2k science and a lot of alloys. It's probably econ score. He has no fleets. He's number two in observer score with no fleets. That's really strong. Hello, Alexander. Welcome. Yeah, Kizzy's in third place because she's strong earlier, but now her build isn't that great. And... 7k of fleets are coming in from the Supreme Liberators, from Stalwart. Sorry, the, the Supreme Liberators. Who's the Supreme Liberators? That is Real Humanoid. Oh, I see. The Real Humanoids, so they've all joined in to like kind of attack the Federation together. And this is the kind of diplomacy we wanted to see. This is beautiful. Um, Real human. What are they claimed though? So the thing is, right, basically no one can claim planets until year 50. So if they, if they if they if the Federation surrender now before year fifty they won't lose any planets. But if they keep fighting, then the people attacking them can then attempt to basically um, to, to come in and uh, to take their planet. So it's basically we're seeing the, 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 this big Federation against every independent player, and that is that you know they they're getting they're getting attacked for having a Federation. This is this is really interesting to see. Um, wow. Are you still? Are you still away, uh, Comrade? Are you back? No, no, no. I'm back, and I'm, oh, okay. I'm just watching the fight between Lyphas yeah. and Silas. It's so beautiful, actually. Cruisers with I'll be right back swarmer well. missiles and with the artillery computers are uh, kiting away. They just kited away against cruisers of Silas. I guess it's he will still be overwhelmed. No, he's he's winning. Oh God, who could have? This is so wild. Full missile, full swarmer missile cruisers actually won against the fleets of life yes, and uh, against the fleets of silas and silas was actually overwhelming or at least 10 to 15k ahead of life yes, but life is still one this new ship designs are so interesting and basically he stopped the offensive yeah life has stopped the offensive of, of life is oh pardon me of silas and 
Silas was so strong that he actually he declared this uh, subsidiary acquisition. Why? It means that he had at least like two times the fleet power of Lafayas at some point, yet he still lost. Maybe it happened due to the fact that uh, they fought in the territory of uh, Lafayas. I wonder what's... Let's check the ship design of Lafayas. Yeah, he's still running. He's still running full swarm of missiles. <gasps> he's also running afterburners. Damn, this is so smart. He has increased the speed of his ships so they can kite back. And he's using artillery computer and he's using long range missiles. This is and he's fighting against the low range uh, weapons of Silas. Is, is Silas still running the same ship design? Let me check it real quick. Uh, Silas changed. Well, he's running medium slots uh, rail guns, but it's still 75 range, uh, plasma 60 range, while swarm of missiles must be 100, I guess. Let's take a look. Sorry, Silas, you're saying? Oh, 120. Yes, Lifeus won the battle against Silas, even though Lifeus had like 15k less, because his ships basically kited. He put two afterburners. And the, the, the auto cannon. Sorry, sorry, the, 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 the artillery. So let's just take. I want to. Oh, what just happened? Kizzy's out of sync. Um, oh, God. I think we'll have to do a rehost. Just a moment. I think we're going to try for real. So I'm just going to jump in and speak to um, uh, Yonsak to be right back wherever he is. Uh, hello. Hello. I think we should. I think let's try for the rehost. Um, do you have. Uh, do you have what do you, the most recent save? I guess you have is from six months ago, right? Um, oh, that's actually one right now. I don't like, think that uh, will work because that was when she did. That was when she. Um... Yeah, I guess we'll try. The, the issue is that right now, half the galaxy at the wall, so six month rehost is still quite big. Yeah. Um, let's try rehosting from right now. Let's try okay. rehost for right now. Yeah, she'll she get one chance. Otherwise, she she will have to lose. Yeah, her exactly, it sucks, but it exactly. Happens. It does. It okay. absolutely it does. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I'll drag everyone into channel cool. one and then uh, tell them. Cool. Ishkei on the battle. Sorry, um, I'm back now. Uh, I was away. I just I just noticed something strange. Uh, Momonka yeah. has five k fleets. I can only see. I guess it's uh, he had a fight and some of the fleets have disengaged. But least fire is in the north. He's literally attacking into Momonka's territory. List fire has brought his his ships all the way down from the. And Momonga's not really got many ships there. He's only got his laser ships, yeah. and Least fire has a lot of stuff. The Psy psychic ascended clone admiral ships. Oh my goodness me, that's nasty. Um, we, I think we're about to take do a rehost for uh for Kiz we're going to attempt one rehost for Kizzy's DC uh for for Kizzy's uh, desync. Otherwise, we'll have to kick D Kizzy basically. Unfortunately, it's just it's just how it is. Um. Uh, let me just see. I can already tell that there is a big benefit of such rules. That is that no one is out. Not yes. a single player is out. Nobody's out yet because no one can be kicked out until year 50. You know, and even then, like, you can't... It's hard to be kicked out at exactly year 50 because someone still has to win the war against you. Basically, at the regular tournaments we have been held in at ISS in the past, year 46, it's like 40-50% of the population is dead. Yeah, 10 and or 12 players at that yeah. point, isn't it? We're just going to take a moment before we jump back in, I suppose. Actually, I will just... Let's see if I can make it look nice. Let's... Boom! We're going back to looking at the lovely background while I uh, fix the... the, uh, the the discontinuity bits here. All right, exit to main menu. You'll need to hot join on as well again. Oh yeah, I'm on my way. Requesting hot join already. It's the same password as last time. Don't don't say it out loud. Actually, to be fair, people would have to have the mod, I guess, to join. But yeah.
I guess to say situations like this is like the exact moments when we wish that uh, Solaris netcode would be a little bit more. Yes, consistent. Solaris netcode can be a yeah. little um, temperamental. Let's put it that way, shall we? It can be very temperamental. I'm transferring save. Fantastic. Are you on the way in as well? Oh, let me check it. Yes, I'm on the way as well. I'm just going to quickly look through what the what the scoring. Actually, no, I'm an observer. I should be able to see all the all the scores. I don't know why. I've, no, I'm just going to click observer mode. Observer mode. Thank you. We may be about to lose Kizzy though. It's just unfortunate. She had a disconnect and then she came back in, which caused a desync. Yeah. Oh, Simus is in chat saying hello. Um, Is this Oscar? <laughs> Can we rehost? I got a bad start. <laughs> it's just such a shame. Kizzy was doing so well. Um, oh, wait. I think that if oh, Simon has already arrived, I guess it's the best time for him to join. Yeah. Uh, so actually, Comrade, are you, at, have you, are you in at the moment? Oh, yep. I just joined. Would you, uh, so I think you might have to leave so that he can join as, as an observer. Will oh, you, yeah, okay. Will you yeah, return yeah, to the main menu? You can look at, you can take a look, because you're not streaming right now, you? So you, can, you can always look from my stream. Yeah, yeah, that's um, what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm leaving right now, too, because I have already, like, entered the lobby. We're about to, we're, yeah, we're, we're out, we'll take the, we'll probably take that 10-minute break now-ish. Um, all right, all right. Have you left the Kajiga? No, you haven't. Not yet. One minute. Let's see if we can bring Simus in. Da, da, da. Let's see. Oh, hello, Simus. You should be here. You should. We should be hearing you. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, I can. Simus, You're yeah. quite quiet. Let me bring you up. Your volume's a little low. Let me just. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking at full volume yet. Ah, uh, you're still low on my end. I brought you up. Oh. That should be better. Okay. Good. Hi. Yeah. Is, am I sounding okay? You sound you sound great. Uh, but Fantastic. let's see. Have you you haven't tried to hot join yet, have you? No. To join in. No, okay, great. Right now. That's fine. Right. That's fine. So I'm just leaving right now, right? Well, but or shall I wait until we finish waiting for players? Uh, you, you might as well stick around. You can st you can still stay here and have a chat for a little bit if you'd like to, comrade. Because comrade's been co-hosting with the first half, and uh, oh yeah, I want to say thank you in chat for comrade's lovely hosting. Now, Simon's gonna be jumping in. Simon, uh, I was going to ask. Do you have any? Can I can I get a little uh, a, a PNG, uh, you know, a, a, an image of your avatar so I can oh, swap yeah. it over? If everyone's in, then I'm gonna unpause. Um, wait, wait, sorry. Well, please, you hold for yeah. a moment. Um, I think we should. We, 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 I think we should actually take the break now. Oh, or because well, basically, I'm thinking that we should swap Simus for comrade. So comrade's gonna leave, and Simus is gonna jump in. Okay. Because we've done the rehost, we might as well I, do I'll this now. I'll still unpause for a few months because. Uh, yes, let's let's yeah. just chest Kizzy out. Good point. Let's do that and then we'll probably take the break in just a moment um let's see let's see how it goes and comrade left i see yeah, yeah. he's left go. We'll, we'll go and then we'll bring simon's in in just yeah. a moment i'll just bring people into the channel and say that we're going to take the break then uh, and yeah we'll, we'll take we'll take a 10 15 minute oh well 10 to 15 minute break now so people can um okay. can, can take can have a bit of food and, and that sort of thing fair enough i'll be uh, i'll go tell them that all right, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Monta, for... Uh, who do you think is going to win? Today. Comrade, who do you think is going to win? Where's, where's your oh, bets? I had... Okay, let me let me think about it. Uh, my First heart, place right now my... in score is Least my... Fire, followed by Fabianski and then Kizzy. And then Silas and Akon. My heart is with the Blork family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> imagine approach. it would be. With with Momonga and with Giltanas, right? But this federation, this federation is scary. I guess it's someone from the big fats. It must be someone from the big fats. And also rooting for Kizun. Her strategy is really well. Like, I if wish she, that if she, she stays able in. to keep. Yeah, <laughs> I wish we'll be able. To, okay, yeah. First, the, the great filter, the D board, and then like being able to keep up with the entirety of the lobby after. Wait, is it? Are we going to rehost before? No, this the, is the rehost. This is the rehost. I mean, uh, it, it has a rehost happened before she lost her capital. Or after, oh, oh no, it's the year forty six. No, no yeah. we we did the rehost from literally. It was the same day. We had a save from the same day she lost the de desync. Oh, it seems to be going oh. okay though. She hasn't desynced yet, so it seems good. Um, All right. 
Simus, do you want to attempt to join hot join in? Oh, thank you as well for sending me. The... Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, by the way, hey comrade, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, I'm Simus just now indeed. getting into the uh, the tournament scene. <laughs> I yeah, know you've been a long time, but I'm... for suggesting me to join, and it was months ago. I'm like, oh yeah, no, no that that'd be awesome, and it's just now that I'm really uh really starting to step into it. So. I'm really glad. You, to, uh, I, I'm glad to talk to you. And I also was really happy when I saw that Monto and you will be casting the rest of the like the, the other part of the tournament. I hope that you're going to have a great time with the players. And they're, they're having so many different strategies and approaches right now. Like I'm really impressed by what players were able to achieve in the first part, and I guess that the next part will be even more interesting. So all right, I guess it's time for me to go for a break and watch it from the perspective of Monto stream. I wish you a nice. Like a nice finishing session. Thank and you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been fantastic. I've also now I've swapped you over. Simus is now next to me, um, with his wild cat face. Yeah. <laughs> see you. See you. <laughs> to clarify, that's not necessarily my cat face. That's my cat's Charlie's face. Okay. When you join in as well, you should be able to select observer as one of the roles. Tell me if you can't, because then we have a different issue. Okay. It, it is transferring saves, so that does mean I was That's one able to see the game and join, so that that is something. Especially with uh, how it is I'm trying to connect today, since I actually have no internet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, as an observer, it shouldn't matter that much. It should be probably okay. We'll, I'm, we'll probably I'm be all right. So. So, so I will be streaming on my end, but if it ends up being too much, like too taxing for the, uh, the hotspot, then I will just stop the stream and just focus on the casting. All right. Um, I don't think I have a link to your stream. Let me just go to Twitch TV. So I can probably grab one. Mute site so it doesn't come up. Uh, Simus. Oh, so when he said, chat said robotic voice lag. Is that from my end? Am I the robotic voice uh, lag? It might be me. It might be me. I don't know. Who knows? Let's ask. Robotic voice. You know, in my chat, someone says that. No, I'm not seeing that. I, Where are you seeing that? I actually, that? <laughs> actually traded phones with my father. I was like, all right, let me use your phone for a hotspot, and you can take my phone for emergencies because he's out plowing the road right now, and it's there's tons of snow. Oh, you got lots of snow as well. That. We've had so much snow in Denmark so at the moment. It's been a nightmare. Snow. We had. We we've had. Like, oh, I, sorry. Oh no. We, oh, I say so much. We've had like two inches or three inches. <laughs> I grew up in the UK though, so like. <laughs> You know, oh, three snowflakes and school is cancelled. Three snowflakes in the oh, UK yeah. and school is cancelled. Well, we have to conserve the salt, the grit for the roads. So, uh, you know, that, that becomes quite you, an you issue. Don't, you don't reserve the salt for the the gamers now? No, 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 no salt. Oh, no, that's gamers. where you get the salt from. Right, got it. Okay. <laughs> are, you, are you able to select an empire yet? Are you in? Uh, it's still transferring save. It's at 7.8%. <laughs> all righty. So, all righty. All righty. Oh, man. All righty. There is no short of this assault. League of Legends provides plenty for the world. Don't worry about it. I think what I might be able to do as well, Simon, if that doesn't work, is mm -hmm. I will share screen on Discord, oh. and you could stream my perspective on Discord. And that would okay. still work. Therefore, you could still I mean, see. I just got. I just got to be careful, with, you know, because if it, so much <laughs> stuff, yeah, too much stuff coming that. in. Yeah, yeah. I gotta. I gotta be careful. Not, you know, I don't want anything that shouldn't be shown on stream to be shown on stream. <laughs> That's a very good point. But yeah, we have like a like a half mile long driveway between. Since I live up in the mountains in the forest, it's it's yeah. a long driveway that we have. We have actually two. One that's for the summer. One that's for the winter. And with like this foot of snow that's been falling, we've been having to plow the road a lot. We just swapped our chains for our truck yesterday. And so you have chains so rather father, than proper snow tires. You don't have the yeah, spiked snow my, tires then. My okay. father is out there right now, and I was really I, like I wanted to use his phone for the hotspot, but I didn't want to leave him without a device to call yeah. for help in case <laughs> yeah, if you know he's stuck happens. out there. Yeah. So I gave yeah. him my phone in this swap test. And he started going out to plow, and I was like, oh God, wait, hold on. I, he has my phone, which is my only means of Discord communication. So if I have to talk <laughs> to you to let you know that You'd something's happening, I'm I, it's like, all right, I guess that was my last message I sent you. But it works, at least so far. Uh, it, I'm at 62% on, on, the, uh, on the transfer. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so good. I was, I was so pumped for today. I'm glad it seems like it's working. I just hope that my hopes aren't crushed. Oh, studded tires are better? Studded tires are good. 
but having chains is, is very important. I also want to mention. Ice. Sorry, I also want to mention. So I just, I just, you mentioned phones. I decided to check my phone while we're waiting here. Um, mm -hmm. I've just noticed I've already had two emails from people saying coming to me since we started the stream saying, "Hey, this this is great. I like Stars Tournament. I'd like to help out and uh, add some sponsorship weight to the next tournament." So it, that that sounds fantastic. Um, so okay, because at the moment the, the the prize pool for this pool is coming from my pocket, and then Paradox have also handed over a couple of Stellaris keys as well, which is really lovely of them. No, oh, the same game transfer is complete. Congratulations! Yes, but, I am in observer mode. Oh, you can collect select it as well. Oh, brilliant! That means you're in. Wonderful. Oh, so uh, as you were saying, let's segue more into that. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes. Chat is enjoying today so much. What can they do and where can they go if they really want to support more or for these types of events? So where can they go? First off, um, super chatting. This would be great. If you're watching this not live, um, putting a, a super thanks in uh, would be fantastic as well. But um, apart from those things, if you want to sponsor the next one, because I'm hoping to host another one of these in... January, actually, so next month, you know, only only in four or five weeks' time, kind of thing. Then uh, send me an, uh, an email. You can find the link to my you find my email address by going to the channel and then going to the about page where you if you click the thing and you're not a bot, you get the email address. If you want to check out Simus's perspective as well, there is a link right there that I've just posted. Um, now, now, this is a tentative thing because, again, since I'm running off of a phone's hotspot in order to get this to come Ah, you'll live. You'll live. To texting. <laughs> oh, man. My my internet, I swear. So it, it, there's... Second time it's this like one of those devices well, that it works fine when it doesn't need to be working fine. And then when you need it to work, it doesn't. <laughs> you know, like, there's always a hiccup or something. Yeah. I don't understand how that happens. So I don't know what it is, but I can't host Stellaris games anymore. There's nothing wrong with the internet. Every time I host Stellaris games at some time around 20, year 20 to 30, um, sorry, host Stellaris games from my proper big desktop work computer. I can host yeah. them from my little laptop at home. That's fine. Oh, laptop's strong as anything. If I try and host them from my computer at my work, well, where I work, because um, I, I have a... I don't have an office, but I, I basically, I work in my father-in-law's, um, oh, we're getting too technical here. Let's not get too into, one <laughs> of personal. my lizard broods um, owned, a, uh, well, he rents an apartment and I, I, I pop there and have a little room. But um, uh, basically, oh, I'm just gonna dox myself so hard if I continue this story. <laughs> Jeez, Lou, I, I, this, get, to the, this, get to the point part, otherwise you're gonna is, get in trouble. Yeah, sorry, yeah, the point is, I'm gonna get in trouble from a lot of people that may or may not exist. Anyway, um, uh, this is why you don't, this is why you don't have a few beers and live stream. I mean, this is the, the, the absolute worst, right? You know, you're um, under the influence right now. You know you shouldn't stream and, you know, drink. You, don't, you, you, know, you right? don't drink and derive, so you shouldn't drink and stream. Um, <laughs> there you go. Well, that's what mathematicians say anyway. Uh, Dan, Dan, sorry, somebody in my chat saying it's those darn Danish anti-Stellaris regulations. <laughs> Quick, Montu, dox Simus to distract us. Unfortunately, I can't dox Simus. Um, I'm an enigma. So, yeah, he's an enigma wrapped in a mystery surrounded no, I, by a I tell I tell personal stories all the time. We have what's called Simus story time. Like, Ooh. For like the first hour of stream <laughs> where... I, I talk about something that was on my mind and it just derails into like past stories like like I still haven't Ooh, told the story I'll, I'll go on for you at the moment, at the moment. Car. oh sorry no sorry say that again you had you did what to a car uh, uh no, nothing nothing that's a you a put story a for pair another time. in a car I threw a pair at a car yeah do, do we do we want to go through this story now well I committed Exclusive a crime once story. and given that Ooh. I given that yeah I got a crime yeah. it's a car related crime was it um, accidental or purposeful it was very purposeful I was so outrageous. I was called a hillbilly and a hick by everyone, but by everyone I know in Denmark. But as a British person, I was like, bloody, f I, 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 I did the right thing here. I it was justice. It was my justice. Basically, long story short, and we've only got the exact specifics, but um, I am part of a car share collective in Denmark. And I, so for that, there are specific spots that are reserved for community owned cars, basically. So like people that share these cars, the cars get special spots, no one else can park it. But I live very close, and I really shouldn't be sharing this. I mean, like if, if, if anybody, 
Yeah, sorry. Oh, um, but you know, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Be careful. No, it's fine. It's, I mean, as long as the Danish government aren't watching, and there's no police. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm about to leave the country in about a week's time, so I should be safe as houses. Um, as long as I get <laughs> well, out then, before what if, then. What if, what if you come back? Well, let's hope they forget about it. Anyway, um, and let's hope the person actually... I don't think the person... The person... The thing is, the crime I committed was so subtle, the person might never have known. But it was still a... Oh. Uh, it, it's a I'm not even sure. Crime is a strong word. Anyway, um, so I got back from a long day at work at the office. Uh, I drove back in my, uh, my... In the community car, and somebody was parked in the community car parking spot. And it wasn't just anybody. It was someone in a very expensive car who obviously went, screw it. I don't care. I'll just pay the fine. I'll just park in this car parking spot I don't, I can't park in, in the city center. Uh, well, not the city center, but like outside the city center, but like closest in, in the, you know. Anyway, um, so, uh, so I then had to park the car somewhere else. I had to drive for three kilometers and then oh, walk geez. three or four kilometers back after like a long day where I didn't get home till like seven. Sorry, I'm an American. What what is that in uh like? That's about know, two feet? miles. I had to walk two and a half freedom feet. <laughs> how, how many washing machines is that? I mean, I'm Ooh. trying to. <laughs> oh, it's thousands. Um, no, but oh, and thousands. I, I, oh my god, that's a long thousands distance. Thousands of washing machines. Um, I had to walk thousands of washing machines in length all the way back. Oh my god. You poor soul. <laughs> I was so upset. I was so upset that I basically made sure that the ventilation system on that car would forever smell a bit terrible. Okay. By, um, and basically, so basically, um, oh my goodness, I really should, okay. So, um, in essence, I, I, I was I was really upset, so I put some smelly substances down, down the ventilation <laughs> system at the front of the car. Just because I was what? just like, there was nothing. No, I had no other. I, I called the police, and they were like, "We're not coming for it until tomorrow," because we don't like. We'll give them a ticket. We don't care. And I, and I was just like so upset with the fact they they didn't care. No one. I did not urinate on the car as well. No, you know, I did not do that. No, I didn't poop on the. No, it was no none of my. I didn't excrete fluids. Crikey. No, I didn't do anything like okay, that. No, it was. I believe that that's what it's on. What was on everybody's no, no, mind. No, 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 no. There was no fecal matter involved. Okay. All right, good. No, nothing like, no, basically, no, I just put some <laughs> smelly things that would smell bad as time went yeah. on down oh. the, um, down, down the, you know, the air filters at the front okay. of the car. Um, and I, uh, but it was a Tesla. It was an expensive Tesla, so they had cameras. And I was paranoid as hell that I would end up on the cameras. So I spent 10 minutes Googling these cameras to work out exactly where they were so I could <laughs> do it in such a way to never appear on the cameras. Like, the, the whole thing type. becomes such, it's such a ridiculous mundane thing that they probably never even noticed because I probably did it wrong. But like, I was so angry and this was the recourse. I didn't want to damage the car. I just... Did somebody say in the chat this is the most Scandinavian crime I've ever to be heard? Very inconvenient. All right, look, rather than basically, like, I put some vent. eggs down the vet, the ventilation system, so that at the time they wouldn't notice anything. But over time, they would they would smell bad, and as the car heated up, they would they would kind of go rotten. Ah, okay, interesting. Well, that story I thought was going to take a very darker turn. No, it wasn't very dark at all, was it? It was very banal. Having said that, if what I did was successful, I ruined that car forever. Because every time they turn on the aircon, they'll just get bad eggs. Like, imagine <laughs> imagine driving a car, and every time you turn oh on the aircon, you just get bad egg smell. Like, old, no, I'm just old imagining eggs. Uh, this, this gentleman or, or woman going to the car shop being like, I don't understand what's going on, but my air conditioning is, like, smelling like eggs. What's going on? And they come back. They're like, "Can you can you come into the office?" It's like, "Well, what's wrong with it? Well, you you need to come in here to see this." And they they arrive and they're oh, like, God. "So, um, I don't know if you did this or someone else did this, but there's eggs in your car." And they're like, "How in the heck did those get in there?" <laughs> the thing is, though, I've I've told this story to a few people I know, and they're like, "You know, this is the stupidest thing ever because they probably had no idea. They probably had no idea at all that you did anything." And they may not even even know that that was the cause. Exactly, they, don't, they won't be able to connect it. Like, how is the justice like, oh, connected? Man, this is a disgruntled employee that did this to <laughs> yeah. me. And they have no idea it was you. The perfect crime. <laughs> All the stupidest crime, I don't know. I was just so angry. I was so unbelievably angry. I spent, I spent, I spent a, a basically almost an hour walking in the cold of winter angry. I mean, I mean, I can understand that where your spot is taken, and then you have to drive the. Oh, so sorry, it's not know, just my spot. Machines. It's a community car spot, and that meant other people, if they wanted to use the car, would have to walk two, three miles to get the car the next day. 
So it's not just me. It was like everyone who else else that wants to use the car. It was just so oh, inconsiderate. I misunderstood what you meant by community car. So that means that anybody can use said car. Exactly. If they're if they're oh. part of the community. So it's like it wasn't my vehicle oh, that I was no. trying to park. It was a shared vehicle. <laughs> And How do they even know where it's parked? Exactly. Well, it's an online app you use to find where oh, it's parked. Oh, so it's, it's like, oh, there's a car over here. I bet you that car is probably in well, the no, same the, spot. So like, you're I'm meant to return the, car. the cars to the point of origin. And if then if someone oh, else no. books that car, they get a text saying, hey, your car's not here. It's in this other place. And then they'd have to walk three miles to the other place. Oh, my God. What wow. hell? All right, we're about to finish the, um, we're about to finish the break. Thank you for those that have stuck around. For those of you that have left, how dare you leave? But no, um, we're about to, we, we lost one. We actually lost a person in the break. Um, so there was a disconnect. So they're going to rejoin again and we'll be all fine. It will be good. Uh, right, you're well, here, Simon, right? Time, I'm going to do my go live on my stream and mm. see if it holds. Let's and see. Then, Let's uh, see if we hold the water. <laughs> the whole, hold the internet water. All right. The game gamer water. Some, something like that. All right. I'll be right back. The person broke before the break did. Would be hilarious if they're one of your subscribers. Yeah. Community car, what kind of first world voodoo is this? <laughs> yeah. So basically the way it works is I pay a fixed fee. So I pay, um, I think I pay like uh, 350 or 400 euros a month. And then I get to use the car or, or cars. There, there's loads of them all over the city of Copenhagen for uh, 120 hours every month. I pay a small fee for how many miles I drive them, like an extra, I think it's like 10 cents a mile, but I don't pay for anything. No insurance, no fuel costs, nothing else. So, um, so yeah, I pay no insurance, no fuel costs, nothing, just this, uh, this kind of a subscription fee to the entire service. No, I don't own a car. And um, I kind of, to be honest, I kind of believe that cars are a bit, um, I, yeah, you know, I, 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 the environmental impact is bad. I'm kind of, I'm environmentally conscious here, okay? And I don't want to destroy the planet for future human generations. I've only been here a bit. Four hundred euros is about four hundred and ten dollars. No, four hundred and twenty dollars. High carbon, yes, this has started. You've missed about two hours. Now, if you're not watching this live, I'm going to put chapters in, so you'll probably skip past this break. Let me know if you do. I no. think we're about to get going. Yeah. Pardon? Yes, I'm going to unpause now. Fantastic. Let's get going. Let's see if everyone survives. Just going to give it a little bit on uh, fat, on slowest. Someone paused. Oh, Sounds go. good. I probably shouldn't watch Simus' stream, but I'm just checking if Simus' is, is stream. He's currently got one viewer. It's me. Um, oh, no, he's got five. He's got a lot of views. Uh, if you want to check out Simus' stream, I'll put it back in the chat as well. But otherwise, now it's Simus and me till the end. These are the people you've got. Oh, we're paused. Why are we paused? Somebody claimed Kizzy's planets. Who claimed Kizzy's planets? We have a potential rule break, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Let's let's attack. Montuwu plays. Don't stop. Don't do. We're not doing that. That's not acceptable. How else are we in? Best federation ever. Yeah, the the, um, the Uwu Federation. Apparently it was named after, you know, your lord and president, Heights Me Montu. Apparently it's named after me, but, you know, there we are. We also have Form Galactic Council on the Senate floor. Only two people are supporting this. Interesting. Now, if you get voted onto the council, you do get five points. We have an illegal claim at the moment going on, so we're fixing that. Hint, 
in the US we have something like free community cars, though the latest, though the last person to drive them goes to jail. That's not. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, can we just get people to stop doing stuff? One minute. Um. Hi, sorry, Monty jumping in. I've just noticed somebody's attempting to propose a peace officer. We're pause. Don't do things, people. Don't do actions. No, that, this is exactly mm. why we paused, though. We're yeah, there, there's a, an illegal yeah. claim. So uh, one of the feds want to surrender, but there was an illegal claim. So they'll ah. surrender and then trade the illegal claim back to Kissy. Immediately. Okay, yes. sure, My apologies. sure. Yes, it will be as immediate as possible. Yeah, uh, so we'll unpause. We'll stay on slowest until... Sorry, is this the big war the... against the fed? It's not the fed yeah, itself. Yes. It's the... Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. such a shame. <laughs> I mean, sorry, no, so, so the Big Fed want to surrender, just to clarify. Yeah. The Big Fed want to surrender, but they don't want to lose their planets. Correct. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So you need to, yeah, okay, I understand now what's going on. Yeah, cool, that sounds good. I'll run away again. Yep, we'll unpause and slowest, and then uh, let me know when you've done the trade and the, sur the surrender, okay? Yeah, I surrendered, but I'm not sure who needs to vote Easy. in the Federation. Easy. Yeah? Uh, will you be as a loyal subject? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. That is a lie. <laughs> Do not trust her. What? Oh, no, 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 no. I will trust Kizzy because it's true. <laughs> well, where is the peace in this? Case? Yeah, as long as as long as you help me uh, get a top uh, position. Uh, we're like... looking for Acorn's kingdom to also agree. That's the last person waiting on. Okay. There it is. And you, you do see, the trade now. This is what happens when you tell people you don't want them in the feds. Oh, so Kizzy got knocked out of the Fed, is now a subsidiary under Momonga. Interesting. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. I'll run away again, though. Uh, let's move down again. Wait. Let me drag... Where's Silas? Oh, Silas, uh, Silas is back here. Fantastic. Yeah, no, I, saw, I, I unmuted and I was like, oh, wait, Bantu's gone. Ah, sorry. I've been there. <laughs> we, I was fine. So something just happened. So basically, Kizzy just got made into a vassal. She is currently in third place by score, but she's now a vassal of Momonga, who is in uh, who's in fifth place by score. And there was that mass. So, oh my goodness, a lot to bring you up to speed on, right? So there's a bit. If you look oh, at yeah, the galaxy, we were supposed to do that throughout the entire break. Sorry, we yeah, I forgot. No, I stories. forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, totally, totally on it. Totally not stupid here and like losing my mind. Um, but <clears throat> okay, so how's it going? Um, there's a big federation here. That's the kind of purple and yellow fed. Uh, they did have Kizzy in them as well, who's on the right hand side. The no one expects the Roach Inquisition. Um, that's Kizzy. <laughs> she was part okay. of the federation. There were six people. Now they were at war with a conglomerate, not a federation, but basically five other players joined up to attack this massive political grouping. And one of them made Kizzy into a vassal, but there was a minor rule break where they accidentally claimed a, uh, a system with inhabited planets. And that is illegal until year 50. We, we've got a relatively small rule they set. They broke galactic law. They so what broke was the recompense? Gold. The recompense was that the war had to end uh, or at least, sorry, Kizzy's Federation wanted to surrender, but they, they wanted to end the war, but they couldn't do that and give up their planet. So they surrendered, and then the planets were traded back, so there was no harm, no foul, basically. Okay. All right, no harm, no foul, I suppose. No, no slaps on the wrist. Uh, yeah, I mean, so if, if, an accident, right? if we can't take it back, then, then, th then we start deducting points. The GM can deduct between 10 and 30% of people's scores for every rule break. Oh, 10 to 30 percent of their overall score exactly for every rule break and that Jeez. probably will stop you being on the podium so and repeated rule breaks and you'll be you'll be knocked out of the game and be banned basically so hmm. um so there are a lot of wars going on if right you click select an empire you'll see the main thing is we've got this mod running which changes the way score works so if you go click select an empire and then go to the victory screen you'll see that it looks entirely different to the normal victory screen in stellaris oh interesting basically how does this breakdown work well there's two types of scores there's uh there's interval scoring and that is what the first score breakdown part is you select kizzy so the third place you'll see this is the best example here so kizzy has score breakdown a bunch of things with either plus zero or plus some points each of those categories every 20 years the players get ranked and the top five places get some points. Number one gets five points, and number five gets one points, and it's in descending order, so five, four, three, two, one. Everyone else below fifth place gets nothing for those categories, and that's every 20 years. Below that, we also have some milestones. So every time you win a war, every time you pass a piece of galactic legislation, 
every time that you end up on the Galactic Council. Also, later on, every world that you crack gives you points. Oh. So colossal end, vehicles are allowed then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, every, become the crisis is allowed. There is nothing off limits. Except we have so interesting in the rules. If you take become the crisis, which you have to take before year 50, but if you take become the crisis, then your score is zero for the rest of the game. However, if you complete the Ethrophasic Engine, you win outright. Oh, so either they have to completely win, or, or they don't or win they anything. lose. Exactly. So it's They're a either first or last. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I see. But, and they have to claim it before year fifty. But do the other players know that that's not necessarily so far? It. So let me just check. So far, no one has taken become the crisis. Like, let me just check this. It's going through all the players. There are several players that have multiple Ascension perks free Open. from choosing. Yet. Yeah, I think they're waiting for a couple of years and they might take it at year 50. I mainly I mainly think maybe Giltanus might take it or Momonga. That's that's who I'm thinking. Oh, Matthias says, thanks, comrade. Great hearing you again. And Simus, casually speaking, is an amazing narrator voice all the time. Ta uh, taking over is great as well. Yeah, I mean, your narrator voice is fantastic. You know, I some really people like my that. voice, but you kind of, you blow me out the water, sir. I, I can't lie. <laughs> So voice is nice, but personality is important, right? They yeah, and everyone loves someone are, that attacks people, other voice. people's cars with eggs, right? A car yeah. eggers are just the best. And I still have to tell about that pair being. Oh yeah, the pair. Car. Tell me the pair story. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, <laughs> when I was when I was very young. Very oh, we got another war. Sorry, we got another. Oh no, no, same war, same war. No, sorry, I, I thought we had another war. I'm, oh no, we I'm do have another a look war at the moment. Right the now, the Monger and real humanoid are at war. So first place and second place? No, sorry, Lyphius and Ar. Well, there's a lot of wars going on right now. Goodness gracious me. There are a lot of wars and there are a lot of people that are currently in near zero or negative like resources. And I'm wondering how in the world they're gonna get out of this. I myself have never done a PvP Stellaris style. I played a lot of Stellaris, but it's always, you know, humans versus AIs. And this is really interesting to see humans versus humans because anytime you use strategy versus an AI, they're predictable. But humans come well, up with new and intuitive strategies. To kill each other, right? Before. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, Watching it's humans go in new ways of killing other that's humans true. is what I humans live for. Humans always come up with new ways to kill each other. That's true. <laughs> what you want to look through no right now. In Stellaris. Take a look through the different fleet designs. So there is a massive discrepancy, a massive difference in the designs being run by different players. Now, I have done some testing. I I think I know quite a bit about the current kind of state of what's good, what's bad. Some people, like for instance, Lyphius has really interesting, interesting ships. He has ships with uh, tier four missiles, tier one swarm missiles that also have artillery computers. And, and lots of lots of extra afterburners. So they're very quick and they will try to stay out of range of the enemy. So if you attack them, they'll continually back away from you while shooting missile after missile at you. And if you don't have any point defense, you will be screwed. And we see, we've already seen Lyphius fight another player and defeat a fleet twice the size. He's actually about to fight somebody, it looks like in the Gothra system. No, they're running away. He's following them. Although, okay, so although you are right about that for the missiles and the point defense system, you have to keep in mind though that with missiles, you can end up firing ten missiles at the target, and the first five will destroy it, but the next five that you fired don't do anything. That's wasted. Well, like uh, nowadays, so, so there has been a change because the missiles now have a retargeting range. So if you oh, shoot really? a missile, yeah. So if you shoot a missile and the target dies, it finds another target within a hundred space units. And it attacks them instead. When was this added? Because this changed. This was actually my added. This was actually entirely. added. This was added in I think like two point eight or something. Oh god, it's been so long. <laughs> um, but missiles were still crap in two point eight, so I would understand why you still wouldn't know because they were still terrible. However, nice. okay, here we go. If, are you in the? Are you? Are you looking at a life? Yes, he's about to jump in the Panua system. Yes, yes, yes. Watch yes. him attack. Uh, watch him attack our sixteen k fleet here. If he gets there, I don't yeah. think he's going to get there on time. I think it'll be the next system. Yeah, and he, so he's going to have to take the star system. base because the star oh, base. But there's going to be two inhibitor. fleets in here now versus his two fleets. And Ooh. if they are, if they're Ooh. right on top of one another, if he waits at that jump point, he should have a good like chance of actually taking them out. And they yeah. will have to back off. Let's take a look though. Um, ours, I think is ours fleets, and I hate to say this, ours fleets are old-fashioned. 
He's running a lot of, he's running lasers and kinetic mix. And it's a very, it's, it's old fashioned. It's not, it's not modern anymore. Whereas well, they've jumped, are they about to jump in? Arth waiting. Oh no, he's jumping. Yeah. He's oh, being aggressive. He's jumping. He's, okay, let's see how this goes. Cause I actually, I reckon, I reckon these missiles, these missiles are going to take the day. Let's watch. Cause they're going to jump in. Then they're going to back off. So watch them. No, they're going to fire. No, he shouldn't be at range. Oh, and now they're running no. away. Look at them move away. They're too fast. Yeah, they're too I fast. They can barely attack. They can barely be hit. And that is going to completely shred his opponent here. Yes, look at this. It's those ships. Those ships are backing off really far. Look at them very far away. Absolutely oh, no. destroying R. Absolutely, he's the barely only thing lost he anything. Had going for him was that half his fleet managed to actually disengage from the battle, but the others just yep. got destroyed. Uh, so, 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 the new fleet meta is so wildly different to anything we've seen before. It's really interesting to see the players that know what's going on versus those players who kind of don't know what's going on. Uh, let's. What other was Silas? Who's Silas fighting? Silas is fighting. Um, where is Silas? Uh, Silas is here fighting his neighbor. Okay. Silas's fleets are so auto cannons are auto cannons basically bloat your fleet power, so your fleet power looks a lot higher than it really is in essence. If you're running lots of auto cannons, hmm. So it's more of like a like a bluff, and uh, without them being it, able to well, see it, exactly what's their this vessels are. It's partly with. a bluff, but also because you've got higher fleet power, that gives you more diplomatic weight. So having more Diplo weight gives you more score because we rank Diplo weight as one of the things here. So, you know, it, uh, having higher number bloat can be good kind of in a, like, I'm puffing up my chest. Look how strong I am. Mm -hmm. But if anyone tries to fight you, and especially if they run any, any armor, they'll suddenly find that you, you are a paper tiger. So, uh, Chad has a question. When this tournament first started, did everybody get to pick and customize their, their races, or was it randomly chosen for them? Everyone got to pick and customize their races, and we basically um, haven't banned anything. So we have clone armies that are ascending wow. in the game. Like, clone we've allowed clone army ascending. Banned. It is, it is. We've not banned anything because there is no team limit, and the, the way the score is handed out is not necessarily based on just killing everybody. There's also this graduated war system. So even if you're ahead at year 30, oh, we're now at year 50. So people can now make claims against others and take their planets. Let's look if, if any players also, have done that. And uh, they decide to go with the... Uh the crisis ascension perk which i am currently no that's right they no longer can higher. everyone should have well, taken it by chosen now chosen it before the change exactly and let me just check i don't think anyone is going crisis i'm just running down to check yes i'm no, just gonna I wonder if they're not doing that what are they saving them for are they saving them for mega structures do you usually see mega structures in tournaments like this i would not i mean we really normally we don't before the year 100 well, normally we don't, but in this, because we award, you not only get a milestone, so you get points for completing a, a mega structure, but also every 20 years, whoever has the most controlled mega structures, as long as they're past the, the, the first stage, sorry, as long as they're at the first stage or beyond, so they're not a mega structure site, you, they count towards the number of controlled megas you have. And so you can get a lot of points late game, year 80 and year 100, if you can make one or two like starting mega structures. You don't even have to complete them, just start them off. However, if someone goes to war with you, they could steal them and they would get your points. So it's, it's a bit of a gamble. Oh, sorry, you know, I need to confer with you'll... one of the judges. I'll be right back. Bear with me just a moment. Okay.
All right, all right. So everyone has now been reminded that no one can now take the crisis perk. So, so that's uh -huh. off the table. And I was hoping someone would try it. I thought it'd be really fun. But yeah, no, they can't. I'm, I'm currently looking at the Northern Empire, uh, Gangster's Paradise. Gilthanis declared a war and currently has no ships at all, no fleet. They are the aggressors in it, and yet they have no fleet power. I don't know if they've lost all of it, but I'm looking at their fleet manager, and it currently has no fleets listed. Only just now did they start making a fleet, so I don't know what happened there. But uh, that, that seems like a either a, a, a misplay, or there's some backroom dealings going on. I'm not sure what's happening there. What is this war for, exactly? Momonga's war, is that what you're talking about? Uh, Sorry, which war are you talking the about? The Gangster Paradise, uh, Gilthanis, up in the very far north. Yeah. He's at war with oh, someone. Hold on. Oh, he's a, no, he's in a defensive war. Yeah, it yeah. It is... Uh, wait a minute, what? No, no, he declared the war. No, he's in a defensive war, it says. That's weird. Why did it show up that... Fabianski okay, that, declared war odd. against him. That, so the, the Federation is attempting to make Giltanus, uh, okay. and they're, they're doing okay. it. My goodness, they've taken all of his worlds. Giltanus is going to be a vassal. Yeah. Oh my yeah, goodness he, me. He's going to have to. But also, they've claimed his systems. Look, they've me. claimed his systems. It's now past year 50, so they can claim his systems, and they've done so. If you look at the claims from Fabianski, Fabianski has claimed all of his core systems. They're just going to take him out. Well... That's unfortunate for him, but that means that, he that, yeah. either have to be That's a legal. under someone else or be kicked out of the game. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Fabianski now is in, he's going to end up, he might end up very strongly in first place. He's doing well with tech. He's making 1.8K in research every month. He's making almost 300 alloys a month. Lots of minerals. You know, this it, is going well for, for him. And it's only a small federation of three members, but... They're three good members, you know? It's it's going good for them. <laughs> <laughs> three good members. They're all friends. Let's see here. There is a tiny empire the very far south called the Human Pacifiers with a question mark. <coughs> what, what's their story? The Human Pacifiers, that's Momongus. So he was a criminal. He's a criminal syndicate. He and Giltanus were in something of an alliance. He kept setting up criminal branches on Giltanus' worlds, and Giltanus didn't shut them down, which meant that he was making lots of... If you look at him, if you go to Momonga's um, outline, if the outliner, you'll see that he's making about 1.5k oh, yeah. in energy from he's criminal branch offices. Right huh? He's he's maxed, and he's making energy. 1k a month. He's making 1.5k additional per month. He's not even oh, spending it. He should be buying minerals or alloys or something. He's also getting subject taxes. Who is his subject? Uh, his subject is uh, Kizzy. Kizzy became his subject to the north. Really interesting. Okay. Wow, so not only was he given free reign to build all this criminal enterprise, but then he also has a vassal on top of that. It looks like he's in a very good spot to uh, maybe be like a, uh, like a sneaky first place. Wars right now, uh, so I'm just trying to hold it out. That's why we are Sorry, what's happened in the wars? So apparently they attacked, two people attacked Lifeus. He, yep. he got released and then they attacked again. So, Sorry, two people attacked Lifeus. He surrendered to who? Yeah, I think it's because they're trying to get as many wars as possible against him. So different people. Oh, they released him. Wars. They yeah. released him. He got a subject, he got released, and then they're attacking. I think that would break the fair play, fair play rules here. Yeah, that, it we're seems not like they're trying point to get farming. around. Yeah, that's not the intention here. Please stop them. Um,. Yeah, I'll look into it. It's going to take a minute or two. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I mean, there's a lot on the oh, line here, so obviously we have to be careful bullied. with the rules. He is getting bullied, but also what's happening, so we have a big host of fair player rules. In essence, point farming, from, from uh, griefing and point farming, which is both of what we, 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 we're seeing here with life is. So what's happened is somebody's attacked him to make him a vassal, and then they've immediately released him, and someone else has attacked him straight away afterwards. Hmm. So, so you get a point whenever you make someone a vassal versus oh, whenever, no, whenever you win a, a war. Every time you win a war, you get points. Oh. Having a vassal doesn't actually give you any points. What it does do is it gives you more economy. You know, you get more, you get tribute from them and that sort of stuff. So it gives you points in other ways without directly giving you points because your economy will get bigger. Therefore, you can have a bigger fleet. You can have more technology. You know, so um, 
we don't directly give points for being giving making someone a vassal because they get points in another way. I see. Okay. So but what in they're essence, trying to do is they're, they're trying to they're, farm points going from for the winning wars. War, get a point and then release him so then they could do yet another vassal war. Yeah, because so someone else can points. do so like one of their neighbors but can what do about the peace? War. What about the peace period? Don't they have the peace period? Oh, it, it's done now. Year 52. Oh, so, yeah, so someone else is doing the war. Sorry, someone else is doing the war. Okay. Um, well, that's that's not necessarily against the rules, is it? Well, if, it's if griefing. Because you, you, you shouldn't be making... So if they wanted to do I, that, I they should do a claim war. I think it was a misunderstanding. Um, ah, okay. Two people attacked him. He surrendered to one of them. That guy released him, and then Ark took up his war again. So, like, well, Ark wanted to uh, continue the war he had before. Uh, life has surrendered to someone else. So in theory, Why did the, the person who surrendered release him, though? That's the important question here. Uh, because he made a deal with Ark, is what I want to get. That Ark wanted to conquer, but the other guy wanted to win his war first. Ah, oh, then in I, that case, that's, that's not a problem. I mean, if R has, oh, so I'm saying R has claims, that's fair. Yeah, no problem. That yeah. sounds fair then. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't that's, seem like teaming or, that, that, uh, farming. No, or, or farming. Yeah, that's fine then. That's fine. Yeah. Sounds I'll good. Leave you again. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us, Zach. Arath has uh, amassed yet another fleet, even though he lost, like, all of his fleets in that one engagement with the missile uh, boats. He's, yeah, he's got a lot of Man, fleets again, 54k. Really he's got a lot, he, he, he spent all of his alloys, though. He's making 230 a month, and he spent them all. He's in a fight again at Dalfa Glom. Let's see if he can win it. I think he's got more ships. He should easily win this. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, poor Lifeus. Lifeus now as well is fighting for his, his life because R has claimed all of his all of his planetary systems. So if Lifeus so, loses, he's out the game completely. Hmm. Well, he's out of the game completely, but does he still retain his score? If you have, if your empire is destroyed, you don't retain any score. As long as you have one oh. planet left, you still keep your score. So as long okay. as you can make like becoming a vassal is really good if you keep your because you can keep your score basically. You know, becoming a vassal mm -hmm. isn't necessarily bad for, for you. Um, then you're not out of the game, yeah. Exactly. Boris, somebody, somebody in the game has changed his name to... Oh, I, I saw this earlier, but he's changed his name to Uwu, Notice Me Senpai Montu. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've noticed that Arath also has chosen the Ascension perk for an Arcology project, but does not have an Arcology project active. He's not. He hasn't been trying to go for that yet. I imagine. Oh, I imagine he will, though... He has his capital. He's got the Arcology project going on his capital. Look. Oh, no, sure enough. Yes, he does. You're right. And for, for um, he, he Normally is Normally I play as hive mind, so I'm not used to seeing the Arcology project He's a rogue running. servitor, <laughs> and for rogue servitors, Arcologies are so overpowered because you get the organic oh, yeah. sanctuary, you stack a load of biopops, and then you get a massive bonus, like plus 100% output from, uh, from uh, higher up jobs, from the biopop uh, job, the, man uh, the biotrophy job. Because each biotrophy gives you plus 1% complex drone output. So if you have, say, 50 or 100 of these on the planet, you get an extra 50 to 100% extra output. It's really nice. I wonder, what are the players' precursors they have? I'm wondering I, who has the Cybrex, specifically. I, so, so far, looking through, we've got Voltaeum. In top place, Yut. Oh, Momonga has the Eater of Worlds. That's really good for him. Oh my goodness me. So Momonga has plus 7% ship fire rate. He's going to get another 8%. So he'll be at 15% soon. He obviously has all the psionic bonuses to fire as well and all of that sort of stuff. He's fleet expansion, which is really good. So his ships are cheaper and they build faster. Um, yeah, Momonga's doing really good in terms of raw numbers he's the human pacifier is down the south corner he's only got a few worlds he has grabbed the matter decompressor there's a ruined uh, mega structure in his space he's doing zero point reactor now so and he has star fortresses he needs citadels and then he can start rolling for mega structure technology maybe in only 10 years time he'll have that so by year 80 he might have actually finished repairing the matter decompressor and that'll give him 2000 minerals a month which is insane that that is insane especially you know if you're in, <laughs> before year 2300 getting getting the ability to make and or even repair mega structures before 2300 is quite a feat uh you really have to get lucky for the most part in order one have one spawn near you and two have the technology to show up 
there are some ways to weight it towards your favor, but you still have to rely somewhat on luck, not just skill. And there's a lot of technology you need to finish beforehand as well. You can't just yes. hope. Um, so the, the other one note to hear is that we're playing on 0 0.75 tech, so everything is oh. slightly faster. So okay. what you would think of as year 2300, that it would take you only 75 years to accomplish the same thing in game. Mm -hmm. So we should okay. see we should see mega engineering start popping up for players around year 60 to 70 especially i mean some of these players are like if you take a look at um fabianski he's almost pulling in 2k research a month Two thousand a month already yes and at point two uh seven five that's a lot of technology that you can get through. yes he has he has mega cannons he has neutron launchers he has battleships He's got kinetic artillery. He has psionic theory. Oh, you name it, he's probably got it. Right oh, now. another one. Who's fighting now? Sorry, which one was it? I missed that. Uh, that would be the Momonga had been uh, requested to join into a new war with the Highlight Punitive Expedition. <gasps> against the Fabianski. So this is against Fabianski, who has that massive tech lead. That's the so the Northern Federation, this kind of triple alliance here in the North. They're now being attacked by momonga and r and molza and and kizzy and carlson and silas so that grouping there's all these people who are joining wars together they're not in the same federation they're all independent but they keep joining the same wars what's really interesting though is if, an, if someone else decides to attack them they can attack them one by one so this this grouping of players do have to continually be on the aggressive otherwise they'll be fighting one player versus say four or five hmm interesting but that also means that they are individual wars so they may aid each other but if one person gets pieced out then no in this sorry in this they case won't be able to they've, aid. they've joined they've they there it's a single war because so these four or five independent players have agreed the because there's a mechanic in game where you can like uh, invite someone else to join the same war and they've all agreed to join this war it's the if you go to the war screen if you click on Momonga, go to the bottom the one the one on the left which is one percent by one percent you'll see that there is a invite there's like a a trade agreement icon oh next to a bunch of players. to war i see exactly so they've been invited to join the war those four other so players. they are all a part of the same war it's not that okay i've been declared war on everybody else declared exactly the no, no. The so they're all in the same war except if someone else, if someone other people were to attack any of those individuals, they could attack them by themselves. Oh. I okay. mean, they do have because some guaranteed Because they're not in a defensive alliance, they are invited into one. So, no, yeah. exactly. They do they have some guaranteed independence. Looking through it, they have, uh, so they've made some independence guarantees between them. But that's only a few, that's like, that's not very many. So you'll only get one or two people joining the wars to defend them. But independence is only if somebody's trying to vassalize or take a world. You could still do other actions to punish them without getting called into a war. Um, independence, independence should bring in anyone else that's attempting to attack, I think. I might be wrong there, but I think so. If you look on right now, the entire galaxy is at war. There is only a single player, two players who are not at war right now at year 56. <laughs> And this is part of the rule set. This is why it's... Oh, Galactic Council is passing in 30 days. Oh, it's just passed. Sorry, it's passed. 70 days till the election. So we're going to see, probably, Momonga, who never joins Galactic Community, Fun Fun, and Silas, unless the others can raise their Diplo weight, will be elected to the Galactic Council. And being a member of the Galactic Council just gives you five points. Straight up. You just get five points for making it there. Just making it there? Being, so, so being elected to the Galactic Council is a big deal. That means you are one of the three most powerful empires in the galaxy, and therefore you get five points. Here we go. They've and just the joined. election is completed, and we now the fun, scores fun, are different. Least fire and Silas that have now been chosen as part yeah. of the council, and now the score. If you go back to, if you go to click on one of the players and go to victory screen, we now have a different set of players in first to fifth place. So first place is still Least fire, followed by Silas, then Fabianski, fourth Kizzy, and in fifth place, I think it's Acorn. No, Fun Fun is higher than Acorn, so it is Fun Fun. So the tiebreaker for score is uh, Observer Score, whoever's higher is there. Hmm. You also get more points as well if you can um, 
if you can become the custodian. Custodian is worth 10 points. And if you can form the Galactic Empire, you get a whopping 20 points. However, that is so difficult because you know you have to make the rest of the galaxy. Nobody's gonna want you agree. to do that. Everybody's gonna no, be exactly. working against you. Even your it own allies are gonna do it because you exactly. may be allied now, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're allied for the whole game. Exactly, exactly. And we've seen alliances shift. We we have seen alliances shift and change. Silas was in. So Silas Spice Salads, who's now in, he's now in uh, second place. He was part of the big federation, the Uwu Federation. He left after vassalizing uh, Popcorn Madness. There's a lot of fighting going on here. It's almost too much to see. So, Momonga. Who's Momonga fighting? There's these two wars. There's, Carlson's there's so doing so much going on with all these players. Yeah. R at the moment is in three separate wars. He's at war with the the Northeast Federation. He's also at war with Lifeus. And he's at war with Autocracy of Ueron Prime. Who's that? Oh, we've got a player. Oh, we've got a player rebel. Lifeus has a rebel. rebel where? So inside of sorry, uh, sorry, one of the players has had a rebellion. Lifeus has the autocracy yeah. of Ueron Prime inside a space that rebelled against him, and they're now trying to fight to kill him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know uh, that 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 rebel has fifteen k yeah. of fleets. So they're they're not they're not they're not a paper tiger. They have some actual weight behind them, and all of their fleets are Lifeus's designs. So they've, they've got good fleets here. They, you know, they, they don't have bad ships. Oh, jeez. It's, uh, it's a real cluster monkey at the moment. Although, as of right now, Mifey is currently on the, on the board right now, has zero fleet power. Does he? Oh, no, he's got zero fleet that... power and hardly any... Hard, he's, he's about to be eliminated, though, I he, think. He, he's going to get killed. Happening. Yeah. Has he got any armies on his worlds? He has a lot of armies. He's got 95 garrison. He his his economy is doing really badly though. He has a shortage of unity. Oh no! So if you look at Lifeus, he has minus 22 unity from leaders, but he's only making three unity per month. So he's in a constant <sighs> unity deficit, giving him minus 20 stability. He is so screwed. He is very screwed. I'm fairly certain that this. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. He he has only his time is running out. Basically, yeah, I can't see him. So he's at the bottom. He's at the bottom of the observer. He's gonna have score. to have another player intervention in order to help him out. Of I this. don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna come. People are gonna be looking after themselves. I don't see it happening. Hmm. The only reason why somebody else would want to help him is so then they could get more points from him later, or they or might be able to get a guarantee stop, from him to help him. Or stopping R getting points. That would be the other thing. If, you know, you would intervene to stop R taking at him out, and therefore hopefully stop R getting some points. But I mean, there's just so many players fighting around. Let's go to Diplo map mode. So, oh, so with this work. AI, is it theoretically possible that the AI could win this whole thing? No, AIs we, in the rules, AIs have zero points by definition in the rules. <laughs> Unfortunately okay. for the AI. All right. Also, they're currently in last place with zero points at rank 22. So I don't see it happening. Ooh. Yeah, they they already have one world that has been taken over. They have another world that is being bombarded, and their home world is being occupied. This we have some big fleets at the moment, though. Momonga has 120,000. Silas has 120,000. Leastfire has, a, in the top right corner, has 130,000 in fleet power. That and he's about to jump power. through to Silas's space. Is he at war with Silas? No, he's at war with the Hive. He's at war with Molza. Okay. Hmm. I think that I think that the Uwu Federation are about to declare war on Silas. I think they're about to go to war with Silas right now. As of right now, I see Momonga is currently trying to aid his uh, vassal, Kizzy. Because Kizzy, I believe, it has been completely Entirely taken occupied over. by the yeah. real humanoid. Where what Has the real humanoid got any claims, though? I don't know, but the real humanoid... They're, the real humanoid they're does have some claims on Kizzy's planets. Dangerous. And they have, they have quite a few claims on those planets. They only have 40k fleet power, but Kizzy is being shafted, basically. There's, Kizzy's not managing. She's only got 6k fleet power. She's She has some tech weight now, but it's not helpful that yeah, much. Yeah, Momonga dragged his vassal into this war, and the vassal's the one who's getting slapped out of all of this. Yeah. Kizzy's yeah, not that's... having a good time being in between this these two Looking... uh, warring empires. The problem is, so Kizzy... 
So Momonga attacked with uh, with the or, with the oppressive vassalization policy. So Kizzy has to join every war Momonga is in, and that's just oh, tough geez. for Kizzy. That is that is very tough. I'm sure Kizzy might be able to try to maybe do secret fealty or something on the sword so, and be like, "Hey, if I, I don't while attack, she's at bother war, you." While she's at war, she can't declare an independence war. Momonga has to make peace before she can actually escape, which does make it somewhat difficult. But True, but she couldn't make a backroom deal with the other player to say, hey, if you don't blow up my stuff, yeah, I'll be able to be yeah. strong enough to join you. Yeah, yeah. Or at least I'll stay out of your way from, you know, my overlord, you know, trying to take you over. Well, I'm looking at the power difference between... Uh, the real humanoid and Momonga. And I have to say that Momonga definitely has way more power to deal with this war, but currently he's losing because he either wasn't there in time or wasn't prepared for the war. But with with how uh, with how the real humanoid has taken over his vassal completely, I'm pretty sure that now Momonga is not getting the tithe he was once getting. Not that he really needed it. He's still making a ridiculous amount of resources. Well, he's, no, he's still tithe. getting the tithe. He's still getting 683 subject taxes. But Kizzy, Kizzy is struggling. Kizzy is just making five energy credits right now. But that's that's only that's net, right? Her gross energy. If you could yes. hover over, she's still making 50, uh, 1,500, and he gets 45% of whatever she produces. Momonga does not care about how, like, Momonga doesn't care about her upkeep. He just gets 45% of however much she makes, which is prohibitive That's true, but for Kizzy. Kizzy's not in a good spot. Not only is no. she being harassed and her planets are being besieged, but she's not in a good spot in order to get back out of this game and even become independent if she wanted to. Let's take a look at all of the players and their ascension perks. Now that year 50 has passed. Oh, we're about to hit I'm year 60. Wondering... We're about to hit the next scoring round in about two months. And then then, uh, then we'll have some more information on how people are doing. Let's see here. Acorn has chosen Galactic Force Projection. But really? has next to no fleet they they have 280 capacity and are only wow. using 57 of it currently they have they, they have 55 thousand alloys what they are have they more doing than enough alloys they're not building they're not using anything them. what they're not even building right now they haven't even got shipyards they, they, they're they're they're, they're, shit. they're not even what is what are they do what are they doing they have one I, or two shipyards what know. is happening why they are in plan? a war right now they're in a defensive war against Hive Mulzer. They're they're There's gonna no win way that. they're going to lose that, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, they're going to win that war. I can't see what? Hive beating How? them. What is he, he's trying to do? What? Why is he doing what he's doing? Is We've had the score come in. We, ne we now know the position. So, first place right now is Leasefire with 38 points. Silas with 36. Fabianski with 30. So that means th this northern corner of the galaxy is where a lot of the points are. Leasefire here and Fabianski have a lot of points. Uh, Kizzy is still in fourth with 25 and fifth actually wait a minute no fourth place is actually fun fun with 25 and fifth place is Kizzy with 25 mm. because uh, fun fun has higher uh, observer weight score so Kizzy's still on podium even though she's like a vassal she did really well at the start she had controls a lot of systems she won some wars it's, it's all counting towards her overall victory here possible victory interesting i'm still seeing that acorn although has no fleet is still kind of in the running for score right now they are in seventh place but i see that they have a lot of control when they're getting space. the score breakdown the score breakdown for fleet power currently for them is zero zero they could they have, have so massive. much more yeah they could spend so much on it and they're not i, I don't know why not That is, that is very curious. And also, they uh, have unassigned invoices. I want, did, did they go AFK? <laughs> um, yeah. I... Um, they, they have stuff queued up right now. They're making more anchorages. Oh, maybe they're waiting. They're, they're biding their time. They might be saying, all right, hey, I'm building up the capacity. That way I don't seem as a threat. And then at the last minute, I'm going to build a massive fleet when I can afford it. And then I could, you know, catapult myself into being a very dominant and bullying player 
uh, against my neighbors. People are saying maybe that they're saving for mega structures. For. Somebody's saying maybe they're saving for megans. I assume megans was an autocorrect from mega structures. Um, but maybe. Uh, maybe. they are getting zero point reactors right now, so they are getting that much closer to be able to get mega structures. And they have a voidcraft expertise engineer with psychic. So it, it, it increases their chance. A lot of speed. Of it a lot of speed. Higher. Yeah, a lot of speed. There, there are. However, they haven't upgraded to Citadel at all. Do they have Citadel technology? They don't have Citadel tech. They need Citadel Ooh. tech in order to be able to roll yeah. Mega Engineering. Maybe they'll get that in the next few years. Uh, they did spend some of their alloys. It looks like they're just what trying they to get close to floating. Like they, they just want to kind of get up there. However, I, I don't even see... Oh, I do see a couple they're, of I think they might be waiting but... too long. I mean, they're making points from yeah. controlled space, and that's good. But they they're need... Oh, the Uwaron Prime just fell. That was the little vassal. And... I think I think we're about Lifeus is about to be out. <laughs> oh no! Oh man, his space has fallen even further. Lifeus is down to just a couple of spots left in Arath. Sorry, Ara, Ara, Air, uh, Ar, 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 Ar is, uh, Ar is about Ar to take him over. What what kind of claims is he going for? In there All more? of them. All of them. Everything. All right. Well, no, nope, Lifeus is yep. gone. Lifeus is now out. gone. Lifeus is out of the game, ladies and gentlemen. We. Wait, no. Does he have a planet? He has I, a planet somewhere. Know. He has one he planet. Something? He has Where? Aurelia Prime. Somehow. Oh, they didn't take the planet. They took the system, but they didn't land on the planet, I don't think. No, I think what happened was the starbase was destroyed. There's e hmm. Possibly. Well, no, normally whenever... So in a war, whenever that happens, that, that whole space was empty. You can't really destroy a star base unless if you are a uh, like a third-party AI. Sure, that comes but, in and but the star base was gone. The star base was... I'm pretty sure the star base was, was it gone. gone. I don't know. I think something might have happened. I think there... I think Lifeus should be actually have been dead. Let's just... Um... That's odd. He should not have survived that. Yeah, because um, he should have probably died. I I'm expecting he should have died. Let me just going to jump in with, uh, with uh, Jens. Oh, Jens actually speaking life is right now, and we're getting we're getting to the bottom of what just happened. Because to be quite frank, Arath um, did not have a claim on it. He did not claim it in the war. Really? He did not. I don't know why the station was destroyed, but the reason why the station was rebuilt was because. Mythia still owned a planet and it wasn't declared for it in the it's war. It's not claimed. Now, it might yeah, be yeah. that it was temporarily taken over by um, uh, AI, maybe when it was the Rebellion. I don't know. But uh, it wasn't claimed. Therefore, he's technically still in the game. He still has a planet left. I mean, the thing is, what as is well, he could. Running? Where's, his, where's his rank? Um... Oh. He is at 16th place right now with two points. So it's very unlikely. Well, he's not in last. <laughs> he's not in no, last. No, he's not in last. It's very unlikely he'll win. However, in the rules, you can't leave. You can't actually leave until until the get until the game's over. Um, unless you lose all of your planets. Um, and if you were to leave, it's a it's currently a bannable offense. Um, for a lot of reasons I'm not gonna get into go into live, but basically it's it sucks sometimes but but otherwise um you don't yeah we want people to stick around till the end basically no rage quitting not just that no uh, intentional oh my internet failed and i've disconnected that's why we've basically gone if you leave you're banned from future tournaments. Oh, no fall on your own sword i see exactly yeah someone that's can kill okay. you if someone completely eliminates you fine or if the gm says you can leave fine but you know, mostly we're going to say it. We're, we're no. Oh, it looks like a lot of Kizzy's territory has been claimed back, but uh, I don't see that it was... I, I don't see Kizzy's Momonga doing, doing anything. No, it's Momonga Kizzy that's care. taking it back. Kizzy's fighting it. Oh, no, Momonga's in the north. Look, Momonga's at yeah, Beskal. Yeah, Momonga is going directly for the real humanoid, not caring and about his never, vassal at all. No, never, but he's going for Neverborn, isn't he? Uh, oh, yeah, the real uh, humanoid. But sorry, no, but the Neverborn Enclave, so Ubi Hater's fleets are the ones in Capella. There's 80k of fleets in Capella here. And it looks like that's who that's true is that, following. That's true that he has... Well, he has two wars in the north. One of them is directly north, which is the real humanoid. If he mm. can get that war and get out of it, then that becomes friendly space for him. Yes. And he can repair there. 
So oh, if he he, can, he just needs to take the star bases. As long as he he as That's long as true. he captures the star base, he can still repair. But to be fair, Momonga doesn't need to. He's at ninety seven percent hit points between ninety seven and one hundred on all of those ships. He also has ascendant clone army admirals with psychic, making them some of the strongest admirals in the game. Neverborn does have a sizable fleet, but I don't think that it could stand up to. Uh, Let's take a look. Momonga's so, what, what are Neverborn's? What are Neverborn's? so? Momonga has basically all lasers. If Neverborn has shields, he's going to be fine. Um, let's. Where is he? He's uh, Neverborn enclaves Uberhater. There they are. Let's see here. Ship designer. Yeah, Momonga has all lasers. So Neverborn has pickets. What? He has advanced strike craft and lasers. Only tier one armor, but level three shields. Maybe, maybe he'll be okay. He's got a lot of fighters. A lot of fighters indeed. <gasps> They're fighting in the Synthus system. That's happening. It's happening right now. Uber Hater is facing... Uber, uh, no, sorry. Real Humanoid is facing Uber Hater. Oh my goodness. So Uber Hater is attacking Real Humanoid. And then behind him, a monger is chasing them both. Oh no! And there's a massive fighting happening in the Synthos system right now. It looks like if Uber is winning. Get weakened from this engagement, then Momonga could come in and sweep the whole exactly. thing. Exactly, exactly. This is going to be wild. And and it look yeah, there it is. Uber Hater has won the fight, and I don't think he's lost much, but he has to stay alive. No, he did not. He did not lose much. Someone said to uh, read YouTube chat. Lifeus has different flag to old. Empire Xenos breeding species. No, it doesn't, does he? Oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, Momonga is currently just skipping the real humanoid. Seeing as mm. his fleet was destroyed, he's going straight north instead. Now that humanoid is no longer a threat because humanoid no longer has. He's going fleet. straight into Ubi Hater's space, and Ubi Hater's fleets are stuck behind Momonga. So, so yeah. yeah. Uh, thank they're, you, Lee Five, for saying to, to check my chat, though. Run back to defend. They're not going to be able to be on the aggressive anymore. Otherwise, he's going to start losing space. And if you notice as well, Uber Hater's fleets are a bit weakened. They're at 80%, 90%, and 97%. So they're a little bit more damaged than, than Momonga's. Um, so someone in my chat, uh, comrade, saying, Lifeus has a different flag of the Empire. Must have had an, been an odd rebellion. Yeah, maybe he had a. Maybe the Xenos breeding facility is a rebel rebel or, or something. I'm not entirely sure. But basically, when the starbase was destroyed, apparently the claim was lost, says Ellie. So I'm possibly Lifeus shouldn't exist. I, I'm not entirely sure. If R doesn't really care, then I don't think it matters. That An in game much. bureaucratic technicality allowed him to exist still. Yeah, basically. I think he might be able <laughs> to, you know, allow it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, all all the other player has to do is just make a new claim and then take him out, and it's not going to be very difficult. He's not really in a position to defend himself. Maybe he can finagle his way into still existing throughout the rest of this game, though. There Who is are... Silas fighting? This is Silas a very is fighting from the Yansky. composition of, of ships from uh, from the Neverborn enclaves. I've seen that they have missile torpedoes on on their small ships, and the the frigates, sorry, the destroyers are just full of lasers. But they also and have, they have a lot of ships as an alternative. flat cannons as well. He he's running a lot of fighters oh, and battle flat cannons. Ships. Is he yeah, getting battleships? Battle he battle has ships. battleships with advanced strike craft, but I don't understand why he's running all these flat cannons. What is he expecting to come up against? His his enemy doesn't have flat cannons. Oh, they're about to come together. Look, uh, Malmonga's coming back. He is currently in the Gutara system. Uber is in the Gutara system. It looks like we might see a fight up. That's true. Now, let's see. What would be best for each player? It seems that uh, I, I would think that Momonga would want to start at range since he's using uh, laser weaponry that he wants to fire as far well, away as possible. Well, the problem with that is that the long, the far, that he wants, so he probably wants to jump in, in right in the face of Uber Hater because Uber Hater has a bunch of fighters. So if he doesn't jump in oh, Uber Hater's true. face, all those fighters will have a long time to attack him. So he wants to like attack right from the edge of the system, I would think, um, if he can, maybe. That's true, we'll Mahonga has no, he he has no like anti-fire at no, all. No, exactly. Momonga's just got lasers. And there goes so the breeding facility, Lifeus is gone. I suppose that, oh, Lifeus is gone, unfortunate. The baby's coalition he's been just took Wait, him. why he's been taken out by, what? By an AI. He got taken out by another AI? Did he have... Yeah. Oh, he might have had another um, uprising. No, I, this is someone else. I think what happened was he might have declared war on them so they would kill him so he could leave. 
basically. Because oh. he was like, oh, I'm not going <laughs> to win. I just, just, he just throws, that's legal. Suic death by that's AI legal. is legal, or suicide by AI. Okay. It's like suicide by cop, but better. Um, it's legal, and uh, that's fine. Uh, but you can't just leave. You have to be wiped out. Who else is fighting? Wow. Let's have a look. So R, how's R doing? R has massive... Oh, he's in the Crimdor system. Oh, wow. Crimdor's having a big engagement versus Pax. It looks like R's going to win this one, though. A lot of missile ships firing. Yeah, Pax is getting hurt badly. And R ships are really not getting damaged. What's R running? R is running... He's running laser kinetic, which is fine. Interesting. R, so R has quite an old-fashioned ship composition. Oh, he took a lot of damage there, though. So nothing died, but he did take quite a lot of He's damage. He's doing a nice combo between mm. laser weaponry and kinetic weaponry. Is he using any boosts on that? Let's check his edicts. He Probably. is boosting his armor, oh, his everything. crystals, and everything. his he... Except explosives, yeah. right? Basically everything. Including his capacity subsidies right now, but he's still making negative energy credits. Oh, he is making 2k energy a month, but he's spending 2,000 energy. And on a lot of things, jobs, pops, buildings, star bases, ships, and monthly trades. What's he trading for? He's buying, he's buying ten, he's buying ten um, volatile moats every month, but he's still at minus eight. He is spending twenty six volatile moats a month. He's about to go bankrupt on volatile moats as well. He probably hasn't noticed that. That could be a problem. Uh, that could yeah, be a definite goes, problem. If it, it could be at a very like critical moment that he can go bankrupt and then have some major problems not just with his fleet but with uh well it hurts other... him economically as well doesn't it it'll be yeah, it'll be hit with some big modifiers modifies. so I mean, he has a notification let's see if he notices it also i'm noticing that players are constantly going above their star base capacity mostly because they yeah. have to but they're well, not going, doing anything going a few above being at like an extra 50 percent upkeep generally it's not too big a deal especially especially if we look at kizzy star bases for example You'll see that... Uh, I should select Kizzy. Well, oh, she's not over a cap. Who is it over? Fabianski. Okay. Fabianski's star base. If we look at them, he has on every star base a hydroponics bay. Hydroponics bays require one, uh, currently 1 1.5 yeah, energy one because energy. he's exceeding, and they make 13 food. So you could be, you know, you could be at 100% over star base cap, and it's still economically viable because you can sell that food or use it to upkeep your economy for energy and still be making a profit. Oh, we're about to see. Uh, I believe that the uh, Mongu is getting much closer to catching up to the Neverborn fleet. Oh, it's two jumps away now. Neverborn they're, they're are really running. Up. Oh my, uh, one jump away. One jump away. They're very close. If so, so right now, Kizzy is one jump away as well on the opposite side. If Kizzy wanted to hold them up, Kizzy is currently Kizzy's running. running. Kizzy she should run, run her distraction to I cause. Don't know her. Her uh, fleets are would running. Be able to catch up. I think what she, if oh, I were her, what no. I try and do is put a fortress fortress on one of these planets just to just to hold up Ubi Hater. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. In a straight up fight between these two, Momonga, Momonga and uh, Neverborn, it's our Ubi Hater. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be close. I I'm not sure who's going to win on that engagement. Yeah, there's a it's a very close in terms of fleet power, isn't it? Um. If, if never sorry, if uh, Ubi Hater manages yeah. to take a a defensive station that has bonuses on it, doesn't don't doesn't he get those bonuses? So if he goes for a, a station that has like um, uh, a shield reduction for yeah, the opponent, I suppose so. no, he would. Do. He yeah, could I just he would. wait there as a bait as a trap for he Momoga to come in. He can't know. That he's he getting the shield reduction, yeah. Because if you if you if you if he selects it, he doesn't actually get to see. No, he should be able to see the modules. He, he should see it on his that. own ships. He should be able to know that when he enters the system, that his ships are lower than when he takes the station. Oh no! Once back, he takes the station, he can see what the modules are. And so far, though, the modules are all hydroponics bays. And yeah, and, he's and, not going to be able to get that. No, it's not going to help. The, yeah, the only I don't, only I don't know if they're ever going to catch too. up. I don't know if they're ever going to... I think Ubi, uh, Ubi is just going to keep running. He's just going to keep running and running and running. Man. Let's see here. The he dragon is dead. At... In Eurelion in the top north, the dragon has actually died. The uh, the Stellarite Devourer is still alive, but the dragon is dead. So I, I assume... I assume it was... Uh, I assume it was... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Least Fire that killed the dragon, but the dragon is now dead. Unfortunate. 
Rest in peace, dragon. And no one has taken the undead dragon build today. <laughs> so we actually don't get to see any dragons running around with, say, 100k fleet power, which would be fun, but, 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 but a shame we don't get to see it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's just ring around the rosy at this point between <laughs> Ubi Hater and Mamonia. So they're Momonia. currently passing I see Champions Momonia the currently community. giving manual orders to chase oh, is him he down. Every time. Because there keeps being these, uh, these things uh, popping up. We've just seen somebody pass Champions of the Community. Champions of the Community gives plus 10% nav cap to every council member, plus 20% to oh. the custodian, and plus 25% to the emperor. And everyone else loses gonna, 5%. He's going to try to catch him off. I'm it sorry. Really? He's, he's changing yeah. his route. So instead of following him directly, he's going to the oh. right instead to see oh, if he can yeah, catch he him Oh, yeah, he might catch him. Oh, no. That might have been a mistake for Ubi Hader to have gone that way around. Although, I'm, I'm not to be fair, sure Ubi, Ubi, Ubi might be turning around. Oh, wait, no. No, no he's still going. He's just doing something They're going to really... The thing is, Momonga's still two jumps away. That's still quite a, quite he a distance. Is. Momonga he also... Only... He's running exotic gases of steel, so he's pushing as fast as he can. I just don't think he'll get there in time. Uh, I really don't he think he's going to get there. It's going to be close. They've just got the hab ha uh, habrak and and Monga's not even he's, yeah, he's just yet. He's making it. He has to make away. it across that system before they make it yeah. across their system. I can't see it happening. Uh, well, what what is his furthest engagement range? Does he have any battleships with like 150 or more? He's got line computers. Oh no, he's got line computers. This he is might so be able to catch a single group out. His ships here. Probably he's currently not. got lasers which have 90 percent accuracy. No, he's, running... he's so close though. Oh, I just missed it again. <sighs> His ship designs, though, he's made a bit of a mistake. He's got lasers, which is 90% accuracy, and then has a line combat computer, as well as three auxiliary fire controls, meaning he's adding plus 20 accuracy, but the maximum accuracy you can have is 100. So he okay, is wasting right, right. an extra 10 accuracy. Here's, oh, here's something? something to keep in mind. Okay, so they're currently going along a path right now in the Yamal system, just a little bit further. Oh, in they've jumped in. Oh, they're area. so close. They it's are a, so it's close. It's a pulsar. They have a pulsar system that they're going to have to go through, which means sublight speed is reduced by 50%. Yamal? So this, this is going to be where that? they're going to catch them. I don't see that. Where's that? In the oh, Yamal, Yamal system, up north. Oh, the... Um, if you don't the, catch them beforehand, they're going to catch them in the star. Yamal system. The Neutron Star, right? Yes. The Neutron Star is going to slow them down by 50%, which gives them plenty of time oh, no. to catch up. Also, Momonga's not paying attention to the economy. He is maxed out on minerals and energy credits. He is just chasing down this other oh, player. They're in, the they're in the same system. They're in the same system. It's happening. We're happening. We're getting the fight now. It's happening. And it looks like... It looks like... The fighters are coming in. Why well, we got to pause? The game paused. We got to pause. <laughs> Pax just disconnected. Oh, uh, what? Wow. He said GG. What a moment to disconnect. He just got no. He didn't disconnect. Disconnect. He just got wiped out. I oh, just wiped him out. I see. It's game over for him. Look at this. Yeah, he, uh, he's out. Momoga on one side. And I'll just, I'll just completely annex Pax in the western side. Oh my goodness, that's terrifying though. Look at this battle. And the now battle the battle's ongoing again. Oh, it looks like, it looks like, it looks like Momonga's winning Ubi is by quite a bit. losing a lot of ships right now. Mm -hmm. Momonga is pushing forwards with those lasers and Ubi ships are just not able to push, to retreat enough. So their fighters, while being good, they just can't stay out of range. That's a solid win to Momonga. That's true, but uh, Ubi managed to have a lot of his forces get like disengaged from the fight, so that doesn't necessarily mean that the war is over, but he certainly lost this critical engagement. He still has 100k of fleet power. Yeah, he, about I big... believe like almost all of them managed to escape. Uh, looking at the fleet powers, though, Lease Fire now has 237,000 fleet power. What ships is he running? He's running Stormfire Auto Cannon Corvettes, for God's sake. The bloat. The bloat. He has so much armor as well. If anyone comes in with anything which is anti-armor though, and lots of armor against these ships, Lee Sfire is going to suffer. I mean, he does have a lot so, of plasma. Maybe he'll be all right. So Ubi Hater is currently under his war doctrines. Under his policies and war doctrines, he's currently running the hit and run, which means that he has a greater chance of disengagement. In fact, he gets multiple opportunities in order to pull out of a fight. That way, in case he does take a bad engagement, he doesn't lose much of his forces and he can try again. They have changed how this works slightly in 3.6. So it used to be that you had an unlimited number of disengagement opportunities. Now you get a fixed number based on your, your, your ship drive and also your policies. I think the maximum you get, and also your leader. So the maximum you can get to is, I think, six or seven. So plus two is massive now whereas it used to get an unlimited number now you just get a fixed so 
So that means you could possibly run away where previously you would just die. Especially in the late and, game. Hit uh, and run is kind of better. Now, what's happened? I've noticed that apparently Ubi just recently hit a consumer goods deficit and it oh, actually no. built up for a couple of months. So he is he's having some bad Happiness, penalties. Happiness, unity, unity research. Minus 40%. 40%. Oh, That's insane, oh especially because he's already making so much uh, research right now. And, and at this point of the game, you could be getting a really critical technology that could be making or breaking your game. He's already has Battleship and Star Fortress. If he gets to Citadel, that that could really help him out. But with that 40%... Somebody needs to do something about Lease Fire. Lease Fire here is... is Head, heads and shoulders above some of the other players. He has the highest fleet power. Okay, Momongo has 200k, but he has 245. He has a very high fleet power. He's number one in score. If people don't start doing something about him now, he's gonna, he might not win, but he's definitely gonna be podiuming. He'll, you know, he'll be on the podium. There is oh, no absolutely. He also has a ruined megastructure installation inside of his territory. And it Which looks he like he can back up. use it. Hold on, let's see here. Let's check his I'm just Oh, about he to has megastructure. Oh, he, he has it. it. He does. He has megastructure engineering. Least fire. And he, can, he has the resources. He can absolutely start it. There he has. Yeah, he does have it. You're right. Oh my goodness. But he, but he's is he not going doing to. it yet. It's worth it. He should do it right now. It only takes 4,800 days. Oh, come on. Or maybe it he should build 4, one up. takes days, but that's a lot of alloys yeah, that he'd be dedicated to. It is. To it. it is. And he is he's at war right really now. And he's also in afraid, any position. He's, he's not really in a bad position for anything. He could do this without much worry to, to anything. He's in a great defensive position. He has no wormholes into the back of his territory. He's in a nice alliance as well. He's in he's sitting pretty right now. He has an opportunity to really boost up his score and he hasn't taken it yet. Silas lost all his fleets apparently. I did not notice that. Thank you, Yonsak. Silas has 9k in fleets. So Spice Salad's on the left here. He has a vassal, but no fleets. And he has been completely taken over pretty much by the Ildar Guardians, Fabianski. My goodness me, the that's... The Highlight War. Yeah. They're, they're currently trying to sign a peace offer right now. Between Mulzer and the uh, the Utaran. I'll be right oh, back. I'm just wait, going to grab a, a beverage. I'll be right back. It failed. Nine, like a majority of the people said yes, but one person said no, and I don't know who it was. Interesting. I I did not see. I think Chad may have saw or could look back on the uh the, if they clipped it who it was that said no to declaring peace. Everybody else said yes though. Or no, I guess the agreement could have been sent, and they're waiting for them to respond to it. That that could be that could be the case. In fact, actually, we could go check out and see whether or not they have an offer. And I currently don't see one, so I think it failed. Hmm. Let's see what they currently have right now. Oh. Okay. This is I'm liking this. Lease Fire also has the Master Builders right now. So his megastructure build speed is increased by 50% as well. So not only does he have a megastructure to use, but he can build it much faster than anyone else can. He's going for those points then. He must be going for the megastructure points. So not only do you get points every time you complete a megastructure, if you have any megastructures around, you're also going to be getting points for kind of having them for this controlled megastructure oh, system. He did? He Which one? The, um, uh, the, uh, the installation, the, mega, the art installation. And only 3,000 days. So that will be done before we get to year 80. So he will score points for that. Two he times may have points. been waiting for that. He may have timed it out and was waiting yes. to make sure that he got it right before the tick. That way people didn't see it early. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, that's... Um... That's probably almost certainly what he's done. Also, uh, if you're enjoying if you're enjoying Simus's uh, lovely dulcet tones, you'd like to check him <laughs> out as well. I just posted the link to his Twitch channel in the in the live stream. There's also a link down in the description. Go check him out. He has some great streams on Twitch. You don't stream on YouTube, do you? Uh, just Twitch, right? I do not. Just, you should stream just, on YouTube. YouTube's yeah. uh, uh, as 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 a YouTuber, I have to say YouTube is the future, right? Um, having said that, though, at the moment I've got a little bit of a monetization snafu, and I'm. <laughs> Um, there's there's an issue with my YouTube account. So for a couple of days, I've not been monetized and YouTube been pu putting ads on just keeping all the money. And um, I'm trying to resolve it and see if I can make sure to get back my share of the ad revenue. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, if not, I'll have to make a video about like, YouTube have stolen my money. Uh, it's a win-win, <laughs> right? Also, sorry, Leasefire has also got Fen Habanis. He's also had the precursor. 
he's had um he's had the first league precursor he has the relic world that's so good that is true and doesn't that add to his victory score now that he's completed that no no you don't no. get any score for completing a precursor that's not that's not inclusive no we didn't give oh. score because it's kind of a bit random whether it or not you manage random, to get them true. And we, whilst we want to create randomness in the game, we don't want to give outright score for randomness because we okay. want the players to be able to balance it out somewhat. What's Fair happening enough. in the Galactic community right now? So building a better tomorrow is on the floor by Oregano. Okay. No one is currently trying to propose um, becoming the custodian. Interesting. Uh, Ubi, uh, Ubi is currently taking the long way home in order to go back to his territory. Look at how much Diplo weight Fun Fun has. Fun Fun has a base of 8k Diplo weight, but he's boosted it to 25 by having 9 envoys, Gravitas being a council member, finishing politics, Diplo grants, cons cooperative, oh passing a resolution, Xeno relations, Xeno diplomacy. He is pushing it into the stratosphere in an attempt to outcompete, and he's now number one on Diplo weight, outcompeting even the likes of uh least fire who has the highest yeah. uh, diplo score that is insane that is that is true and and he hasn't even used all of his envoys has he, he can, not he can put it in another he has another envoy he can use oh my he's, goodness he's he holding does. in a reserve <laughs> what for <laughs> what the I, I don't know maybe <laughs> maybe for uh trying to be espionage or i'm not sure it's not like you need it in order to make peace or war declarations Although that would be an interesting. I mean, most every other Paradox game, you need some sort of ambassador in order to make those kinds of things. Oh, I'm sorry. I just said message. Uh, Darkness, you don't need to switch to Patreon for at least a few more days. and Because if it doesn't get sorted out in the next few days, well, I'm going to have some serious financial issues if I can't get any ad revenue still. Um, and then I'll be like, YouTube, please help. I don't want to die. I need stuff. Um, and uh but 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 for now nothing should be affected yet they in theory collect the revenue and then will still give it to me at some point i assume i'll be chasing it up um it definitely won't be like that other youtuber i've recently watched a video on who didn't get paid five months of revenue i promise um uh, mm. singularity says that like, you can send me energy in the game that's that'll do right <laughs> that'll do I'll, I'll i'll take those energy credits that's Which all I really need. I mean, to be fair, this uh, cold winter, I know. Goods? If energy credits counted towards my gas and gas and electric bill, then I'd take that. You know, if, okay. if that's what it meant, if that was that kind of energy credit, 100%. Oh, 100%. Gas oh, is yeah. so expensive. Oh, my goodness. Gas is expensive. And so is the uh, electric bill for a computer. <laughs> oh, 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 they're about to catch each other again. Oh, oh where, where, no. where? Uh, they... Uh, <laughs> So currently, um, inside oh, they're at 100% war territory. exhaustion. Momonga is at 100% against against uh, real humanoids. So in only, in oh, he can force peace now. Humanoid could force peace right now, if humanoid wanted to. Why hasn't he? I he may have missed it. I don't know. He can enforce white peace or enforce. Uh, he can enforce I white peace right now. He can force white peace status quo. I, well, he'll still lose a couple of systems. But the rest of his planets will still exist. He'll be fine. Hmm. I mean, he's got zero <laughs> score. He's very behind in the score. So that that's something. Where did he just go? Where? Everyone's at war. Where did Momonga go? Where did Momonga's fleet go? Oh, really? Momonga's fleet are gone? And just yeah, like that, the Daleks vanished. Um, They are in Kizzy space. I can see uh, 80k in Kizzy space. There are more fleets though, wait. Uh, let's see. How did they get down there? They were they were just in Ubi Hater's territory. They're in they Howling Vortex vanished. as well. They're also in Giltanus' space. Wait a minute. I saw uh, Fabianski oh. in the north. In the in the north, uh, uh, Fabianski is about to face Gil uh, face um, Momonga here in the Stebanar system. They're about to engage. Uh, here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, do you see it in the top north, top left, just next to Giltanus' top, space? Top oh yeah, 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 yeah. I see it. I see it now. hundred k versus hundred hundred k basically. Oh, they just got caught. Oh no, no, no. Oh, oh they're gonna get. Oh, they turned around. Why did they turn around? I don't know. It looks like a clear win for Momonga so far, though. Oh no, Momonga ships are retreating. It looks like. I don't know what's knocking them out, but they they seem to be running away. 
Oh, what is goodness. what is Fabianski running? He just annihilated Momonga's fleets. What I want to see those ship designs. There? I think he had. I think he had disruptors. Let oh me check. yes, phase disruptors. Disruptors, yes. Disruptors are so good. Passing all of They're their so armor good. I mean, and disruptors shields, are so and good compared to these. He has max level armor, max level shields, high afterburners, and max level disruptors. Disruptors are so good against other ships now. And so, even though he had he had forty percent less fleet power, he completely annihilated Momonga's fleets. Absolutely annihilated them. Momonga had us just spend like ten thousand alloys in order to replenish his fleet. <laughs> I don't see how Giltanus can. I don't see how Giltanus can keep this alive for much longer. He's at hundred percent war exhaustion. They are going to piece him out very soon. I have to assume in 600 days. So if, if, if they can't save Giltanus' space in the next 600 days, Giltanus will be completely out of the game. And that will also eliminate Momonga is currently making 1.5k energy. How much energy? Let's see. He's making... Oh, he's making so... He's making over almost 2k energy from all of his branch offices in Giltanus' space. So that might even put him into an energy deficit if he, if he when Giltanus loses this war. Uh, Fabi is currently actually also working on a mega structure right now. He's getting the oh, interstellar yeah? assembly site going. Now, now in order to get the Where's score, that? Where's you that? just have to have it uh, in the Sirius system, uh, uh... north northeast, just next to Least Fire, like right on the same border. Uh, in the Sirius system, S I R I S, or sorry, R S I R I U. -S. Sorry, uh, which player? Fabianski. Uh, Fabianski, yes. Uh, oh, he in the has Sirius. A, he's repairing a, or he's doing, he's doing his site. So, yes. so, so, so how does you that work in score? To, so in the score, basically, for when in if you complete the mega structure, you get milestone points. And basically one or two points for every level the mega structure had. So let's say it's an interstellar assembly, which off the top of my head has four levels, that will give you four or five points. Right? Okay. From milestones. And then every twenty sorry. Yeah, from milestones. Every twenty years for interval score. Every mega structure you have, which is higher than a site, so this one is a site. In 1100 days, it will become level one. For every mega structure at level one or above, that counts towards your total number of controlled mega structures. Whoever has the most gets five points, then four, then three, then two, then one. All right. So, it, but if you repair a mega structure that already exists, how much do you get? Is it better That's to the, build so, one or repair? So, one? repairing a mega structure only gives you a couple of points because it's quite easy ah, to do. That still counts enough. towards your total number of controlled megas, though, after it's repaired. Hmm. Okay. Repairing gives you two points. Uh, you and points post this in the chat. It's also mentioned on the mod itself. But so mega structures give four points for quantum and mega shipyard. All of the others give six. The wonders give ten, and repairing a mega structure gives you two. So if you build a a Dyson sphere, which obviously takes forever, you get ten yeah. points. But I, I don't think that's even possible in in this game with a hundred years. I, I don't even think it's yeah, possible. Yeah, I, I don't see that really being because you'd have to complete either. a mega structure, then take the uh, the Galactic Wonders Ascension perk, then research a technology, and then spend years completing a mega structure. Yeah, just no, I don't see it. Yeah, and RNG and yeah, a, a lot has to align in order to make that happen. So who's the most I mean, it used right to be possible, now. actually. I mean, the, the the quickest I ever made a mega structure uh, was like year s like sixty something. Momonga's um, currently running away from Uber. No, it's not Momonga. It's Kizzy. Kizzy is running away from Uber. Hey, that war is still going on. Why have they not pieced out? All of these wars are going I on. I don't understand. Maybe it's because both players really want to get more out of they it. They just want to kill. They just want to kill. Uh, someone in the chat says, "Are disruptors the best weapons now?" No, they're really bad against stations. So, oh, look at Silas's empire. <gasps> Silas's empire has just split in half. He has had a massive rebellion. And that's I, we never normally see rebellions, but in this game, we're seeing the AI rebel. So there's now the Spicy Salon Commerce Guild, which, um, which are, are rebels against Silas. <laughs> <laughs> and Silas has been completely shafted by that. He is oh, no. in second place for score, but if he gets eliminated, he's out. How is Silas in second place when he owns so little? Well, he, his earlier score, so he had high diplo weight. He's he, he's currently he's currently a member of the Galactic. He, he's currently on the Galactic Council. He is apparently an esteemed member of the Galactic Council, first and foremost amongst the community. But that was before he's been losing all the wars. Now he used to be in the big Federation. He left the Federation. <gasps> Hive two two eight just got killed. Molzer is out. Molzer just got eliminated. 
Oh my god, so we just saw that is the second player to go down. I have to pay respects in chat to Molza, ladies and gentlemen. Simus, your chat as well. I I'm watching. <laughs> Robo Gully Man of Baruch, you better say Fs. Oh, someone's saying they can't hear me in your chat. Uh, that they can't hear me? Oh, no, they can't yeah, hear I, me. I may have had you a little loud. I just turned you down. Oh, sorry, you did. Oh, I apologize. I did. That, no, that, was, that was my bad. I had you at 200%. That's because of the last Oof. event. I oh, had was you I a bit at 200%. Quiet then? And I forgot to change it. My apologies. Yeah, see, look, we got some Fs. Nice. We did. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, Cinder, Elm Creek, Lightning Sam, and Robot. Nope, I don't know them. How very dare you. What a lack of respect. Also, I was at 420 viewers a moment ago. Somebody in my chat pointed out. Apparently it's great. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, that's only if it's 69 viewers. That's right. Sorry, also a point to make here. Silas was the winner of the previous 1v1 tournament. Oh, no. Do you think that they may have gone after him to make sure that he's not uh, a threat? I think so. I mean, he was in second place. In the, well, not only did people haven't really gone after him, they've attacked him a bit, but he's also had a massive mismanagement because he's had an entire rebellion. Like, we don't usually see rebellions at this level, but because of the way things go... Oh, Giltanas just went. There goes Gangster's Paradise. Holy moly, we're losing players. Momonga has now been... Momonga is in an energy deficit, minus 500 energy credits per month. That is backbreaking. Oh, man. Currently, uh, Zero is also in a spot to be knocked out of this game. Zero has no fleet power and is being invaded by, uh, who is this? By Momonga. Silas, actually. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, Silas he's... is invading him. But, but he is attacking Momonga. Boris has attacked Momonga and been dra he's been dragged into the war. Zero has been dragged into the war as just a oh, Federation no. member. So, Zero's been dragged in and he's going to get knocked out because of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, well, and that can happen well, like, if you're in a big federation. It the claims are for it. Well, no one's, it doesn't look like anyone's claimed him, but you have to be careful if you're in a big federation. Oh, someone has claimed him, wait. It's claimed Who's by Unidentified him? Empire. Who the heck's that? I don't know. Uh, Let's see here. Do Not Enter is currently in order of strength, claimed by Galactic Custodian. Wait, what? Who's Galactic Custodian? I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting that message. Nobody's a Galactic Custodian right now, are they? No. Yeah. Maybe it's an Empire named Galactic Custodian. Let's have a look. That would be it. maybe. I don't see them. I don't see them. Momonta must dismantle. Uh, Momonta must. Mom, blah, 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 blah. Momonga must dismantle <laughs> fleets to fix his energy problems. I mean, look how far down Momonga's now dropped in the in the Observer score. He was like second, and now he's fifth from the bottom. He's being claimed by Spice Salads, which I believe is the AI Empire. Momonga lost the his... Uprising. He's being Momonga claimed by lost the Uprising. his matter decompressor. When did that happen? I didn't even notice that. Crikey, Momonga lost a lot of stuff down south. Oh, uh, I think oh. Acorn went to war against him. Oh, just now. Hold on, hold on. No, no. I mean, Acorn is at war with Momonga, but he was dragged in by Boris. Acorn is in the same oh, federation as Boris and Fun Fun and Zero, and they're at war with Momonga, Jeez. who's guaranteed by Silas and guaranteed by R. I'm so pretty sure Acorn was not happy about that, seeing as no, he I was can imagine. building up his naval capacity and had not spent a single alloy on his fleet yet and was going to probably try to build up for it. And now he kind of got screwed by it. Is, is Although, Acorn to be fair, Momonga megas? was no. already like out and about dealing with his own wars, so he wasn't really at home to, to deal with this. But now he is, and <laughs> Acorn is not going to look too good against like 150,000 fleet power inside of his system when he doesn't even have that much. He has a third of that fleet power, and that's not even that's not even Momonga's full power. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how he's going to pull out of this one without his allies' help. He's going to need help. Oh, the friendly! Oh my! Oh my word! Fun Fun has two 120k fleets. Flown around We're about to have Acorn. another galactic election. Oh my goodness! Look how much fleet. Look how much diplo weights. Uh, uh, Fun Fun now has. He has 60k. He is pushing for. He is definitely pushing to get custodian. No doubt about it. He's going to get elected to the, to the galactic council again, and I I bet he's going to he's going to try to bribe one of the other members of his federation to put custodian through. Probably least fire. Least fire. We, we currently have a almost ten days. A, a major engagement about to occur down at Where? the bottom left near at the bottom of our Ross system. There is the uh, 
uh, oh, Arana's I see it in Branham. is trying to catch the other like 200k oh, from fleet fun power fun. that is just 200... one system away. But that fleet power, let's look at it. Is it mostly? It's not. He has powered Archimitters and Disruptors and Lasers. That's those are pretty good ships. So many Disruptors. Holy moly! Oh, but they went different directions. I don't think that they know each other is that close to each other. Oh no, do they not? Let's take a look at R's point of view. Does R not see them? R doesn't see them. They don't Why see doesn't each R other. See they them? don't, they don't see there. each other. Oh no. Oh my goodness. They could end up in the same system accidentally. We I just mean, had in another the direction that they're both going, they're going to have to catch up to each other. Momonga and Lee Spire just going to the Galactic Council with Fun Fun, and that's changed up the points a bit. Momonga is now in fifth place because he's just been elected to the Galactic Council. Where did that fleet just go? Oh, oh, they pulled back. I see. Okay, so it looks like R decided to pull back. I don't know if he saw or spotted the other He uh, hasn't. System. He hasn't. I'm looking, he hasn't just, seen anything. He's just, yeah, he's, he's just, just taking his shit base back. He's just taking his space back. He's like, he's not trying to attack. He's not being aggressive. He's just reclaiming his space. And R, I've no knew about that fleet though. Yeah, oh, oh, but now oh, the fleet are. jumped into his territory. He can see them now. He, he can, can see, see them, them now. And now they disappeared. <gasps> What's he going to do? Is he going to react? He hasn't reacted so far. No, he decided, he just queued up another command to take back more of his own space. Well, how far are we through now? How much? We've been going for over four hours now. If you've, I'm curious, so thank you very much for joining me live. If you're watching this after the fact and you've sat through four hours of this tournament, let me know in the comments. I, you know, I'd love to hear. And also let me know, you know, how you've ended up watching this and whether or not you've enjoyed watching a live stream so much later on. Because um, I imagine most people watch lives when they're live, but I know some people do watch them later. And I'm just curious, you know, what, what, what you enjoy about it when it's not live. Because obviously I'm not here live anymore so you can't i can't react to you so yeah tell me now let me, let me know your thoughts and feelings um obviously twitch is different no one cares about twitch videos after they've been live right simus or am i wrong i I'm, i apologize i was just about to react to chat what was the question <laughs> oh I, I was just saying does anyone care about twitch videos after they've been live oh not i or mean not. it depends it depends on what you're doing a lot of people like with you know with any sort of live stream they really like to be able to interact with the exactly the that's what i was that's what i was saying and thinking versus you know having to watch a vod because otherwise it's just a recorded youtube video that's just really long <laughs> well well exactly that's what i was saying if if you're not watching this live you're one of the deaders as, as we call them um uh Kisuno in my chat says, usually miss your live streams. First one I was able to actually catch. So do you, Kisuno, do you actually watch them when they're not live then? I watched Timelines in one of the other live series afterwards before. I often go back and watch again later to analyze the gameplay. Sometimes my gameplay is not good. That don't do, I mean, don't always do that. Especially if I'm role playing, don't watch my gameplay when I'm role playing. That's not, please don't, please, please don't do that. Um, hey, this is great to watch different players strategize and execute. That, that's a good point. It is good to see how it goes. I mean, what I'm, I find interesting here is we still have this massive federation that's kind of struggling through. Um, Acorn has so much space. He is definitely winning the, the, the most systems again uh, for the milestones in just a few years' time. How's Least Fire doing? Is yeah. Least Fire managed to get that, uh, that, that thing online? 200 days. So Least Fire's thing's about to go. Fabianski, Fabianski has level one. He has level one of interstellar assembly, so that is going to count towards the mega structure. He should actually start building another one if he can now. That would probably be better for him. He has taken Lee master Spire builders. Is about to finish his mega structure. In 200 days' time, the art installation in the top right hand corner is about to complete. And that but, will give um, him a nice bonus. Oh, Fabianski is currently a... fighting someone. Who's this? Uh. Oh, he's, they're fighting in Kizzy's face. It looks like Kizzy's about might, might be about to get knocked out. Ouch. So, yeah, been Fun Fun is very much on the aggressive now. Fun Fun is, is pushing deep back into our space, and ours just not really attacking him. coming back, actually. Oh, he is. He's he coming back. Sorry, I've seen that. Yes. Towards them. I'm not sure oh, who's oh, going to win Oh, that. they're about to make it to the same system. Oh, are they? Oh, yep. it's Ban 3. Oh, my goodness. This is going to yep. be it, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. Oh, so R has okay, R no, has yeah. no edicts running. R has no edicts running. Oh, fun fun. Fun fun stops. Has he edicts didn't jump? Running. He didn't jump. Is he stopping at the edge? He wants them to come to yeah, him. Yeah, he is. His corvettes yeah. are all dis disruptive corvettes are really powerful. In. Now he's coming. No, now he's coming. He's jumping in. He's jumping in to take R on. I think. Okay, okay. 
Wait, no, no, no. He went to the edge, and now he's just sitting there. So he queued it up, and then he stopped his fleet. So he's right. Oh my right goodness! At the edge. This is it's... this is such aggressive play. Oh now R's gonna R's gonna R's taking the bait. R's like no. Yeah. Oh no, he's not attacking. He's waiting as well. He's like, you want to come? You come to me. You want to fight? You 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 want to you want to do this? Do this in my space. <gasps> he's jumping. No, I take it back. R's now take R's attacking. Here we go. Those disruptor corvettes though are gonna shred at close range. Here we go. Oh my goodness me. And look at that. Ars fleets are falling like you would not believe. And Fun Fun has barely lost anything. Ars already down one fleet. Oh, this is this Why is, is totally one of his fleets run away? Favorite. Look at this though. One of Fun Fun's fleets has run to the entire other oh side of the God. system. What a bug. Oh, I would be kicking myself. This is so annoying. Even if Half it's, even it's a bug, he's still other doing sides. amazingly. He's still winning with only one fleet. I think I think that's because of those. Uh, he, he's still using the dis yeah the phase disruptors. What on earth? Why are the fleets hiding over there? And now they're coming back. What is I've seen happening? That occasionally, but I don't know why. There's that a happens. ring world. There's sorry. There's an orbital ring attacking people now. This. That's such a... Look at this bug. They're all just kind of milling around here like ants. Aimless ants. If you ever uh, read um, Children of Children of Time, this is what happens when the ants get the uh, the paucid beetle signal on them, basically, and they're kind of milling around completely confused. Uh, when Fabian makes them all confused. You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> DJ, you seeing this? Somebody. Somebody. Hey, look at this. This is nonsense. This is like... This fun fun should be outright winning, and he's still not quite there. Uh, Simus, you are lacking the game a little bit. So maybe I'm not Simus. The... You're in the wrong place. Yeah, but Simus is here with you. Oh, oh, Simus is lagging the game. Sorry. Oh, Simus, do you want to jump out? I'm, then I'm lagging the game. Uh, when we, you were watching the fleet battles, you were so just don't watch them too close at least. Oh, it's over now. Okay. Every now and then, I suppose. I mean, it, I can yeah. I can leave if you guys need me to. I no, you don't need no it just momentary lag. It was only while you were watching the feedback. Okay. Battle. All right. Fair enough. All right. In that case, I'm sorry, guys. You guys only get my beautiful voice. I, I don't get to look at anything. I mean, you can jump in again. You'll just get told <gasps> off a tiny bit. It's like you lag a bit, you relieve, you go again, you lag. It's not a problem. As long as you don't lag too much. Like, we're making good time here. We've still got another two hours before we need to get through another 20 years. So, actually. Minor lag isn't going to hurt anyone too much because the game ends at 2300 or six hours. So, for those of you who are joining us just now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying. Uh, Montu and myself are casting this tournament that Montu is hosting with a what was it, $860 prize pool? It's 850, is, not actual cash, oh, but a, $850 of prizes in the prize pool. Uh, pri okay, my apologies. Of uh, prizes. $150 worth of prizes. Exactly. Uh, and if you guys are enjoying, where can what what can they do to let you know? Um, well, they could they could they, they could uh, jump into my stream and like the video. I suppose they could also make a comment. Oh. They could leave a super chat or a super thanks if you're watching past the fact. But also, actually, also check out Simus. He's doing lovely here with 60 to 70 viewers and. How many views you got? See, I yeah, actually okay. I hadn't been able to see how many. All I have right now is my Twitch chat open. Oh no, I have nothing okay. else because I didn't want to use it. You internet. were up to eighty a moment ago, <laughs> but you're at sixty again now, which I I, I don't oh, know how man. I don't know if that's good for you or not. Uh, I hope it's that good. That is phenomenal. Oh, oh, good. oh, oh I was I was raided by Mordred, so you know that that might also Ooh. have something. To ah, <laughs> is Mordred here? Oh, hi, Mordred. Mordred Viking is here with his viewers. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are Mordred uh, is the community lead for Stellaris, right? Uh, what was that? Mordred is the he, community he's, he's manager the CA, for Stellaris, yeah. right? Yes. Oh, community, or no, CM, community manager, CM. right? That's right. CM, CM, yeah, exactly. Community yeah. manager. And another engagement just happened. Oh, man. I, I, I'm I, very... I, I gotta say that that Fun Fun's fleet is surprisingly way more powerful than the number actually gives on. Uh, he has so many Corvettes right now in his fleet, but they are all just disintegrating their opponents. It's, Why is Carlson in first place? What is he? What is he's making 1k alloys a month? He's completed his Acumenopolis. Holy moly. He's completed his Acumenopolis and it is now making 1.3k in alloys per month. That is a phenomenal amount. Uh, we just had the scores roll in. We just had scores roll in and let's just check the scores out. Sorry, Carlson is Heaven's not in still first. in 10th place. I mean, 11th place, though. 
yeah, he's, he's just not doing well enough. He's got no, numbers. Sorry. He just got first for econ power, though. He just got first for economic power. So he's doing really well in econ power. It's too late, though, probably. He hasn't got enough points so far. It's probably too late for him to win, to, to be perfectly honest. First place right now is still well. Lease Fire. He's got second for Mega Structures. He's on the Galactic Council twice. Lots of Diplo 8 Fleet Parent Econ. Second place it is Fabianski. It may be too late for him to get first place, but if those first place players or some of the players ahead of him get knocked out of the game, they get then, zero points. Then he could, exactly. Yes, absolutely, So he, exactly. could, he still has a chance, although slim, he, he still has an opportunity to pull back into this game, especially with all those alloys. If he could start buffing up, because he's only five out of seven of his star base capacity, he can build up more star bases to get more naval capacity and just use all of those alloys to build up his fleet like crazy. Nominate Custodian is currently on the Galactic Forum floor and no one is voting against it. Holy crap. Sorry, I probably shouldn't have said the thing. No, nobody telling any of the players. Are you telling the players? I'm gonna, how dare you? Seriously, yeah, don't yeah, do that. No, Let's continue with life. No spoiler in, you no, know, intervention. Yeah, come on. They, they're halfway through. For the love of God, don't. Like, that's the thing. Everyone is ignoring the Galactic community. And if Fun Fun gets through, he gets another 10 points. And that extra 10 points currently would put him in second place only eight points behind first place so so lease fire is actually going along with this right now though mm. they must be supporting each other fun well, where's fun fun the same federation <gasps> fun fun only has fun fun has six systems this is a player with six systems that is it lease fire just lost a ton of diplomatic weight what did he just do uh he lost fleets maybe did he lose his fleets no, he at least five less 27k Diplo weight. That doesn't seem that well, bad. Well, he had like 28, 29, and then it would jump down to 25. They may have been fleet. Maybe he put some happen. envoys in or took them out. I'm not sure. He says, wait, I was weakened after Mulza. Lease fire. I, you, you, I hope you're not watching the stream right now. Because <clears throat> that would be naughty and wrong and terrible. And don't do it. Let's see here. Where is his envoys? His envoys are in... The, no, only one of them is in the Galactic Council. He's currently... Oh, I should talk about what's in the prize pool, actually. Oh, a lot of people have gifted subs to you as well. That's beautiful. You've just been gifted a bunch of tier one Five. subs. Five. Five tier one subs by Q2. Thank you, Q2. I really appreciate that. I, I would have said something, but I I don't think that's appropriate to do on... <laughs> while, while we're casting, I apologize. No, please do. Please do. Sorry. No, I've been saying things and people have been... Chat, super chatting or uh, membershiping, which is it's your it's your show, and I'm a guest on the show. Versus, oh no, please, know. no, please, though. Cause, I mean, you, you need to say thank you to the people that are supporting you on your own. Otherwise, you know, why would they support well, you? Then, in that case, everybody who stopped by my stream today, I really appreciate you being here. It means a lot to me, especially when you guys give not just visual support but monetary support. Thank you very much for the subs. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys for being. And on my end, thank you as well, too, for my subs <laughs> and other things. Well, no, I mean, basically, <laughs> that money things, is going... Th that, that money is basically directly going to paying for the prize pool. I, I can't lie here. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm putting... So, 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 talking about the prize pool, what have we got in here? We have three keys for Stellaris Overlord, donated by Paradox. Thank you very much. Especially Mordred, if you're watching, thank you very much. Three keys for Stellaris Toxoids, donated by Paradox. The Stellaris Ultimate Bundle, which is worth... I don't know. I think it's got like every other DLC other than Toxoids and Overlord plus the base game. That's in the prize pool. Also, five um, items from the Montu Plays merchandise store. They're in the prize pool. Whoa. -ho. Um, you can get yourself a Montu Plays t shirt or a phone case. Yeah, we have merch, Simus. Uh, welcome to the future. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm working towards it. <laughs> I'll have no. a mug and a t-shirt eventually. <laughs> oh, I don't have mugs yet. I need to get mugs. That is something I need to get. Sorry, that is a so, thing. So yeah. I have this I have a really cool mug idea. All right. Oh, yeah. You, you, I'll, I'll let you in on the secret. All right. All right. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a mug, but it has a mustache on the one side. It's a okay. black mug with a white mustache. Okay. That way, you know, whenever you drink, it looks like you're drinking with a mustache. Okay. Yeah, don't worry. I won't steal that idea. That's all yours. You're oh, good. Wow. Okay. You, you keep that. Wow. That's a, all right. you, you're all yeah, good, buddy. Yeah, you keep that idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's all don't worry. That's I won't all steal yours. It. I'm okay, good. Yeah, I feel we're really good. awful for having even said that out loud. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. It was, a, it, was, it, was, it was an idea. It was an idea oh, that oh, someone I'm, has had. 
<laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure someone else It was one of the ideas. Me. No, not someone else. I just mean it was one of the ideas that a person has had. You know, like like right it, now, it is an idea we're streaming that now a game that people are playing. Open. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It is a movie that exists. It is a, <laughs> is it a thought that now has coalesced. Uh, in the top right, uh, Fabinaski right now has finished the start of their mega structure, the first level, and hasn't started the second. And I was looking at their alloy count, and I see are they that they're currently selling 300 alloys a month right now on the market. Whoa. Oh, to balance that energy income. Because they are suffering from energy stuff. Oh my goodness me, yeah. Why are they not upgrading it? I mean, they're going to get a point from being at level 2 interstellar assembly, but, you know. They just they just lowered it. They were, like, in the 84 days for, like, a the entire galaxy. The entire galaxy is not paying attention to the custodian. Oh, no. It's there is 60 days. That is 10 points. And the entire... Basically, th this is beautiful. The galaxy is simply derped and allowing somebody to become the custodian, giving them unlimited community power. Why is the deployed drop so much? Maybe their fleets got killed. I think Fun Fun fleets got hammered. Yes, his fleets are now much, much smaller, but no one is voting in the community. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. He just did it. He just did it. He just became the wow. custodian. I Holy mean, I'm not going to lie, I, I've, I've had a number of times where I've played this game that I have just Holy completely crap. forgotten that the council or, like, the votes even existed for, like, a good 30 years until something passes. I'm like, wait, what? Something, and something now, happened? And now they someone is trying to unseat, try to unseat him. unseat him. Unseating is also worth 10 points as well. Oh. So they, maybe they let him in because they think they can push him out. Maybe. But here's the thing, though, is that Fabianski is going to get those points and nobody else is. Right? Exactly. Nobody else who exactly. votes for it also thing is, though, gets If the custodian it. votes for anything else, the, the Khan just spawned. Right, yeah, 82 and the Khan just spawned. That is amazing. The Khan can now spawn the and they just spawn. He Look at this. The Khan has like 200k fleet power and they are on the move. Oh my goodness me, ladies and gentlemen, the Khan is on the way and Carlson is the first in range. Yeah, that Carlson Tomb World... That tomb world, which now has something around it, is going to be decimated by the Khan's forces. So you didn't oh, see this. So this next to the Khan in the top left, the Arich system. You weren't here when this happened. You see the size 18 tomb world called Arich Prime? Do you see that one? Let me see here. 18, Just left of the Khan. In Carlson space. Literally adjacent to the planet. Tomb world. Uh, no, adjacent to the Carlson space. I am apparently blind. Do you see Carlson in the top left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at the Arich. Arich. The, the southernmost system. A-R-I-C-H. Yeah. There's yeah, yeah, one yeah. planet in that system, Arich Prime, that has is inhabited. It's a tomb world. The oh, bottom right oh, corner of the system. I was yep. looking for a world that wasn't inhabited no, no, no. So, because so, most people can't Do you want to know what happened world? with that? That was a primitive world with 26 pops on that that oh, that man. um that Carlson was racing for. While en route, while his armies were en route to subjugate the planet, the planet went they nuclear and up. they killed themselves <laughs> and blew themselves. Exactly. It was so <laughs> awful. It was so oh, upsetting. No. He was so close to getting so many pops and they nuked themselves into oblivion. Oh, man. Like, they were on the cusp of galactic dominance, in essence. Like, th those that species would have ruled the galaxy, maybe. Who knows? Um, oh, here the Khan goes. The Khan is on the march. And there's a wormhole. Where does that mountain. wormhole go? That wormhole leads straight into, <gasps> into Boris's space. The Khan is about to go and attack no. Boris on the right-hand side. And no one is going to see this coming. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Boris Boris probably does not have his fleets anywhere in position. Where right are now. Boris's fleets? Where Boris. is Boris? The Khan has come through. The Khan is through. Yeah, the there we go. 40k. Through. Just 40k, but more will come. You can Boris bet your not life. his fleets to engage yet. This is going to be a galactic pain in the butt. Oh, God. What a wrench in the works. Let's take a look at where the horde is right now. And there's another there's another wormhole that goes to the Aurelian system. The Great Khan has jumped through to the eastern side and is now in between Least Fire and Amazing Space Jesus on the eastern side of the galaxy and is attacking. <laughs> the Khan oh, has become man. a threat yeah, to the galactic. AI this is amazing. This is so good. Near wormholes. Declare crisis, it, Uldar clone armada. Yeah, know, Hold, right? time out, time out. Go back to the galactic community. 
Supreme Liberators oh, is just... We just lost a player, it looks like. But Ulmar Clone Armada, who's that again? That is... That is Least Fire. Least Fire is in first place, is about to be declared a crisis, and therefore every single player in the galaxy will be in a total war with Least Fire, who only has a few systems. Well, it may be a forced total war, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be doing anything actually against them. They have to, no one is voting know, against this though. Against fun Fun, no, Fun Fun is voting for this. Oh wait, oh sorry, no, that's sorry, no, that's environmental ordinance waivers. Sorry, sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. It is Monga and it is Silas, Spy Salads, and Dino Stance of Silas's vassal who are voting for a war against Least Fire in the top right. Uh, David says, now the real fun begins. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> now Do this is that? blood racing. <laughs> the only good bug is a dead bug. The only good oh, bug is a dead bug. The is I currently say. taking territory and uh, building structures. He is claiming wormhole space. Wormhole space is very dangerous against the players because it is really hard to start keeping them contained because they yes. can appear on the other side of the map, oh, especially absolutely. when players currently don't have jump drives, and I don't think anybody does yet. No one does, no one has jump drives. Th those, th this, oh, they've uh, the Ariok system, they've taken it. Eric Prime, they are currently bombarding, and I think they're about to invade it with their with the forces oh, they have. No. This is bad for Carlson. Oh, Carlson is not doing well diplomatically. He is low down. And, and now the that there's is... been a, a crisis declared in the galactic community, I don't think that you could put another vote towards the Khan. I think the Khan can't be declared a galactic crisis during this time. And even then, I think it wouldn't help. They get some if they declare the Khan a crisis, it's, it wouldn't really help anybody. And the thing that's the thing: the players are mainly going to well, ignore the true. Khan because killing the Khan doesn't really give them anything. So the Khan is going to be if this the, kind if of the annoying threat. A crisis, they don't get any points. No, 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 no points in this. It's about killing. It's about oh. it's about other players and how powerful you are. So if the Khan is hurting you. You have to kill them but you don't get anything for doing so. What about the L cluster? You get points for opening the L cluster, five or 10 points, okay. something like that. So opening the L cluster is definitely worth something. Oh yeah, the Khan relic though, that would be, that could be very bad. Oh my goodness, almost lots of people are now supporting declare the Ildar clone Ar Armada a crisis. Human pacifist, so that's Momonga. Spicy <laughs> salads, so that's Silas. Uh, 3.1 megahertz, Neverborn enclaves. It's, it's on the floor. Is it on the floor? No. It just got repealed. The custodian, the custodian yep. just stepped in and held it back. That is amazing. That I is had a feeling that play. they could. Although, although remove I find custodian it term limit. They're now trying to push through. The custodian is trying to push through removing term limits so they become the galactic emperor. Oh my goodness me! They're going to push for the emperor, and they have. They might have the diplo weight to do it. Yildar. Oh, oh. So, so Yildar was about to be declared a crisis. I believe Yildar is yes. now supporting removing the, cu the custodian limit. Because so the custodian has said, yeah, there was a deal that they probably what I'll, happened. I'll, the custodian I'll repeal said, I'll... this if you support me. Exactly, exactly. Or at least I'll hold it up. It gets now held up for 1400 days. So that's like uh, half a year, uh, four or five years. And in before that time though, remove custodian yeah, term limit will, will end up on the floor. For the exactly. And, and the custodian, if it's passing, the custodian can end the session early for influence, which they probably will do. I can't see why they wouldn't. Fun Fun has is Although making if the 16 rest influence of the galaxy a month. Pools together, they would have more than enough to stop this. He's gonna have to make a deal with another player, or hope that they just don't recognize that it's happening again. Real humanoid just disconnected. Did they drop out, or what's happened? Hydration request. Hydration check, everybody. Chat, hydration check. You no, know, you get you probably have water next to you. And you've been there for hours and you haven't touched it. Take a swig. Don't worry. I have hydrate. some things close to it's mostly water. It's like eight percent uh, no four and a half percent not water, but it's very close to water. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm not so the thing is though, so I also need to have dinner. Because I haven't had dinner yet, so this is this is my liquid dinner. So I do need to have the calories. That's that's why I'm here what, for. It's what the you, calories. What are you having for dinner then? Alcohol. Oh, what what would you like to have for dinner? Oh, I'd love. I don't know. I'd have a Chinese. I'd have an Indian. I'd take anything. Ooh, Christ, Chinese. I'd love it. Oh my God, okay. I'd love some food. Um, oh, but man. no. So carbs. I anything carbs. Any right? carbs. <laughs> Just give me some carbs. That's why I'm drinking the alcohol for the carbs. Well, the thing is, I've been live for now five hours, and I joined only a couple of hours after I had lunch. I had a bit of a late lunch, so then it was like, well, I wasn't really hungry for dinner. I had a little snack, but you know, it's not, it's not the same. 
You know what I find interesting is that the Khan does not have to worry about having negative stats of any sort. He's he's over capacity on naval. He's got no minerals, <laughs> no energy credits, and the Khan's just just keeps I on live. trucking. But they are allowed to he have worlds. He doesn't get any. He doesn't get any negative modifiers from that. He's just like I attack, I attack. I don't care. <laughs> There Heaven is Sean a is large armada group over there on the left-hand side. Or it looks like a large one, but that's because it's a ton of Corvettes gathering up on a giant death stack by Silas. Silas is making a death stack of Corvettes, and he's going to try to take out the Khan before it becomes a problem. Granted, it's right Silas next took to his, his world's own territory. Back. Silas did take his world's back. I mean, Silas has a lot of fleet power here. Also, the Khan's fleet power is bloated because those ships are less powerful than they seem because they, they're they not that good. The Khan is really taking a chunk out here of Boris here, though. The Khan has taken four systems and a planet. The Khan has taken Setuar Prime and is having a great time, it looks like. All praise the Khan. Huzzah. All praise the Khan. Does the hello there do anything? Did, did you hear it? D does one do anything? Oh, I click. I I don't know what's going on with my sound alerts. Uh, it might be because of the internet disconnection that I had. But uh, ah, okay, my... okay, fair. Hold on, wait, wait. Audio browser. Let's see. I mean, my chat I, won't I hear reset, it, but your chat in theory will hear it. Says, but not oh, okay. Screen, yeah. Is Simus TV Silas? No, Simus TV is not Silas. Silas is Silas. No. And Simus is Simus. Note the difference in letters. Would be my comment. Yes. Um. Yeah. And maybe voice. <laughs> uh, and the voice, yeah, sorry, and the voice. Simus and Silas sound different. That's very true. I don't know what Silas sounds like, so actually, I don't know that. Silas could, you and Silas could have the same voice. Who would know? Maybe we are the same person, and I'm double dipping right now. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> what, what a phrase. Um, so, Carlson's now in first on, on Observer score, but definitely not first on any other score. Silas, a Silas is going for the throat right now. He's going for the Khan's home territory. If he takes it out, he will get the Khan bonus. He'll but get he, he'll get the throne, but so what? He doesn't get anything so from the what? throne. He doesn't get any extra D points from it. Can't you spawn a fleet? Uh, no, you get, extra, you, extra, you, extra, you get extra fleet power, and you can change your vassals to have a different vassal type, a satrapy. Actually, in the rules, I don't think we technically allow satrapies um, because it will count as a specialist type. Hmm. I wonder where the Khan's fleet currently is actually right now. It is Where on the is other side right? of the galaxy in Boris's space. I see. And he has like nothing left. He's got like 30k. It's, it's just like it's tiny. him and three Him and dudes. his four friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, is the Khan, no, Chosen the Great Khan, it's just his one ship and then his fleet with, I said him and his four friends. It's his one fleet and then it's his friend's fleet with four ships. Oh, I love this music. Let me just turn. Khan's up. about to get taken out. Khan was definitely like turn, yeah. definitely threw a wrench in the works. I did not think that the Khan was going to be a major threat, but he certainly caused some problems for everyone. Yeah, it's been it's been an interesting kind of change of pace here. I think for sure. All right, Senate is now in session. The removed term limit has begun for the. It's vote. on the floor. Oh my goodness! And they and have currently have who tries to say no. The galaxy could say no if they bloody look. If they, and yeah, no if they one will paid look. attention. They just need to pay attention. And the problem is, oh, so the problem is here we have some players who play a lot on the ISS server. And on the ISS, um, basically most of the galactic community is banned. You just can't do it. It's not allowed in the, in the rules and people don't play it. Um, part of that was once I had an ISS game where I became custodian and then I started voting people the crisis to win. And that apparently was against, was not right so they banned it, it a little bit not later. kosher <laughs> not kosher no apparently apparently it was it was the opposite of kosher mm. kizzy is rebelling against mom momonga momonga currently right now is against remember we said uh, no one expects the roach inquisition they have now rebelled against momonga and momonga yes they have and momonga is now at war with them so kizzy is now at war with the overlord momonga only has five systems momonga is really in a tough spot here he has 120k fleet bearing down on him. It's in the Pell system. Uh, it's Fun Fun's fleets, and they are moving inexorably towards his demise. And he is bleeding energy as well. 500 energy a month, Momonga is losing. That is a lot. This community stuff, though, is wild. So Fun it looks Fun is like now in Silas second. has a couple of other players guaranteeing his independence. I wonder why they'd be guaranteeing. Oh, maybe that was a leftover leftover from before because i'm pretty sure that silas and momonga were not friends no they were they were in they they were jointly attacking other people 
They were both part of the League of Independence who were attacking others collectively. Interesting. And we're, we're well, 13 years away from the end of the game. going on from Momonga right now. I bet, the thing is here, basically, if, if no one takes out Least Fire, which I don't think they will in the next 10 years, he, won't, he might not win, but he'll podium. And unless anyone takes out Fun Fun, he's going to podium too. Those two players are too far ahead on score. Uh, Fabianski is also now as voting well. yeah, for against Fun Fun. I mean, they are fun fun. member of the Uwu. The Uwu Fabianski faction. is now against Remove Custodian. Acorn is for it. What is Acorn getting out of that? Wait a minute. Hold on. Fabianski was... He no. was for it. Now he's against, but he was... Was he for it? No, uh, I don't think no, that... it was... It was least fire and fun, fun together. the one it? that they were about to declare as a crisis. Exactly. So did he betray him? Maybe. We don't know if there was any background dealings. We're just no, no, it wasn't. No, it was the Yildar clone armada that were going to be a crisis. There are two players called the Ildar for reasons oh. I can't fathom. And now we have oh, two people oh, oh, against. I see. Yeah. Why is the rest of the galaxy ignoring this though? This is so. Oh, 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 oh! oh. I, it's starting to go. As oh, one they're moving. player notices, they people probably are start talking. They must all be the talking. other players. Okay, okay. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. We're, we're still a good, like, 300 days or, yeah, like, 400 days before they could uh, end this session. Actually, no. Can he end? He, do, he has the power to end it early now, right? Yeah, he can. He has. No, it has to be well halfway to through. So. has to be halfway yeah, yeah, yeah. through. It's, so he, yeah. he can end it in another 200 days or something. Yeah. So they only have a couple of hundred days, and then they cannot allow him to ever go above their, their weight. Because if they go even for a day, he can be like, end, for, end it, and I win. Even for one day. Yeah. You know, and it's so dangerous. It is dangerous. It is dangerous. Why is I'm surprised that they're not the trying to declare. Result. Wait, can you declare the custodian a crisis? No. Uh, no, I don't think so. Let me check. I'm pretty sure you have to be on the council in order to declare a crisis, right? No, I don't. No, you don't or have to be anybody. on the council. No, I think I think anyone can do it. Maybe not. Maybe you do have to Let's be on the council. Here. Let's look at somebody random, and then. We will see whether or not they have the option. <laughs> also, we didn't notice it, but Fun Fun has constitutional immunity, so he can never be in breach of galactic law. The custodian is not only the, democ the, the guardian of democracy, but also if he breaks the law, eh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> eh, it's not your problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Their trade league is at level three, so that means he's getting an additional. Who's the president? The president is Least Fire. Uh, okay, nah, it's not that helpful. He, someone in my chat saying he loves the Republic. So does he also get any sort of points for making a like a an edict fail that's in the galactic? Uh, no, no, you don't get points for failing something. If you propose something and it passes, you get two points. That's. Mm roughly it. well he's in a good position to just pass whatever he wants so if he can pass yeah he'll he just get points for passing. Up, he can keep getting points exactly also also if he manages to proclaim the imperium he'll get 20 points 20 and he can pro proclaim that next after removing custodianship term limit and the entire gal otherwise other than carlson in the top left here who's like kind of been shafted a bit by the uh, by the um, the horde still lives but only around Boris <laughs> and on the east side on the west side of the galaxy the horde has been completely eliminated but no one had wormhole drives or wormhole tech so they couldn't come to the east side over here and eliminate the horde where they where they live on the eastern side now that's kind of like the horde are like yeah we've moved we're, we don't, we're not westerners we're easterners get over it hmm. it seems that um... okay so they could we end the session are... now he could uh yep. fun fun could end the session if he wanted to but he hasn't let's see if he does problem is once he does declare crisis could be emergency measured by by momonga who proposed it and is also on the galactic council so he can use the emergency measure thing oh. it says you need to wait 900 days before you can declare another emergency measure i no, no hold on who was the one who proposed the, the Momonga, crisis? That was uh, Momonga. Momonga, but he hasn't emergency measured it. The point is, it's currently here in the proposal queue. It could be emergency measured after remove custodianship term limit goes. 
So oh, it was if I was, it was fun, fun. It was fun fun that made the emergency exactly. measure. Well, no, he didn't emergency. He just waited for it to come up, I think. He just well, waited. right now his emergency measure is on cooldown. Oh, is it? It is. So he used it on something. Oh, he did. So he's probably... Oh, it's 800 days. He's not going to have time. Um, how about... Who's the other member of the Why PC? Why is he so ending the session fire. early? He hasn't. Although I guess he doesn't need to end the session early, but... I'm, well, no, he does. Because if the rest of the community... Decides if the to rest say community no. wake up, oh, the great Khan just got defeated. Um, if the rest community wake so up and vote, it? no one yet because it has to be defeated twice. They're now going oh, to right, the great right, Khan right, is going right. to appear on the western side again, and then the community get another chance to fight them. That's right. So Fun Fun is on cooldown, but Momonga isn't. So if he ends this early, Momonga can push Declare Crisis straight in. I don't know why no one is voting against. Um, remove custodianship term limit. I, I really don't understand that. They should. They really should. Like a lot. He he should. He and he's he's floating influence right now. So there's no reason why he shouldn't. Oh no, it's no. not like so, no it, no. Yeah. If he ends it, then Momonga will push declare crisis straight onto the floor. But least fire. Least fire and oh, so both both of them in the community, least fire and fun fun, both have their emergency measures on cooldown. It is only Momonga that does not have the emergency measure on cooldown. So they basically if they push it through. Momonga will immediately emergency measure declare crisis, and they can't really do anything about it. What what he could do, what he could be doing, is trying to wait as close to that his own cooldown as possible. I think so. That way, he can try pushing something else to the front and not the crisis. I think so. I think. One second, let me just check. Uh, Although it's in... not him that's being declared the crisis, so why should he care? Uh, because I think it's he's, another player he's that's going to get them. kicked out of the game. He can freeze it. Oh. No, he can freeze, declare crisis, clone armada again. So what he should really do here, he's got the influence. He should freeze, oh. declare crisis. Then he should surpass the remove custodianship term limit. And then he should propose galactic imperium. Oh, there, he's frozen it. He's it's just frozen. frozen it. Yeah, he was just waiting like the I last said. minute. Freezes, passes what he wants, and then now he's going to pass what he wants. Oh my goodness, measure. did he push it through or not? I, I don't know. It's, it is. It's it. active. He's removed the term limit. So now, All right, so is he going to push now, forward the next one now? Now he can push through. In theory, he can push through Galactic Imperium. No, can he? Wait. Yes, proclaim Galactic Imperium. Yeah. He can yeah, attempt he to push it through, and then he can attempt to emergency measure it. I don't think he has the Diplo weight now, though. He's what he's done is too too provocative. Other people are now going to be note like you don't notice when you push through remove Council Tournament maybe. But you notice when someone puts yeah. Galactic Imperium on the floor. Also, if Galactic Imperium passes, every federation in the galaxy will be dissolved, and that will throw what the galaxy into complete diplomate? chaos. His diplomat is gone. His fleets, his fleets are gone. He's got 24k fleet power. Oh my word! Did he remove them or did he lose no, them? No, they just died. Look, um, Spice Silas and R are both attacking him to kill him. He is pushing through these reforms, and they have, they have decided the only way they can deal with him is a military solution. He has 22 Corvettes and a single Titan repairing, but they're about to be jumped by a massive fleet in the adjacent Aldib system. Interesting. He has he has 38 they jumped into right his now. capital. He He's too dangerous to be left alive. This happened in the prelims. The player that became the custodian was assassinated by the rest of the galaxy because basically oh he God. became custodian. They went, they were like, you know, they were like, you're under arrest. And then he was like, no, don't kill me. And then, you know, clearly the next bit was, He's too I dangerous to be left it. alive. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> And He's the rest of the galaxy. To be left alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, abolish Galactic Council. Abolish Galactic Council is now not on the floor, but a proposed voting agenda. If they abolish by the Galactic oregano. Council, by if they abolish the Galactic Council while the custodian is in effect, I think that means the custodian stays, but the council goes, and then no one has the power to challenge him. I actually think that could be a really big problem for the community. If they well, actually without push that diplomatic through. weight, the rest of the galaxy has more than enough to actually stop him. He was relying because yes. he went the supremacy route. That's how he was bolstering his. And he has Lord of War. 
125 percent from supremacy and lord of war now he has 700 which is nothing basically yeah but now he has no fleet power and the ships are coming so in all of those fleets gone. are coming in after him look they're all they're all now moving to the system where his ships are the, the, the galaxy has decided the line must be drawn here. Here and no further. Here with his poor, like, 29k fleet and his single titan. And they're moving in with he's 150k. On right and now. he's running away. He's running away, but they're under attack. There go the first round of kinetics of missiles. Nine crew, nine, it's all his corvettes he are gone. One corvette. Annihilated. The titan is opening fire and the titan is the titan running. Is trying to flee. It's doing serpentine It's doing a pattern. good job. It is doing a good job. Look at it. Oh, he ran away. Oh, he, he ran escapes. away. He managed to escape. I mean, Holy he's at 100% more exhaustion, so... Holy he's moly. He's got screwed there. Oh, man. I wonder fun, where the fun rest of his allies are. His side of the war at 100% war exhaustion, so... The yield, like, his... They his, could make peace anytime. His group anytime. has so much power, they shouldn't be able to fight this off, but they're not defending him. Because he's become the... He's overreached. He's put Proclaimed Galactic Imperium on the floor and no one is supporting it. Absolutely no one is supporting it. Uh, Unseat Custodian is on the floor unseat. instead. Momonga there we said go. no. Yeah, Momonga says no. And also Fabianski says no. And the community goes, yes, we all agree. He's too dangerous to be left with this power. Oh, man. And now they're just bombing his planets. <laughs> We've got nine years left of this war. Almost everything of his is currently being bombarded. I mean, unless invaded. they knock him out, unless they knock him out, which they can do, he still has quite a lot of points. He's got so, nine years left to live. If he can live for nine years, eight. doesn't he win? It's only eight now. Yeah, well, he won't oh, win, but years. he will come. He'll come at he'll, he'll come probably second place. Well, we, we have another round of scoring. Oh, that's so he probably right. won't another come second. Of scoring. That's right. He might that's come right. third or fourth, but that's still podium. That's true. He's got extra points as he managed to not only emergency measure, but then end early. He's got extra points for the Galactic Resolutions. Oh, the now, Ildar Khan next... is now agreeing to proclaim Galactic Imperium. It's now number one on the Senate floor to come next. But, but Unseat Custodian might have unseated oh. beforehand. Maybe not. Look, Momonga is now voting against the proposal to unseat the Custodian. What is happening? Silence. What deal has been made so that Momonga will vote that way? I don't know. If Unseat passes, Fabian will get 12 points and then Fabian will overtake Least Fire and come in first place. So if Fabian passes this, Fabian gets first place. That is, so basically the Custodian's Unseating is now worth a lot to a lot of people. It will oh, not- How many points Least is it fire. worth to Unseat? It's worth 10 points to Unseat plus two for your proposal passing. So it's worth 12 points in, points in total. Oh, so if you help to unseat, you get points. No, and no, no, so, no, no. You... So, so um, Fabianski proposed it. So if this proposal passes, he gets two points. And if you propose unseating the custodian and it passes, you get 10 points for unseating. Just the person okay. that pr presented the policy. So maybe they don't want to have it pass yet because they want to have them be the one that passes it? Uh, no, no, it's in whoever, whoever proposes it. So... The only person that gets well, the points for this points. passing is Fabianski. No, Fabianski, if, if Fabianski gets 12 more points, he's in first place. He's currently in third. With 12 more points, he ends up on 64 in first place. No, I mean, I mean, fun, fun. Now that he is the Galactic Custodian and is trying to become the Emperor, whether he's Custodian or not, he still retains those points, right? He retains the points, but if he loses Custodian, he cannot proclaim Emperor. Okay, fair, but removing him as custodian is the only way that they're trying to stop him from being emperor, but I don't think that is going to even be a thing. Like, everybody's now paying attention. I don't think that proclaiming the Galactic Imperium can even happen. If everybody says no, he has no power to stop it. He doesn't have anywhere near enough diplomatic weight, even with his... His ally has allies. some, but not enough. Yeah, exactly. And also, Unseat Custodian is now failing. The rest of the galaxy is saying, no, we don't want to unseat the Custodian because it gives too many points to Fabianski. So the, even Momonga is saying, no, we're not unseating them. And there's wars going on. I mean, the entire galaxy is also fighting right now. And we're not even bothering to pay attention to that. We're looking at the gosh darn diplomacy. What is happening? How is this a PvP game? I hear you ask. Um, don't worry, it is. Um, there's a massive engagement about to happen in Acorn Space. The Ildar clone Armada is fighting, is about to fight against Momonga. Momonga is chasing them ravenously. The Ter Meku Black Hole, they're now going to Rana. 
Momonga's going to be there oh, imminently. Do you see this, where I'm talking about, in Acorn yep. Space? They've jumped in. They're in the same system. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Do they get across in time, though? Is Momonga fast enough, or is he just too slow? They're so, oh, they're well, too I slow. Just saw Momonga just got annihilated in his home system. But he's still got, he's still got 300k fleet power in Rana. His home system is occupied. It is fully occupied. Oh my goodness me. Does Acorn have does Acorn have claims against him? Acorn has claimed not all of Momonga. That might be a mistake. He has the influence, but he hasn't made the claims. Now I need to take a brief bio break. I'll be right back. Alright. Again, hey everyone, if you guys are enjoying today, the best way for you guys to let Montu and I know is by going to the YouTube page that you are currently on. Actually, I guess I made it sound silly. Uh, like it, like the video, make a comment, let everybody know how much you enjoyed today and whether or not you'd like to see more. Or if you have a suggestion on what you'd like to see next or change, maybe make a nice helpful comment on that. Make it a little bit kind. Right, turn off Twitch, go to YouTube. No, 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 that's not what I meant. <laughs> Don't leave me, please. Don't leave me alone. Uh, but no, no. Actually, hold on. Actually, for my for my Twitch chat, I should probably have his YouTube page. Uh, YouTube. Hold on one moment. On to play. There we go. Here you go. <laughs> there you go. Go over to Montu, please. Make sure you like the video. The, like the stream. That way, uh, it helps him out. It does. Montu's grabbing another beer. The beer made him pee. <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, you know, that ma that makes sense. I mean, sometimes when you're, you're having a long work day, that is that is definitely something to do. Uh, looks like in Brahman right now, beer room, whatever, uh, Least Fire is gaining on <laughs> on the human fleet or the human pacifier fleet on Momonga. I'm still surprised at how strong those those weaponry are on his ship. Which weaponry? Sorry, whose who's weapons? Uh, the disintegrators. The oh, disintegrators they're, they're, they're so much more powerful in the current meta. The Great Khan just died. Who did he die to? I don't know. I'm going to have a look through everybody's relics until we see. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, oh, wait, Oregano has the head of Zar Clan. Oh, my goodness. Oregano should be able to do a lot of stuff with the Holy Guardians, but I actually haven't noticed that. Acorn has Blade of the Huntress. Ubi Hater has Ether Drake Trophy. Fun Fun has the Surveyor. Maybe it wasn't, a, it wasn't an AI that did it, was it? <laughs> no one, no, no one. I don't know who, I, no one seems to have the trophy. That's I odd. don't, that's really weird. Maybe he just got lost then. I don't know. That's really weird. That's really strange. Uh, I, I don't know. I do not know. Interesting. I'm pretty sure it just gets given to you, right? There's no, like, um, situation log event that you have to do? No, there's nothing you have to do. You just get it, usually. Yeah. Okay. Odd. It, I mean, it could have been a Fallen Empire. That's true. What, are there? There are Fallen Empires. Apparently, game, Fun Fun has it. One minute. Fun Fun. Yeah, let's just check Fun Fun. The Galactic Custodian. No, Fun Fun has the Surveyor currently. He doesn't have oh, Fun Fun has one planet left. He's about to die. Sorry, misunderstood. Fun Fun's oh. almost out of the game. Oh my he's, goodness! He's yeah, all his planets are currently <laughs> taken. <laughs> he's, yeah, he yeah. The, the Custodian, the the proclaim. He's trying. He's gonna. He's trying to proclaim Galactic Imperium. The galaxy is just going no. Sorry, no. Two to one. He's being outvoted two to one. His but allies Momonga have deserted him. him too. But Momonga's been completely destroyed. <clears throat> yeah, Momonga's not going to be able to sway it enough. Momonga now has no fleets left. These players. Yeah, Momonga's lost like, most of his... Wait, Wait what? You know, he's 260k. Go? Where did they just come? They came back. They went away and then they came back. Were they, strange. Were they lost? No, do I don't lost know. Do lost fleets count as current fleet They should do. They them? should do. I think. Oh, apparently the Khan died from old age, people are suggesting. He probably, he could have died from what? old age. 
That that happens. Is the Khan can die from old age? Yeah, oh yeah he can God. only live like 20 or 30 years or less in game, and he can start dying after the first 10 years, I want to say. <sighs> Uh, and he's basically he's the mule from um, uh, the Foundation series. That's that's who he's based on. So yeah, wow. if that means anything to you, I don't know if it does. Right now, Momonga still has more than enough fleet power to take back his own systems, but he has been staying away from his own space for whatever reason. I've seen him circling around his own territory for a long time. The Pangalactic Information Coalition is now bigger than ever before. Oh, no, sorry. It's R looks like a very similar color. R's got very big. Look at the size of R, actually. 300k fleet. But who's got the biggest fleets? Oh, Fabianski. Fabianski has the biggest fleet right now by 100k. Fabianski is very dangerous right now. All those disruptor ships are very strong. He's also bulking out. He is also bulking out with uh, auto cannons just to bulk out that fleet weight, I think. Oh. Trying to bolster up his... Uh, his numbers. Yeah. His numbers, he's at 16 yeah. over 8 starbase cap. He's at minus 1k energy per month right now. So much of that is from ships. He, has he not done supremacy? No, he... He, he, yeah, he's not. I mean, he's finished his supremacy tradition, but he's not changed his policy to supremacy. If he because did, he's at war, he's stuck in. He's in perpetual war, oh, so he just can't. can't. He's in three separate wars, and they've just gone to war with Kizzy. Or they they're defending against a war from Kizzy. Kizzy's just attacked them. Well, I have to say that uh, props to Fa Fabianski to actually getting a Science Nexus hub as well. <laughs> it's just a hub right now. It's it's not much further than that. It is producing 100 of each science, but uh, that's more points in his bank. Or, or her, their bank. Let's go to the victory screen. Uh, we're Apparently five there's been some away. issue at the moment with uh, some sort of war got uh, a peace deal came and it just didn't quite go correctly some people didn't get their claims or something like that i'm not entirely sure okay. oh most of the galaxy is now at peace i see and the claims didn't come through let's find out Go to the quick. Of this, uh... All right, so we're currently year 95, and there's a lot of. Comp so apparently, it was a, it was a secret fealty war. I just want to check out on exactly what that means. Yeah, secret fealty doesn't include claims. Is that a, a design bug or just? No, it's just a fact. Interesting. Okay. Do you, is there extra points for taking out a fallen empire? No, no, you just get the fallen empire tech. It is its own ah. reward. Beverly, I'm just going to jump in and chat with Yernsax briefly. Um, just to confirm what I'm thinking, if I can find him. Hi, Yernsax, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm just moving the stream so I don't have to listen to my own voice. Ah, okay, fair. Um, so basically, that apparently it was a secret fealty war, and I've looked it up. Secret fealty doesn't include claims. So, so that's they got why... the claims for the system they had control of, though, but they didn't get the systems that they hadn't yet controlled in the surrender terms. So, like, he got I, all I think the that's systems except the one they hadn't fully taken. I think that... Uh, I'm pretty sure secret fealty doesn't even include claims, though, so I'm... Hmm, Again, I'm it seems like they surrendered... If, if, if it's a bug, it's a bug. We can't, uh, we can't do anything about it. I don't think we can do anything about, about it. No, exactly. I think we need to continue because... Uh, if that is. is how Secret Fealty works, um, um, now the players know. By the way, that system was not taken either. Uh, uh, no, so it was gonna... almost taken. That's what we were looking at. It. The ground company was about to finish. So normally in the surrender, they would have lost it in the surrender. But I guess Secret Fealty is special. I don't think Secret Fealty automatically includes all of the claims. It doesn't... Uh, I'm looking at the wiki here and it doesn't even it doesn't even talk about 
what happens to claims. So I think claims are like a secondary effect. If you have them when the war ends, if you actually occupy them, then I think you get them. Otherwise, I don't think they actually matter. Looking here at the wiki. Because I can't remember. Anyway, actually having we, done we it. can't do anything about We're going to continue. That is, how, exactly. that is how the game works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks, yeah. but that is how the game works. All right, I'll run away again. Hello! So, I just had a quick chat with Jern Sax after looking through the wiki. Basically, what it is, what it seems is, if you have a secret fealty wall, what happens is, is that you only get the claims that you've actually occupied if someone surrenders. They, you have to occupy them even though they surrender. They don't just give up all their claims. Maybe it's a bug. Really? Maybe not. But, um, yeah, that seems to be what happens, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. That doesn't sound like it's meant to be that way, but it might. I think it might be. I think it might be because they, they screwed around with Secret Fealty quite a bit in the end. Um, so who knows? The Federation, the Purple Federation, the big one, they used to have stuff on the western side of the galaxy. They don't have stuff on the west anymore, except Please Leave by 013. Otherwise, like Silas was a member and um, the custodian. Wait, the custodian still exists. They didn't take the custodian out. That's the problem. Oh, oh no. They thought they were no, going to take I the custodian know. out because they, they, they ended the war, but they, they had claims, but they hadn't actually taken every planet. So they didn't get the custodian's capital system, which is what I think oh. the issue is. It looks like the proclaimed uh, Galactic Imperium Momo <laughs> Monmoga, sorry, Momoga, uh, just dropped, changed, changed sides, sides and then changed sides again. Oh my goodness. They, they were for it, and then they were against it, and now they're for... Well, no, sorry. First they were against it, then they were for it, and now they're against it again. It's hard to, it's hard to keep up with that. It's very hard to it, keep it up is. with what's going on there. There's so much... There's about to be another to Galactic up. Council election in 100 days. We're about to get Momonga and Leasefire kicked out. The Custodian can't go, and then I think we'll get Ildar Guardians and R, so that's Fabianski and R are both going to be joining in. And they'll get five points apiece for that, too. Uh, so, my chat is wondering, Montu, mm -hmm. uh, if they wanted to join this kind of chaos next time, what would they need to do in order to participate? They'd need to sign up and play in the prelims. The sign-up sheets and there was an announcement and all that stuff about two weeks ago, I want to say, two and a half weeks ago. We had the prelims over the last week, and then anyone that came in the top four in the prelims has ended up today in the final. We have five preliminary sessions, each with 20 players, and the best four of each of those 20 players has now ended up in this final. So... Yeah, um, there'll be another. I think we're going to have another tournament in January. I mean, as I said earlier, I, you weren't here, but I asked people if they were watching this and they wanted to sponsor or somehow be involved in the, the, the prizes for the next tournament that they should get in touch with me. I've had two people reach out to say, hey, how do I, how do I kind of do that? Uh, they're interested. So fantastic. It looks like we're going to have another tournament in January with some sponsorship that isn't just me and Paradox. So that's a lot of fun. So, hold on, I, I'm seeing here. Oh, thank you, by the way, Montu, for the information. I appreciate that for myself and chat. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Heaven Shard, the Heaven Shard War, which is Carlson, yeah. in, in the north, had declared an offensive war against three other empires and is now losing. He's going to lose terribly here since they have nearly all of their fleet might together, except for apparently oh, wow. one fleet. That oh, and the Alioth system. They've all the 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 Ildar Guardians yeah. have joined up in the Alioth though. It's going to be a bloodbath. Procyon it is, is going to they're going to get destroyed at Procyon. Oh, they've jumped in. Here we go. Oh no, those they're Corvettes. Out of, they're though. out of position. Oh wait, no, wait. and then the rest of them just joined. Why is this? Yeah, no, his there's was one late. Corvette. No, the oh, whole Corvette fleet. Oh, the rest just turned it. up. Some of them ran away. This is such strange behavior though. Look at them dance around like chickens i don't know some sort of oh, he's giving bird. a moment he's giving micro commands right now he's and there to... we are they're about to be Why caught they're just away? about to get caught are they under attack no, no he's not running someone oh, else is waiting one for ship just there we go <gasps> look at those disruptors knock them out oh my god absolutely slaughter. completely eviscerated absolute they're done. it done. didn't even last three days moments and all those ships look at these ships explode they must have had high track oh my goodness they must have had massive tracking absolutely destroyed Next oh, I no promised I'd post a link to the Discord, my Discord. On side. Sorry, I also promised I'd post a link to my Discord in the break, and I forgot to do that, so I will put a link up right now, because that's that's my fault. If you want to join my Discord community, there's a link to, in my chat right now. You can jump on in. 
Um, these things were also announced there, these tournament type things as well. We play a game roughly every Saturday. Two of you are interested in that, so. I just posted Ooh. in my chat, uh, Montu's Discord link. If you are interested in participating in any of these multiplayer games, definitely do go check that out. You don't have to if you don't want to, but it's there if you need it. Seven years left. Amazing Space Jesus is lagging a bit. Ildar Guardians, has, a lot of people are pushing up now for score. It's going to be close. It's going to be quite close. Kizzy was so far ahead early on, and now she's unfortunately just dropped slightly too far behind. She, not having we're, that tech weight, I think, is really We have two and a half years until the away end of the game. Away from the end, exactly. Right now, Yildar is up on top, but with, with what had happened with the council, we could definitely see a swing in in control here especially since the senate imperium the galactic imperium which won't pass unfortunately as of this moment is only 300 days away from finishing and no one's gonna be able to have the time to push through another proposal there's only two and a half years that's not enough time so galactic imperium is the last piece of legislation this body can pass and they are emphatically saying hell no <laughs> well unless somebody decides to swing from the no side to the yes, so then it could definitely swing in their favor. There's still a couple of abstaining votes. And Fun Fun is trying his hardest right now to build back up his diplomatic power. His only shipyard is pumping out as many ships as he can, just tons of Corvettes. Let's actually see if he changed his ship design to see if he could pump. Yep, he's using auto cannons on his Corvettes so he can pump out as much diplomatic weight as possible. I don't, really, I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference, but it's definitely starting to swing a little bit more towards that center line. 200 days remaining, and the game, it might lagged out. What's going on? Space Jesus is lagging out right now. Uh, or or it's me. Montu? I see Space Jesus massively lagging out, yeah. Sorry, the sudden silence was very worrying for me. <laughs> You thought you were gone for a moment. You're like, I see someone oh, I lagging. Thought it was. No, no, no conversation. Uh... Yeah, I'm like, uh, is it just me? And then looks like no Space response. Jesus disconnected. Ah, <sighs> he left or he, he's just disconnected. I'll try and find that later, but I think we're just going to keep going because it's so short. We're going to keep going because it's two and a half years away. Yes, but exactly. the rules are still the I'll rules. Find out. So find out how he's doing and what's going on, and yeah. Oh, Rubuta, I think that's what you were asking about. What days are the preliminaries? Is that what you meant? So, so for, for the prelims of this one, it was it was last week. We had them in the week. Um, we had uh, 6 p.m. European time, three of them. And we had 6 p.m. American time on the East Coast, three of them. Uh, sorry, two of them. So we have five prelims, two American time prelims, three European time. Next, the next one, what we'll probably do is we'll have prelims over the weekend. So we have like a midday European time, evening European time, midnight European time. So that, you know, Americans can join and Europeans can join and people from all over the world can join at all times, basically. Well, Something it like doesn't that. look like this is going to pass. We have 130 days left on the vote and less than two years. They are pushing their diplo weight the up, though. Look at their diplo weight go 130, 31. I don't think they're going to make it. Has Fun Fun turned all of his edicts on? Baby's just died. Fun Fun has turned on diplo grants, fleet supremacy, bureau of espionage. It's not going to help. Oh, he's it's not going to help. <laughs> Fun Fun is still only using. 12 of his 13 envoys. He still has one remaining that he Why? hasn't decided. Why he has might he be put waiting. it in? He should, no, he's, I think he's just not realized. He's still at 12 out of 13. He hasn't put it in yet. Not that it there are, He's got to 148. He's got a 75k. He's pushing 152. They are pushing so hard. They have days left and they might make it. Oh my goodness he has, me. He's not using it. Why not? Put one more. It's just one more. Come on. It's so Ten, close. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It failed. He failed. The Imperium has not it. been declared. We did not get Imperium try oh. happening in this run through. Goodness gracious me. Oh, and the wars are basically over. The galaxy is pretty much at peace. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get some we're gonna get some big score changes in a moment <laughs> at year at 2300. The final the final round of scoring. And nobody opened the L gate. I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> All right, this has been interesting. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Rebude. I, 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 I just, I see something that's not efficient, and it, it kind of upsets me. You know, 12, you have 12 out of 13, you have 13 envoys, right? And they're all in there except for one. And that last one could have made the difference. He was only like about... He was 10K 10, behind. 000, no, he was 10,000 10, short. What, one wasn't going to give him... I mean, he's at an extra one. He's at 20, 22,000 base weight. So 10% there would be worth, what, 2,000, I think? Something like that. 2,500, maybe. Maybe, and that's, you know, it's 25%, but it's still not the whole way. Yeah. Well, I mean, when they were, when they were pushing for every little bit they can muster, I'm surprised that they didn't put that in there to get that little bit extra. Now, his diplomatic weight is rising quite a bit now. And do they get points based off of how much diplomatic weight they get in each... Uh, yes. Yes, yeah. Whoever period? has highest diplo weight gets points. Diplo weight okay. is the... If you look at the score, diplo weight is the fourth track on the score breakdown. I see. Yeah, he, they're definitely going to get... I mean, fun score. fun here, of Six his 57 down. score, tw 30 of his 57 score, so over half is all just from... Dip, uh, sorry, 28 of his 57, so just under half, is all from Galactic Community stuff. And that's before we even look at Diplo weight. So, like, he's got 10 points from Council, 10 points from Custodian, 8 points from Passing Resolutions. He has pushed this to the max. Everyone Everybody's now is trying to push their fleet power and right at the end. Can. Exactly. Just to try and get over that. Kizzy is at war. That war is not going to be ending though anytime soon. He reached 100. Soon. He's at 107,000 now. Holy moly. Fun, He's fun. Pushing. He finally used the last of his invoice. He's at 15 out of 15. So. Why? Oh, he could have won with Custodian. He could have pushed he Imperium he through. He could have won it. <laughs> he could have done it. He probably, probably could have done it. I wonder if you've been making trade deals with anybody trying to, you know, get some more of their uh, their favors <laughs> to call them in. Oh, man. Yeah, they're definitely not going to be able to pass anything else, but they could still squeeze as much Diplo power as they can for those. Yeah, Unseat Custodian won't go through. I mean, it's a very close fight right now, but it, it, they don't have time. They've got two, two months. months left. Yeah, less than 50 days now. And we're, we're going to finish exactly on time. We said... Place. Every 10 years should be 30 minutes, and we've gone through 100 years in five hours. So that's pretty much perfect, even with the breaks. Um, Impressive. Been good. Impressive game. F in chat for those who couldn't make it to the end, but we appreciate them being here. And I wonder who's going to win. I'm watching the score now. We've got a few days left. Here we go. Yeah. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Is Montu alive? Someone in my chat saying, yeah, yeah, I'm alive, but we're watching. We're watching. Okay. We're wrong. Right. Days. This is, oh, this is it. This is it. Who, who, who's got the... And there we are, Fabianski pushes through into the lead, it looks like, oh so. Oh my god. Like, like running a race at the very end, you stretch your neck over the line to get that photo finished, just pushing through. He's making 3k tech. That's, it's the tech that pushed him over. He's getting so oh, many points man. from tech rate. So first place right now looks like Fabianski. Second looks like Least Fire. Third looks like Fun Fun. Fourth looks like Silas. And fifth looks like it's going to be R now. I'm just going to confer. We'll bring Yonsex in and just um, confer. Actually, I'm just going to ask people not to leave, basically, because we're going to go through the prize pool in just a moment. Um, bear with me. Hello, everyone. just a moment, guys. Um, don't leave immediately. We're going to. I'm just going to confer with Yonsex. Oh. We're going to confirm the winners list, and then we're going to go through the prize pool and sort out prizes. So um, don't leave yet. And then once we work out the top five, everyone else can probably go, and then the top five probably need to remain so we can work out the prizes, but I'll, I'll be right back. I'm just going to have a quick chat with uh, Jern Sachs. I'm going to pull you into a different channel. One moment. Well, uh, it looks... Oh, you can. There, there's no child breakers to deal with? From what no. I there was, I, as far as I know, we haven't had any rule breaks recently. Nothing like that. Nothing seems to have been broken. The mega structures seems to have scored correctly. Yes. The former homeworlds have scored correctly. Um looking through everything seems to have been correct with the mod so i think we can proceed and announce the winners right just gonna do one search for cybrix alpha hmm just to check it's not there i'll just jump in to uh, bring simus into the main thing one minute all right so we're just doing one search for something um i recommend you come and join the team five chat um in a moment right. simus so you can hear the the whole prize give out could you sounds good Let's jump down there. Then. Yes, everything looks correct. So, Fantastic. Fabianski winning. Leaf yep. Fire second. We'll go into Channel 5 then. Uh, yeah, we'll jump in Channel 5 and announce it. Hello. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me just turn my local music down to make it more of a serious occasion. So, you've probably already seen the score. We've now confirmed, unless anyone needs to raise something, that there have been no rule breaks recently. There have been no current issues with the scoring in terms of uh, the scoring systems and the mods. Nothing seems to have failed. And the score stands correctly. So in first place, unless anyone thinks that something has gone wrong, please say so now. But I'll take your silence to assume that that's not right. In first place, with 77 points is Fabianski. Congratulations, you've, you've won. Uh, in Thanks. second place is Least Fire with 72 points. Just edged out of first place. They're right at the end. It's a nail-biting nail finish. Fun Fun in third place. Uh, spiced Salad, so Silas PT in fourth place. And in fifth place, R. Um, so if you five could remain, because we're now going to go through the prize draw where you select your prizes. Everyone else, thank you so much for joining. I can also say that we're going to be hosting another tournament next month in January. Everyone that's played today will have a guaranteed spot in one of the prelims. Um, so you, you'll have a guaranteed spot. You'll be given the option uh, around 24 hours before they go, they go live for everybody. And you'll get the chance to sign up for the, the sessions you want to sign up for um, before time. So thank you very much for joining. Congratulations um, and good job, everybody. Thank you for organizing you. the tournament, Mr. Mont. And you, Senex, as well, for hosting and, you know, doing what needs to be done, I guess. And thank you everybody else for playing. It was so much fun, so much intrigue and war. But in the end, congratulations to all all five who won. I hope you pick nice prizes, and see you in the next tournament, I guess. Thank you. Thanks very much, Boris. You're welcome, Mr. Montu. Sorry, Mr. Stellaris. I have, I have learned that the path of war is not the solution. The path of war isn't the solution, yeah. eh, Kizzy? No. You don't say Kizzy. <laughs> but I was surprised, Momonga. Your ship design. I'm going to study it. Like yes, the ship design was actually just auto design. I just saved it and <laughs> was not caring what the ship design you people need to study right now. Let me just find who it was. Um, well, yeah. he's not here. Lifeus. Lifeus is ship, ship design. design was so interesting. It was such. A, so he, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil. If you want to come back and watch it, I'll spoil it quickly. Basically, what he had was he had missiles and maximum uh, speed and artillery combat computers. So as soon as he engaged, his ships just ran away and fired missile after missile after missile. None of you people generally tended to have point defense. So he defeated fleets that were like 40 or 50% bigger because your ships couldn't get in range of his and he just kept running away and shooting more and more missiles. It was so strange. You guys forget it was like impressive. 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 Wait, who's, who's ships was that? Uh, give uh, more damage yes. to ship size. To ship size, no? No, they don't, but it's still good because guys you, they, they fly away about uh, my, my ship design you need uh hit range admiral and you need rapid deployment as well and double just to boost all of that movement and increase the range it was really yeah. a cool strat to see honestly also disruptors have annihilated everything they came up against in this this game as well <laughs> that anyone that had disruptors just yeah. kicked butt it was yeah, yeah. against much. ships against I was ships. surprised by that uh, I have a question, Montu. Uh, do you yeah. know how many clones were in the lobby? I think it was six. Something like six. Oh, my. In terms of who won, we had... Um, let me just double check this. But uh, Voidzeller, Hive. By Clone way, Army came not... first. Second place was Lease Fire with um, Clone Void... Clone Army? Clone Army as well. Sorry, yeah, yeah. And third place was Fun Fun, who Maybe had Void Dwellers. Void Dwellers, yeah. I'm just then, that. then we had another clone, and then we had a rogue server. A clone uh -huh. and a rogue server. So three clones in the top of the six or seven that played. Yeah. By yeah. the way, it was if... a coincidence that me and Lisa had the same name. Also, the Ildar. Yeah, it was very strange. It kept confusing everybody. You just probably picked the random name or something, right? I just wondered the auto generated one. Exactly. I'm, That's such I'm a PvP thing to I do, by the way. If fun, I will say if fun fun did die, it would be four clones in the top Among five. The... It would, yes. But unfortunately, so with that war type, unless you actually hold everything, um, even when they surrender, you don't get the claims. It's only with a conquest war goal that you get all of the claims when they surrender. Well, oh. I mean, we were about to lose like everything here. <laughs> yeah, I did the entire like, every single habitat, and you were like halfway through finishing killing like. 4k armies and like the last stronghold and 
We were just yeah, like, I, if, I had, <laughs> if I had seen the fin, I would have. But I'm... Yes. All right, yeah, so, so I have speaking. a question for everyone. Yes, Simus. When, when the Galactic Custodian was about to be voted, how many of you just missed it in the votes? I missed it. I missed it. I wasn't even paying attention. I don't attention. feel comfortable answering that question. <laughs> I, I was there. I was so there. the custodian got voted through uh, with about three players supporting it. Eight or nine players ignored it and two players voted against it. Two or three players. Like it was, they would have been annihilated and lost if anyone paid attention. But all of you were kind of busy fighting your wars and didn't quite notice. Somebody was like, dum da dum I'm going to make custodian. dum da dum da dum right in the background. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Next question, please. <laughs> You're on the back. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you finally noticed when they were proclaiming Imperium. Like, if you'd not noticed that, that would have been so awful if they got yeah, to everything. Was, was. Like, you did make it there in the end. All right, let's go to... So, first place is uh, Fabianski. You have... You've won yourself one T-shirt or phone case, including shipping from the Montu Plays merchandise store. Um, we'll work that out after the fact because, of course, you can pick what you want. Um, we're, we're proud of message, but you get 20 points worth of prizes from the prize pool. Now, if you can, if you're in the rules document, I don't know if you can see it, but the prize pool includes, um, and I'll just, I'll take a clip of this so I can put it on the yeah, screen. I, I see it. I see it. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I have um, an idea for what I want. Uh, well, uh, basically just, just, just tell us what you want then because, um, uh, your wish is our command as long as it combined equals the, the right number of points, basically. I think I would like the ultimate bundle. Yeah, 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 you want the ultimate bundle. So that's, that's Stellaris in every DLC up to and including Aquatics. Five points, you've got 15 remaining. Uh, then the one tox Toxoids and then the remaining in points into 10, 10 Yuri gift cards. Didn't we limit it to five gift cards per player, or did we not do that anyway? I guess we didn't. I mean, I can, I can, if it's too much, I can. Try. One second, no, one second. What's, uh, sorry, I don't think we did because each gift card is two points. Yeah, yeah, true, true. So, with your, so you said, sorry, you said five points for Stars Ultimate, Toxoids DLC. Correct me if I'm wrong that you said that one, right? Yeah, and then, and then uh, the remaining points, points into Steam gift cards. Yeah, so that's seven yeah. gift cards. That's so that's seven gift cards, yeah. So that's that's fine. There's still eight gift cards remaining. But let me just um I'm just gonna directly message you with those facts just so we've got it written. Montu, there. these uh these game keys, they were provided by Paradox, were they not? So the ultimate bundle, the Toxoids and Overlord, they were provided by Paradox, those seven keys. The Necroids, Apocalypse, and Nemesis were actually provided by Yernsax. Thank you very much to Yernsax in the chat. Um, the t-shirts, phone cases, they're provided by me, and the Steam gift cards are provided by me as well. So not only is Montu, uh, you know, putting forth his own money into this event for you guys, but Paradox themselves have also partnered with Montu in order to have this happen. So if you guys want to make sure that this happens again and these prize pools are something that people want, just go over to Paradox as well, go to tweet them, and let them know that you enjoyed today's event. <laughs> I yes, mean, somebody has to pay for idea. your second mention, one, two. <laughs> exactly. The first one. I need the first one first. We need to start with the no, first no, one. No, you already on. paid off the first one. That's the oh, I did. Thing. Sorry, no, I forget. No. I forget this. Here I am living in a tiny apartment in the Denmark, but I forget. I forget. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think Machu deserves a heart and chat, guys. Come on. <laughs> you're, th you're there. You got the keyboard. It's a, literally a hand away from you. You have one point remaining. Sorry. You have one point remaining, though. Uh, no, think, uh, no you don't. Sorry, six, five plus six. Yeah. Sorry, that's Toxoids. Yes, okay. That's a good point. Um, seven gift cards, Toxoids, and... Um, uh, maybe I'm well. biased, but I, I think where's uh, an early game, pre-contact where's uh, should give you points. But, uh, <laughs> I think you are biased. I... So, least fire. What would you like? You have a total of uh, 15 points, and you're getting a t-shirt or phone case. We'll, we'll discuss that after the fact, but you already get one of those included. Um, so don't you worry. One of those is coming your way. What do you want to spend your 15 points on? He doesn't talk. So oh, in, uh, yeah. in that like, case, write the, it in the chat. Team. You never know. Yeah, fair. in that case, write it in tournament final. Um, Boris is the least fire whisperer, though. I am, I am. I'm the sign language whisperer. Least fire should be disqualified. He's not a human being. We can who will be this or some, you know? He is artificial intelligence, actually. 
uh, fun fun said that he can't not cannot. Thanks for the hearts chat as I'm well. Sorry, I appreciate it. Really bothers to actually give him. Well, 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 I was quite surprised how well you were playing today. Yeah, you actually I got was... some score as well. So holy crap. And I actually lost Lease my fire? primitive war. Uh, Least Fire is typing. Well, Least Fire is typing. Ladies and gentlemen, Least Fire is typing right now. Here we go. Here we go. We're about to find out. Where is Breaking the list? Uh, where's, the, where's the list? All right. Here's the list. We did quite a lot of cooperation in our feather. Coordination was quite all right. Oh, our coordination was terrible. <laughs> we were super uncoordinated. Uh, my fleets were in Kizis Empire. Kizis fleets were down somewhere. It was a mess. Because we had to coordinate or we would have been dead. We had a lot of powerful enemies that came for us. I mean, just like my, my war at the end. I yes. almost defeated you there, UV. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why you didn't even bother declaring that one. So clear again that it will not be able to, to be finished. I, I just like hearing you complain about stuff. It's all very amusing. Ubi, it's about principle. <laughs> okay, that I can understand. But it was fun. I, I actually was very scared when I already lost my primitives. And then Kitty came with her Cold War fleet. <laughs> I was like, why? But but I managed to beat that fleet back with the station. That, that Starbase. Yes. I just after is. after after like uh after that Starbase happened, um a yeah. uber hater how did you feel when one of your guaranteed worlds was taken so early and they didn't even colonize it they put a, an observation post around it as a they, necrophage i imagine that was terrifying a pacifist they couldn't colonize it exactly they were stuck in orbit going oh we'll we'll, we'll look at it and they took it from you like what a kick in the teeth yeah but i did manage to unfortunately that set me behind quite a lot i thought i would be dead when, when that happened but I, I managed to pull through I did the best I could, but still... You had some help from Kizzy, though. <laughs> a lot of... Yeah. In it was an intense game. Like, I should have built more Corvettes, what can I say? Next yes. time, Kizzy. I'm surprised next time. Next time. Corvettes next there were in this game. Yo, uh, yeah. Montu, can you post a picture of what uh, the t-shirts and phone cases look like? I haven't seen them. Oh, um, absolutely. Not only can I post a picture of them, I will post the link to the montuplays.com the merch my merchandise website and just to say that we get a uh, a bot join the channel let me just kill it on stream. Uh, like show an image on stream of some t-shirts just to oh, show them all right let me just i'm looking forward to uh, seeing you here wearing the t-shirt <laughs> i'm gonna be disappointed oh, oh we can course. have the we can oh. have the winners of the Wait, which of one the of these tournament. guys are uh you want to God pardon damn. Which one of these two uh, guys are you here? Oh, I'm both. Space you know, I'm both. Both of them are my skin suits that, I, that I've worn on different occasions. It depends what time oh, of the year it is. Um, here's a t-shirt, though, for chat if you want to see. You can get your own t-shirt right now. Check out the montuplays.com merchandise link in the description. If you need to obey, there's the t-shirt. Um, there's also phone cases. I'm not very good at obeying, as you said. <laughs> yeah. There's also phone cases. Uh, compliance is unisex is that t-shirt. And then there's also um, a Solaris Timelines T-shirt, Ministry of Timelines, two actually, and a and a phone case as well in a variety of different phone types. So actually, the break helped us helped us pretty much make a make a plan for your release once, you know. Sorry, so sorry. Uh, Least Fire well, says six gift cards and a T-shirt on top of the phone case. Right. That means we're now down to the next place. Um, and the next place is who's fifth uh, third place is fun fun hello fun fun come in fun fun hello, you have hello. 10 points you haven't automatically won a t-shirt what is remaining there are uh two toxoids dlcs three overlord dlcs necroids apocalypse nemesis two t-shirts as well as how many uh gift cards we left at seven uh, there's two more gift cards uh then i think i would like to yoink the two last gift cards for four points, like that's, uh, that's seven points. You've got three points remaining. <clears throat> uh, I'd like two t-shirts, actually. All right, then. So that is um, two gift cards and two t-shirts is ten points. That okay. is all the t-shirts gone, then. Wow, okay, fair. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, let me just... Uh, you know, they do see. look quite good. I mean, they, yeah, they, they're pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, let me just find you. I think you that's enough, price enough for both me and I to use all our points now. 
There are. Um, there's some overlap in DLC, actually. They'll have to take uh, more than one uh, Toxoid or Overlord DLC. Ah, uh, in that way. Yeah, I, saw, I suppose. Hey, can, um, can you write down what is left? There's uh, two Toxoids, yes. three Overlord, one Necroid, one Apocalypse, and one Nemesis left. I can, I can change my um, selection if you want the gift card or something. Just uh... oh, no, take it. Well, so next place, so next place is uh, Silas, and Silas has eight points. Um, we can give you multiples of the DS DLC you want, or if you want to, to be fair, what you could do as well is you could say, well, you could pass your points on to someone lower down that doesn't have the DLC if you don't want to take it. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, I, I that... think I'll do that because I don't need the DLC. Obianski, can we go uh, in Zapier channel, please? Yeah. Sorry, so Silas, does that mean you don't want to spend any of your points? I mean, the, uh, well, you have them I, all. So I have all the DLCs already. Ah, oh, okay. I'm sorry Can about that. Can I make that. a small request then from uh, Silas? Well, I mean, what might be easier then actually? So, R, do you want to pick your prizes? Then Silas can pick his DLC prizes and redistribute them to people in the, it, whatever he wants to in, in, in the in the tournament because they're his prizes. Yeah. Um, but R, what would you like? You got five yeah, points. Yeah, so I also have all DLCs. But what I want to do is that we have like community who is playing and not everyone have all DLC. Mm -hmm. So we can. You just want the codes to pass the... on? Yeah, yeah. I just would. I, I just would like. Fantastic. To post... Which codes would you like? You just tell me which codes you want, and I'll send them over. Um, you got five points worth of codes, basically. So, what would you yeah, want? Yeah, just, just, just let's let's do one of each. Like, I don't think uh, it's a matter. So I can well one of each. I, we can do Overlords, Toxoids, and Nemesis. We'll get. We'll be okay, your five that points. Sounds good. All right, sounds sounds good. fine. Thank you. Do, do, do. Uh, All right, and then so basically that leaves the remaining prize pool is yours, Silas, and that is um, one Toxoid DLC, just, two Overlords just... DLC, and Apocalypse and Necroids, I think. Yeah. I mean, right. I would just say it, give then, it to yeah. whoever wants it actually here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can I get Toxoids, please? Um, because that's yes, my absolutely. one missing DLC. Real humanoid, you can get Toxoids. Absolutely. Uh, Much appreciated, message. Silas. I, you, this will not be forgotten. I will help you in the future. We're, so we still have two Overlord DLC, one Necroids, and one Apocalypse DLC. Anyone who's played would like any of those or need them. If not, I'm gonna no, open. No, I'll, no, I'll no, open no, this no. up. Say again. Hi. Who said that? No, I just said that I don't need them. I, I have ah, okay. all DLC. So. Well, I guess in that case, we should probably open this up to to maybe the chat. I suppose. Do you want yeah, to donate them to the chat? Uh, yeah, I would Silas? say. Put it in chat. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. You know what you can do, Montu? You can make a raffle with all the DLCs and somebody picks a number and, you know, random generator, yeah. whoever gets a DLC. All right, so, so yeah, we've got those DLC. Let's, uh, over the next day, I'm going to work out how to do a raffle. I'll put a post up about it. Um, I'll also put a linked pinned comment in this description. I'll sort that out tomorrow. And those remaining DLC, uh, which is generously being given up here by Silas in fourth place, uh, and they are, just looking at them, they are uh, two Overlord, no, one Overlord DLC, Necroids, and Apocalypse. So three DLC, one new one, one, not so new one, and one relatively old one, but we'll have a raffle for them. I've also got a copy of Stellaris, actually, so I might as well throw that in the raffle. Why not? Um, sure, why not, you know? Yeah, yeah if anyone has got Stellaris, you, you can maybe win the copy of Stellaris in the raffle prize kajigger that we'll throw up very soon. Uh, remember to like, yeah, share, comment, and subscribe to be in with a chance of winning. No, Probably. <laughs> or, or just, you know, remember to join the Discord so you can actually see the giveaway when we do it. Are you going to throw up the link, Montu? Or should I? Uh, I throw up the link once, I will throw up the link again. That's a good point. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. I have it somewhere. Here it is. Do, do, do. Copy. If you want to join, if you want to join my Discord, jump in there. Um, we'll probably also post in there as well when we put the raffle up for people who, who want it. But otherwise, thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Simus, for co-hosting. Thank you, Comrade, who was here, er, here earlier. Massive thank you to Paradox. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been my first tournament that I've 
ho hosted. Um, thank you, big thank you to Yernzax as well and Kiva who've been instrumental in organizing and setting this up. Massive thank you on top of that to Zefnar for creating this mod. Thank you everyone that's watched and donated and all of the shindigs that we've had. Thank you everyone who's had the good prizes. I hope you enjoy them when, when you get them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, otherwise, the t-shirt's on the screen. You can jump into the link to get one if you want. There's a link to that in the description. Montuplays.com also works. Uh, that was the prize pool. So I might as well just get rid of those. We've, we've, we've seen enough of that. Um, otherwise, yeah, I suppose that's enough from me. Does anyone else want to say any words before we, we run away? Well, sure. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Paradox, on everything. And hope to see you in the next tournament. I don't like the car. <laughs> I don't like people stealing my primitives. You should have abandoned that system when I asked. Be, I, I, I hope you spawn next to me next game so I can actually cold wear you even harder with my plates. <laughs> oh, Kizzy. It's so nice hearing you complain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Before the player to player interaction. Uh, Kizzy, I had you by, by the I'll let you guys get to your thing. Yeah, fair enough. Moment. Simon, Simon let's see. Uh, yeah. I, I wanted to, to ask you though. Um... I, I really appreciate you bringing me on to do this uh, co hosting, the co commentating, because normally when I, in the past, whenever I've co commentated, it was about RP tournament events, mm. not pure PvP. So this has been a very eye opening experience on metas and the like. <laughs> Good. I'm uh, glad so I've enjoyed it's it. It's been awesome. It's, it's been awesome working with you, man. It's been very and fun to have you on. Thank you. Time. You know, whatever that well, that might be next month. That might be next month. Who knows? Ooh, okay. um, on the topics of meta and such, uh, for next month, uh, do you think certain builds, uh, having played the tournament, should be restricted? Or at least we're going to restrict clone things? armies by. We're probably sorry. No, don't take this for definite. We're probably going to restrict clone armies by banning migration treaties. Oh, that's sad. That's a hard one. Uh, um, Which? What if, what if you get uh, refugees? Exactly. As a clone army? But, but we might we might also set the policy for refugees. We might also restrict the policy for refugees. I don't know. We we've also discussed that an option could also be that certain builds get a point deduction automatically. So like yeah. if you want to play a total war empire, it's going to cost you. So we're X probably going to allow all total war empires in the next one, but you won't be able to use your total war cases belly. Uh, is in you won't be able to do anything different until. Uh, year like until the normal peace timer, so you won't be able to invade and take worlds until year you know fifty, and you can't vassalize anyone. So, you know, good luck actually doing anything with your total war for thirty years. Oh, you can! I've been actually beaten by that. The guy couldn't invade my planets, so he just took everything else, and uh, creating uh, my planets, leaving them like islands with no trade outside of the capital. Yep. Well, I mean, if you're a trade empire, that's a problem. But for like most people today, some people got a lot of their systems taken like that and still came back through. It happened to me the first game. Yeah. Also, to be fair, I think... me took everything except my pla for my planets and I was fine. It's like nothing, whatever. Also, what about, Total War, uh, can't get uh, score from Galactic Community either, which I think is balanced enough. That's well, not they also can't they, can't, they can't join federations. They can't have any diplomatic pacts. They're very much on their own. And this game has been dominated by diplomatic pacts and diplomo diplomacy. So if you can't do any diplomacy, you're going to be very screwed, I think. You know, you all can exterminators be like. For Diplo way, even as, you uh, do, but you don't get custodian stuff and that. That's what I'm thinking of. Like resolution, yeah, I mean, score, so. and custodian, and what's the other thing? I mean, the custodian is like year 60 plus. Oh, well, car, car, like, what is it? The uh, council. Also so score the, well. the, the top five players got a combined, I think, 52 points from the Galactic Community this game. So, Galactic Community does matter. Remember it that does. in the future when you let someone become the custodian. Yeah, I mean, Fun Fun came that third because accident. he got almost half, over half of his, almost half of his points came from Galactic Community stuff. That um, was the point from the start. Yeah. Well, I had 15 envoys in the community. 15 envoys? <laughs> Uh, by the way, I, I had an interstellar assembly and I still only. Oh, I didn't have that. But yeah, I was surprised that you were so passive in this game. You're usually quite fun, aggressive. Fun Fun had 12 envoys, I think. At the end, 15. I think you have 15 at oh, the very end. Yeah, okay. Uh, my strategies work great in year 30 when I can one with one people. But when I have a federation <laughs> and you uh, take another federation with, you know, 50 oh, members, it doesn't work that well. My strategy it is it's a different a game. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, guys, so I, I had a chance to participate in multiple tournaments, and this one was the most diplomatic one. 
and I really think it's a good thing because Stellaris is uh, like the spawn is random and you know like you can get a really good one really bad one uh, you, you can have good neighbors and bad neighbors and I think the way this tournament uh, highlights the diplomacy as a solution to those unfair random things that could happen to you I think really really interesting and really really great great I really enjoyed the qualifier and and the final as well as well so thank you so much for organizing it it was quite a fun I think I think what's most interesting are though as well as you you, you say that and you're one of the players that has never joined a federation either um, which I, I, I find it, I, I love how your perspective, even without joining a federation, is that you enjoyed the diplomacy in the background. Yeah, so we had uh, guarantees, defensive pacts with a few players. Mm, yeah, and... you were kind of a, like your own conglomerate. You, Momonga, and Silas were all guaranteeing yeah. each other and kind of acting like a federation without being a federation. Um, yeah, and we, we, we were on, in the war constantly. So we had a federation ability to do a federation, but we just didn't have he was a time this. frame. I and mean, he I, was, dying. I was technically working for them, quote unquote. I got given twenty thousand allies by Arg. So I, was technically <laughs> <in the industry. laughs> I didn't know that. That's amazing. Uh, it went past me. Fair enough. I mean, I I will I will not give you anything because I do. You were the reason why I left the federation to begin with. Kissy. Silas, why did you leave Kissy, that federation way, oh, actually? Because K Kissy did not want me to declare war. She was like blocking every war declaration. Oh, and that's why. So we saw you leave, and I thought this was some sort of personal play. I didn't realize it was diplomacy breaking I mean, down, and you went, screw this, I'm out of the federation. That's amazing. I mean, it was also a personal play, I would say. I've, I've, I've had talks with the Russian before the blocking happened about hmm, maybe we can work together, I would say. Well, and we did work together very nicely. We did. I think we also should be getting points for killing the Leviathans. We no, might uh, add Silas. that in as well, yeah. Well, yeah, like, I, I did not maybe. close a door, basically. I kept the door open and with, like, the other people come on off. So, Silas, we, we were very surprised about, uh, you know, the AI rebellion in your territory. Oh, we yeah, what happened tactic. there? What was that? Like, you lost a bunch oh, of stuff to an AI. Oh, what happened? I I think the issue was literally just I got a lot of spiritualness on my ally wounds. And ah. they had zero happiness. Yeah, okay. And, and that's because yeah, you could... are a hive mind? No, you weren't a hive mind. You were. Oh, you're materialist. No. Ooh, yeah. clone materialist. Like, I, that was the only way. Like, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even do martial law, really, to fix it either. All right. I'm All right. Back. Oh, what hello. was weird at all I... is kind of the issue of. I'm going to run away though, ladies and gentlemen, um, and I'm probably going to run away to bed. So uh, I'm just going to run away from Discord for a moment and say goodbye to my chat. Thank you everyone as well again for joining. Thank you so much for a great time. Um, ciao for now. For... Boop. So they're all gone. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you for everyone that has donated. Thank you for everyone that has um, super chatted. Thank you for everyone that may do so in the future. If you're still watching, thank you very much. That's pretty cool as well. And you're watching live if you're watching deader uh then that's fantastic please let me know as well otherwise i'm hoping to bring this back next month and have another tournament some people have already reached out to say they would like to support that that is amazing news um you know otherwise you know make sure to like comment share tell everyone about this tournament if you enjoyed it and maybe come and join the next one if you think you want to test your metal but until that time i've been Montu. um so 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 goodbye from me